The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are a young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pig! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this We Love Love Commissioner Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. This program starts now! Sports are beautiful, obviously, and happy Valentine's Day to everybody out there. We hope you get a chance to spend a little time with those who you love and let them know that you love them. Because although there is 365 days in a year, 366 in a leap year, sure, or is it 364? It's like 365 and a half. I don't know how it works. Whatever it is, there's one day that is dedicated to love. Now, was it made up by a card company trying to make more money? Maybe. Is it a big fugues? Potentially. But in the spirit of the day, why not just tell the person you love that you love them? Because we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. We have no idea what's going to happen later today. So letting a little love out is a good thing, especially on this glorious We Love Love Commissioner Wednesday. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The commissioner of the NBA, Adam Silver, will be sitting in that chair right there in about anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Obviously, he's in the great city of Indianapolis, Indiana, because the All-Star star break is happening in the Hoosier City. Now, we are very lucky to play host the Celebrity All-Star Games on Friday night. I'll be a part of that doing a little commentary. Now, I'm in balking season, as you have all seen, so right now is not the time for me to debut my jumper to the world because it is wet, it is silky, just not right now. In the future, it will be, so I'll be commentating as Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp will be coaching two teams of super celebs playing basketball in Lucas Oil Stadium on Friday at 7. Then, obviously, all of the skills challenges and the all-star game happen on Saturday and I believe a lot of our crew will be in the house to watch we are lucky to do that JJ Watt will join us Ooh, fresh off a brand new haircut yeah yeah we saw it everybody saw it everyone everybody cool. had takes on it I'm excited to hear what his thoughts are on the reaction to his hair does he still have that hair mm-hmm. is he still doing the sloppy spike mm-hmm. 1990 2005 I'm a white dude with calyx hairstyle I've had that hairstyle before didn't look anywhere near as good as like people are failing to mention that for that particular haircut his hair looked good I agree you know like in that particular hairstyle what he was trying to go with the sloppy spike thing he pulled it off perfect almost too good yes and everybody noticed like what the hell is this on this guy's head well we'll talk to him about that and how he saw the Super Bowl going speaking of the Super Bowl the parade has started Now, I think, over in Kansas Mm -hmm. City, we got some thoughts. We'll have some videos. We have some comments. And obviously, let's look back on last year's Super Bowl parade and a parade's past. Should be a glorious Valentine's Day. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor, sitting right next to at Darius J. Butler in place of Ty Schmidt, who's enjoying his life with his family. We will see him in a few weeks. We miss you, Ty. Miss you, Ty. Miss you, Ty. What do we got here? A little dolphin? Yeah, a little dolphin. You know, after yesterday's debacle with the shirt, I figured, no, let me just go. Debacle. It was your best shirt you've ever worn yeah for sure but again it 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 stirred a lot more conversation than i would have thought i figure i'd go right back to just a normal regular animal dolphin one of the smartest mammals if not the smartest on the planet so yeah that was kind of my decision making here one half of the hammer cowboys telling Diggs is shaking his head no you don't think the dolphin's the smartest mammal out there well no no he said a normal regular animal i mean the dolphin Mm. as far as iq and what the dolphin does for us as a human race is is way up there navy seal if you will bingo exactly so uh I I think the dolphin is a beautiful decision. 
Oh. I think it is a great choice. I think you should continue to get better and not be embarrassed by it. Never. It felt like yesterday you were a little embarrassed Whoa. by the fact that yeah. we all said, man, you've gotten <clears throat> better. Speaking of getting better, what a year for you, Darius J. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hell, of a, hell of a year. Obviously, you were with us Monday through Wednesday, then he hosted the NFL matchup show. Now that the season's over, how do you feel? I feel like you've really done a great job. Oh, I feel great, man. Great NFL season, obviously, but the college football season was awesome as well. College football playoffs, national championship. Got to see Jim Harbaugh's last game, maybe last game in college. College, definitely Nick Saban's mm -hmm. last game in college. We're on the field for that. Just an incredible run. Yeah, you did great, D. Butch. Great, you should be proud of yourself. And the last in the trenches, obviously, a uh, man who played 12 years in the NFL, won a Super Bowl as a coach and a player. He's half himself. And I'm not just saying because he lost half his body weight. I'm saying that because this man is half great and half amazing. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, A.Q. Shipley. A.Q. Hey, great year by you too, pal. I want to let you know you absolutely crushed it. I appreciate that. What a year. I mean, the Super Bowl couldn't – I mean, you couldn't ask for a better game, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that was unbelievable. It was kind of exactly how we thought it was going to go. 49ers look great. Mahomes has the ball at the end. That's the end. Okay, Boom. so we thought that's how it was going to go. I'm excited to hear that. That That is exactly how you saw the whole game going? I thought the 49ers were the better team. I think we all saw that. You on, picked the 49ers to win. Super I picked Bowl. the 49ers <laughs> to win. and I, the, the exactly biggest how. That was the biggest uh, – mind blender I had all week because at the end of the day like I knew if Mahomes had the ball at the end that's the way it was going to go. As soon as he gets a rock with an opportunity to tie it we know he's going to tie it and then in overtime to either tie it or win we know he's going to mm -hmm. exactly. show up and then we got a chance to talk to him yesterday this dude is awesome. Yeah. And we forget about the fact that he's been awesome literally since the first day he started. He in his first year, said in a thing about how we got a good group of young guys. He's excited to get back to work. We're going to try to build a dynasty out here. His mm -hmm. PR person told me, let's not be doing that. If we were to take a trip back in time, though, to last year's Super Bowl parade, listen to what Patrick Mahomes says in his speech whenever he tells basically the entire Kansas City Chiefs fans, we'll see you in about 365 days from now. I just want to let y'all know. Look sweet. That this is just the beginning. Okay. Sweet title. We ain't done yet. So I'll make sure to hit y'all back next year, and I hope the crowd's the same. Appreciate y'all. Let's go, baby. And we'll find out. Obviously, their uh -huh. parade is today. We got another speech coming from Patrick Mahomes. Hell yeah. Great title. Oh, Great. Yeah. And then obviously you got the snowboarding yeah. goggles, the mm -hmm. ski goggles, because they've been spraying Hopefully Coors guys. lattes and whatever else all day. This also happened last year. Look at the dance moves from the boys at the Super Bowl parade from Matt Nagy, Tommy Tant. Look at Matt Nagy. You know who he's he is. So cool. Breaking it down. He was head coach hey. of the Bears for a lot of miserable years. Then he goes back to the Chiefs, <laughs> wins the Super Bowl. Look at him living his best life. Tommy Townsend next to him was flexing next to Taylor Swift just a few days ago. I mean, there is so much joy and happiness in drunk. Yes. Yeah. That happens at these Super Bowl parades. Hmm. So much so that Andy Reid was actually talked about it. Ooh. And here's a couple quotes from Andy Reid. Andy Reid said, uh, that was mentioned a couple of times to the boys, and so maybe we dial it back a little bit. Maybe yeah. we calm down. It's great to have fun, but uh, we need to be smart. And as they noted, last year's celebration included rookie defensive back Jalen Watson leaving the parade <laughs> in a wheelchair. Ooh. Nearly one million fans made it to the parade last year, according to KCUR. Hopefully that number is even bigger this year. And... Um, Patrick Mahomes actually tweeted Jalen earlier in the week and said, hey, you're going to finish the uh, yeah, parade this here. year? I think they are getting used to this celebration. They're getting used to this excitement. This year, obviously, Patrick Mahomes maybe doesn't just give away the Lombardi to a random fan on the street, although look how comfortable he is in a city that he is going to run for the next 30, 40, 50 years. Think about whenever he's done and just gives the title. <laughs> see it says, starts walking off there. We're excited to see what takes place today, but those parades, Connor, oh. you grew up, obviously, in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. You grew up with the New England Patriots. That story is for like kids and fathers and forever. And now because Taylor Swift's involved, daughters oh. and mothers, mm -hmm. like those are real. Kansas City will remember today for the rest of their lives. And these are pillar moments for people's childhood. And I think we get caught up in how drunk everybody is. Of course. But I think kids and everybody needs to see like, hey, when you work your ass off, like, that's when you are yeah. allowed to have fun. Oh, like, yeah. that's the purpose of all the work that these guys put in. That's the reason why you're working out at midnight on some nights when you're Patrick Mahomes and you already have uh, cemented a legacy of being a Hall of Famer is for that moment. I think it's good for everybody. It's good for the city. Oh, yeah, unbelievable. Like, I still remember the first Super Bowl parade I went to. Like, my parents pulled me out of school and my brother just because— First Super Bowl. First, first Super Bowl parade, of course. Just because they didn't think—but to your point, they didn't think there would be another one. My parents didn't. Think, uh, they've been Patriots— fans for their whole entire lives they were like hey we gotta go because this might be it and bob Kraft dancing young bobby Kraft up there like the whole entire like 
join together moment of the city. Like very rarely in most cities is everyone on the same page. Of course, when you're rooting for the team, that is one situation. But when everyone's partying and drinking out in the city of Boston, usually there are some things that could go wrong. Parades, it's the opposite. It is everyone is in the same exact mindset. Hey, we've cheered. We've lived and died with this team for the last six months. Damn, you could even go back for the last year because we've been talking about this possibly being a reality in the future. So parades, I, I think, not only bring together the city, but it is cool to like celebrate with the team. Obviously, you're not in the duck boats. You're not... You know, part of the actual journey that the team goes on, but like when you are there and you can throw beers or shots to you know some of your favorite players, like we did it. Yeah, there one of go. my favorite things. Was you don't get to do that that often, ever. Like, and and I was never someone that was risking throwing something and screwing it up. But like watching like Gronk or Brady or Edelman you know, catch fireball shots, catch beers, house them, hold up signs. Like after the Seattle Super Bowl where there's the whole Richard Sherman thing and all that beef was going on, like Edelman holding up a sign, you know, talking shit about the Seahawks was one of, if not the highlight of all the parades. Yeah, let alone the fact that this year the Kansas City Chiefs were counted out a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. So this fan base was getting attacked this year as well. And also even more so whenever Taylor joins, we hate this group. Yeah. So now they get a chance to just flood a city and celebrate everything that they are. Today should be a Absolute mayhem over there, I'm assuming, D-Bucks. Yeah, and it's the pinnacle of celebration because right after this, what, combine in, in a couple weeks for, for the, you know, the head coaches, general yeah. manager, obviously the players, they're going to get right back to work in a few in a few weeks, few months, be right back at it and then be locked in on that next one. Obviously, their goal is to have this three-peat. First time in history. That's something that no one has ever done. And it's so, so, so hard to get here. So for these guys to be here again, back-to-back, -back, I mean – just hats off to him. Yeah, hats great. off to him, and have a hell of a day, Tone Diggs. Yeah, I was lucky enough to go to two. One my uh, senior year of high school, and then one junior year of college. So, like, the perfect age, I think, to go to yeah. parades. And Connor said it perfectly. Like, there is there is nothing more unifying, like, in the city than parade day. Like, there's, it's fun going out, like, after the Super the night of the Super Bowl. Like, after that's one. But, like, parade day is like a, it is, it is 8 a.m. until however long you can make it. It is one of the coolest things. You know, police are on board. Police yep. are on board. Like obviously, the police horses are out later <laughs> at the night. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, getting chucked police up thinking on, about it. Police mm -hmm. are on board. Like, and I think the I think a big part of it is cities have to pick the correct parade route. Like, I think that's huge. Like, because downtown Pittsburgh, like they went by this like it's like an eight story uh, parking garage, and everyone's hanging outside the parking garage, and like both all the the tighter the better. Like the the streets being lined is, is incredible. Like it. Those are those are unforgettable days. Just think about all the iconic moments too. Madsen, the Shaq uh, dancing after the Lakers won it. Yep. Jason Kelsey cutting his promo. Like just all, obviously Brady throwing throwing the long ball off the boat. Just all these different mm -hmm. iconic moments uh, from these parades. Yeah, and I was about to say, hey Q, you got a chance to be a part of an interesting parade because COVID. So Tampa Bay seemed to be like the perfect place to have the COVID Super Bowl yeah. parade because you could just do it on boats. Yeah. Everybody stay away from everybody, and then Tom Brady gets escorted out afterwards, and it's like, oh, these boys had a good time. Seems like these boys had an absolute blast. What was it like to be a part of the Super Bowl parade down there? And at what point did anybody say, you know what, Tom Brady's going to need three people to walk his ass out of here like it's weekend at Bernie's? I mean, it's it's literally the best day of my entire life. Like, literally, it got, was... Uh, well, well, my, yeah. wife, my wife was with me on board, on the boat, so I can say that. Well, we can... It was pretty incredible. The kids are incredible. The kids are... That day was incredible. I called Jeez. you maybe the drunkest I've ever been. Yes. As, as you noted before, right? But at the end of the day... This is what is what people don't realize. You were obviously as a fan able to experience it at six mm -hmm. times, right? Brady was able to experience it seven times as a player. For me, I worked twelve years. I gave everything I had, and up and thirteen surgeries, five different teams, moved family here to there. When you actually experience that confetti falling down, and then three days later go on a boat ride and watch millions of people watching this thing. I, it, I mean, just beers flowing, drinks flowing, and just the excitement. And there were so many people down there. The Levante David, right, gave everything to that city and really hadn't sniffed the playoffs hardly. And he gets a championship. Like, there's so many cool moments like that. Well, congrats to the Chiefs. Way to go. Yeah. We're getting some video out of the Chiefs parade. I think Kansas City has shown up for the – look at it. Ooh, Damn. Yeah. Everybody's there for the – never a dot. Never a dot. Beast. Never a dot. Got a nice, is that a is that Italian or Mexican flag there? Ooh, Green, it. white, red. Kansas City. No, nope, you'll see it. You'll see it. Right after the Yeah, here it comes. Here it's got a logo. Boom. Boom. I think that's 
I'm uh, going to guess Italian. Usually, we have to have the yellow, like the bird in the middle. To be well, like flag. yeah, well, there's, there's a chief symbol in the in the middle. Geez. So it's, yeah, it's kind of covered. It's not an official Italian ornament. Can, it, it, it feels like it has a little. Anyways, look at them showing up. Look at them having a blast. You got kids with their families. Obviously, it's Valentine's Day. Not a bad place to take a date. Ooh. Hey, we got a, we got Valentine's Day figured out. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go get drunk with the rest of the city. How you feel? It's 2024, and in a world, especially going into an election year. Oh my God! With so much trying to kind of divide humans and divide society, cities are being divided, neighborhoods being divided. I feel this way, so I can't talk to somebody that feels this way. Whatever the reason, which is all bullshit, mm -hmm. by the way. None of it matters. We're all in this thing together. For a city to be able to just come together downtown and have a blast. It's a beautiful thing. It is an absolutely beautiful thing. And congrats to Kansas City getting to celebrate this probably probably, probably 10 more times. Yep, yep. And these ones become the best ones. Maybe. You mentioned it. Like when you're when you're the villain fan base, yeah, you, you want to go, you, you want to make it that much more absurd so people are that much more pissed off that you won the Super Bowl. Uh, Travis Kelsey talked a little bit on his New Heights podcast about a lot of things, mm -hmm. both the after party celebration, Jason Kelsey and the luchador mask. He broke that one down. He picked that up off the floor at one of the first after parties. What? Hilarious. So he just put it on his head. That was not something oh. that was planned. He said he was trying to stay out of the limelight. This isn't my Super Bowl. This is a Chief Super Bowl. And then he picked up that luchador mask and said, who would I be Come on, if I didn't steal the show? And he certainly did. Yeah. So they have conversation about that. The big one, though, is Travis and Jason talking about Travis getting into Coach Reed's mm -hmm. face in the middle of the game because, obviously, the way that was phrased by some people is he attacked mm -hmm. Andy Reed. This guy's got anger issues. This is a scumbag. Tom Brady came to his defense on the Let's Go podcast about how, like, yeah. hey, these are passionate people in the biggest moment. I've had a few of these moments on the sideline. Travis and Andy obviously had this. Here is Travis and Jason talking about the moment with Andy Reed on the sideline. Jason Kelsey is the greatest human on earth, yeah. potentially. Yeah. The broadcast showed you having a heated exchange with Coach Reed. <laughs> so heated. People are all over this. I mean, I get it. You cross the line. I think we can both agree <laughs> on that. I can't get that fired up to the point where I'm bumping coach and it's getting him off balance and stuff. I mean, let's be honest. The, the yelling in his face, too. Is <laughs> I think there's better ways to handle this. I love Coach Reed. Coach Reed knows how much I'd love to play for him. I'm not playing for anybody else but Big Red. If he calls it quits this year, I'm, I'm out there with him, man. Whoa. He ain't calling it quits. Come on, though. He's not. I immediately wish okay. I took it All back. Right. Coach Reed actually came right up to me after that, and he just let him know. Hey, man, I love your passion. I got cameras on me all over the place, man. He's letting you know not, not to be like that. Just fired me up even more to go out there and get a f***ing victory for him, man. Big Red, sorry if I uh, caught you with that cheap shot, baby. But damn, I love winning with you. You got to have your head on a swivel because next time he gets fired up at you, he's coming hot at you. You know that. Oh, yeah, I deserve it. If he would have cold cocked me in the face right there, I would have just ate it and just been like, yeah, let's f***ing go. I'm not trying to make this situation acceptable, but this is what happens when you have highly motivated, passionate individuals. This doesn't happen if you and Andy are as close as you are that's what nobody valid knows. point the reason this happens is because you two love each other so much and respect each other so much that you feel open enough to have an interaction like this it wasn't me mad at coach reed as as it looks it was the frustration of our team not having success turning the ball over and me being on the sideline just on not the sideline damn it it was pleading with your head coach to let you go out there and win this month that's what it was. Me and you both know what it was. Andy knows what you mean to him and what he means to you. All right, good. So that puts it to bed. Yeah. yeah. Right? That night, puts night. it absolutely to bed. Uh -huh. There's a lot of people, I think, that have never been on team sports uh, or been around uber competitive people that had a certain takeaway from it. And I don't think Travis Kelsey would do that again if he certainly was in this situation. Yeah. I think he would not want that to become, uh, I don't want to say a a story, but it was. It was one of the stories mm -hmm. of the Super Bowl. But it is something that potentially happens, especially on the biggest stage. Andy Reid not uh, Andy Reid not retiring, thank God. Travis Kelsey not retiring, thank God. Is there going to be any more of these AQ? You think Travis Kelsey has learned his lesson? Ooh. You think he's still going to yell in Andy Reid's face whenever things aren't going great at the Super Bowl? Listen, there's more cameras on him than we can even count at this point. But it, it's competition. Like people get so heated and passionate when they're in the middle of a game right yep. i've had plenty of these moments like had it has it gone that far i don't know but i remember uh in the middle of a drive coming back we, we were in indianapolis early in my career and uh somebody comes into my knee i feel my knee pop it's uh, i know it's a torn mcl right like at least at the at the least and it was in the final minute of the game we were driving i think we were down nine you mm -hmm. were probably part of that team you were on yep. that team and it was down in houston and I'm walking off the field with the trainers, and like I know I got torn. All I can think about is like, oh shit, my career might be over, right? Or the season might be over, right? 
And Bruce Arians is like, hey, if you can get off the field, it's a 10-second runoff. Get off the field. And I'm like, <laughs> I, the the words, I can't say them during the first two hours, came out of my mouth back at him. I, I bowed up, you know, and we had one of those moments and hug it out after the game. But it's like, that's what happens. Like, when you're trying to win, you understand those situations are going to happen. Yeah, and I think Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey obviously mm-hmm. have a lot of love for each other. They said that immediately after the game, immediately after the moment. Now going forward, they're – multiple-time Super Bowl champions together. And joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is the fifth commissioner of the NBA. A man who's in town for the NBA All-Star Weekend, which is happening right here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Adam Silver. Yeah, 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 Adam. Woo! Good dab, good dab. Uh, yeah, you just go right around. Yep. Great perfect. dab. That was a very good dad. Yeah, it was a good yeah. pop. Yeah, great. Roger Goodell, I don't, you know, I don't know what he's doing with. You coming in with full dad. How you doing, boss? I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey, Thanks no, for having me. No problem at all. That should be good, I think. Mm-hmm. If it, Is it? No, I think yeah. so. Yep. You can hear yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Good. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, you look amazing. Hey, you know, the TV doesn't do this studio justice. What do you mean? I mean, first of all, it's, it's bigger than I thought <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, thank I you. mean, I could tell, but also... You got to show some shots from outside. I mean, I know, oh. I guess, are, are we technically still in Indianapolis or the suburbs of yeah, Indianapolis? Well, yes, we are in the suburbs, but we are still technically in Indianapolis. Indianapolis does that whole, like, hey, our city's the 40 miles. <laughs> like you, so right, but, but when you say suburbs, there's like a guy's house across the street. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, he not, actually, uh, he it's not like we're in, like, a complex with other companies and things. Like, there's, there's a bunch of houses, 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 and all of a sudden the guy's driving me up. He goes, that's it. That's the Thunderdome. And. It's just a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give you guys up. Not a lot of security. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, a lot of security. Oh, no, 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 no. A lot of security. security. A lot of security. Yeah, 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 yeah. Navy yeah. SEALs. You couldn't see them. But it's, uh, it's just we're in a nice neighborhood. So that neighbor great you're talking, to be here. Hey, we're lucky to have you here. Thank you for making the trip. Uh, that neighbor you're talking about, he actually went to the city council meeting whenever I had to get this place rezoned, and he did not want us here. Ooh. So that neighbor you're talking about might have red dot on our building at all times. He's a Vietnam War vet. That's yeah. right. Thanks for your Thank service, you, Smothers. Thank you, Smothers. His name, we know him. We, well, we haven't met him, but no. he hates us. Uh, thank you for making the trip, not only to our Thunderdome, but to Indianapolis. Thank you for picking Indianapolis for the home of the All-Star Weekend. This is huge for our city, huge for, obviously, local businesses, and I think we're going to crush it. Obviously, Celebrity All-Star Game on Friday, then the skills in the game on Saturday. And I want to lead off with this. We obviously just saw the Pro Bowl games, right. and the NFL has had to cook up so many things to try to make the Pro Bowl matter. And a lot of the big-name guys don't go. There's a lot of opt-outs, a lot of opt-outs. For the NBA, there isn't really that. All your big stars show up for your all-star. Why do you think that is the case? Adam? Well, I, I think there's a diff- different tradition in the NBA around our all-star. Uh, the Super Bowl, of course, is neutral site. We don't have a neutral site finals. Mm-hmm. And, and for us, for our community, it's a place where people people can plan a year in advance. They know we're going to be in Indianapolis. Oh. Um, you know, we can, whether it's our, our, our business partners, media from around the world that cover the NBA, they, that's, that's, I think, why we generate such a big audience and so much interest for the weekend. I mean, I think that the game itself, you know, is something that the, the guys show up. I think that one of the things we're returning to the traditional East versus West format this year mm-hmm. and, frankly, hoping to get a little bit better of a game. I mean, I, I also get it. I, I know when I was a kid and you watched an all-star game in any sport, it was almost your only opportunity to see players from other teams unless there was a World Series or a Finals or something like that. And now, because these guys are so available in terms of digital media, you know, league passes, you can get any game, any sport, that it's not so unusual to see stars that you wouldn't otherwise see. I mean, if you live on the East Coast, Steph Curry's a perfect example. I mean, the old days, because it was a later time zone stuff in the East, you'd see a guy like that, of course, in the playoffs, but even then, a lot of their playoff games would be late in the Finals. Now, of course, you can watch every Warriors game if you want. So I think, and plus these guys know each other in our sport in a way differently than they did in the old days. They grew up playing AAU or, you know, EYBL through Nike together. They just, they've built relationships as kids. They've been around each other. So even I think for them, it's not as unique and special to be around players from, from players from other teams. And also contracts are shorter, a bunch of things. But long story short, it's still for us in our community to have them all come together, to be on the court together, and also to have fun. I know sometimes there's criticism that there's not enough defense played in all-star games, that yeah, it's, it's not a game. Again, I think it's going to be more of a game this year in Indianapolis. I think the guys recognized that last year we needed to do more. I mean, people want to see mm-hmm. a little bit of defense. They, but yeah. but, they, but they, they, don't, they, know, they know it's not a playoff game. Nobody wants to get hurt. But I think 
we can have a little bit of both, but also make sure everybody remembers this game's about joy and fun. Some of the things you were just talking about, about teamwork, guys coming together, that, that's all part of what this is. Sunday is the All-Star Game, East vs. West. Saturday's Skills Challenge. Friday night's Celebrity All-Star Game, taking over all of Indianapolis and downtown Indianapolis. That's a very good point about how we don't have a Super Bowl, so everybody can't just plan to be in one spot. Right. So this kind of acts as that. We were just in Vegas for the Super Bowl, which leads mm -hmm. to the next question. When's Vegas getting a team? Here we go. <laughs> you know, I, that place was perfect. You know, I, like, awesome. well, it is. As, as people that spent, now that's the first time I've spent four days there, yeah. and I only had four drinks. Thank you, Adam. I'm an adult. Very <laughs> mature. But it was like business. But you see how everything's set up like perfectly to host. And it feels like they have a real need and a yearn for more professional sports. They show up for everybody. That's a question, I guess, that you have to handle on a very regular basis. But when is Vegas getting a team? And is that in direct eyesight of right now? Yeah, so a few things. One, we have a WNBA team. Mm -hmm. the oh, AC, the Aces. Uh -huh. Back to back champs. champs. Yep. Champ. Oh, we yeah. shouldn't forget about Kelsey Plumman team. Hey, shout mm -hmm. out. And, hey. and also a point that I've made to uh, the mayor, both, you know, there was Oscar Goodman was the mayor now, his wife, Carolyn Goodman is the mayor. So there's been a long stretch of Goodmans as mayors. And from the days when sports leagues weren't playing in Vegas, in some leagues weren't even taking advertising from Vegas, we brought our summer league there and then an all-star all -star game there. So we've never been anti-Vegas as a league. And furthermore, our summer league now it, by virtue of taking up the first two weeks of July has become almost like a franchise in Vegas. And, and I'm not saying it's quite the equivalent. It's not our 31st team, but it's two weeks of basketball at a time of year in Vegas when there's not a lot else going on. And I don't know if you guys have ever been to our summer league. It's sometimes people compare it to sort of baseball winter meetings in that not only do you have actual games though of the guys who are just drafted and some of the young players, but the whole community comes together there. So you have most of the vets come to meet their new teammates. That there, there's, there's team activities, all the general managers there, et cetera. So I feel like we already have a big presence in Vegas. I think in terms of expansion to Vegas, what, what we've said for a while now is we have one more year left on our television deals in the U.S. after this year. And so we want to figure out what our media relationships are going to look like, but then we will turn to expansion. And Vegas is definitely on our list. What's, what's remarkable about Las Vegas it's not that large a market, yeah, I mean, small. as the U.S. goes. I mean, I forget, I, it's like last I looked, I think it was the 44th largest market or something like that. Wow. But man, do they punch above their weight. Mm -hmm. and, and to your guys' point um, about the Super Bowl, I mean, record rating, obviously, and I mean, that says so much about the game and, and the NFL, but it seemed like everyone I knew was there for the Super Bowl, just the number of parties. You guys, of course, chose to broadcast from there for the week, it was the center of the sporting world. And, and, and by that, I really mean world. I mean, and even though the NFL is, is just now pushing to become more global, I can tell you by virtue of how global we are, there was enormous awareness of Las Vegas and awareness that, that, that our Super Bowl was there. And, so, and, and from everything I saw, in addition to having an incredible game, it was a huge success. I mean, when we were there years ago for our All-Star game, Honestly, and I, I think everybody knew it at the time, the city felt a little bit overwhelmed. But I think now, all these years later, with multiple pro sports teams, you know, they, they built the airport up, a lot more well, properties they, they, and everything they, they else. I mean, that they, they, <laughs> they know how to host events in a first-class way. Yeah, and the people love going there. Love it. Like that Ra those Raiders games, mm -hmm. if the Raiders were to be terrible, which I don't think they will be, I like Antonio Pierce, I like, that would still fill up with the other, like it's a trip, it's a destination. You know, it's back like to the neutral site notion, I think what the NFL does so well by virtue of making every game an event, so, you know, if you're a Giants fan and that's the week, that weekend or whatever, that's the date that your team is playing in Vegas, you know, you can, at the, once the schedule comes out, you can circle that date you know, and, and you and your buddies can say, all right, mm -hmm. that's our weekend in Vegas. And, and, and you remember, even, before, even when, when dates when the Super Bowl, of course, hasn't been in Vegas, it was always a big date in Vegas for the Super Bowl weekend because sure. a lot of people mm -hmm. say, well, that's where we're going to go. And we're going to be in a sports book or whatever else because, I mean, it, it wasn't that long ago where that was the only place you could legally bet, of course, on the NFL. Okay, so we got one year left on the TV deals. I, I should have known that, obviously, before you said that. But live sports up and to the right, 
right? Like right now, League, I assume you guys are in a very good spot because of the way the content business is. Are you thinking about streaming or linear tel Like how do you kind of balance what the future of the NBA looks like? Because I had to have this much smaller level. We were a show on YouTube. And everybody says the future is streaming, 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 streaming. Everybody's trying to get subscribers. Everybody's trying to get people everywhere. But linear television still has a hammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long will it remain that way? We don't know, especially with this new merger that just allegedly took place yep. between ESPN, Fox, Fox, and Warner Brothers. Which yep. we knew nothing about until it kind of got announced. But, like, how do you balance all Neither this? Neither did I. <laughs> okay. <Wow>. Really? <clears throat> Really? You had no idea? Well, no. I mean, there's no secret about that, that they, it, it's a joint venture among those companies. And I, I think they're not claiming they told the leagues about it beforehand. But So we'll see what it becomes. But go on. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> but that's obviously a massive yeah. piece of this entire thing. What, yeah. what do you look at the future? How do you kind of balance when we go to tomorrow? Or do we stay in today? How do you balance all that? You know, and, and I can talk forever on this, so, so feel free to cut me off. I mean, because the answer is all of the above, like up and to the right, absolutely, in terms of premium live sports. There's no question that, and it's not just the United States, but around the world, premium live sports cuts through in a way no other content does. And as great as all the dramas are on the, the great, on, on these well-run streaming platforms, or even the, the dramas that may still be on network or traditional cable channels, they're not appointment viewing. You know, you can sit down, if there's a great show that you wanna watch on, on Netflix, you know, or Hulu, whatever else, you're gonna, uh, uh, not to take anything away from it, but you're gonna watch it when you're gonna watch it, or you're gonna binge watch it, or you're, wait, Finish so you're on a plane and, you know, watch a bunch of hours at once. I think what, what live sports are, are continuing to separate themselves from everything else, because even for advertisers, and, and then your show, of course, is live, and it's meaningful to advertisers because they know when it's on, day, wow. week, and all that. But I'm just saying that for, for live sports, they can aggregate an audience, a live audience like nothing else. And if you look at what's happening in ratings over time, and, and I will say to the, there's the NFL and everything else. I mean, I, I, you know, we're very global in a way that the NFL isn't quite and maybe will become one day. But in the U.S., to your point, what linear television can still do, if you had been asking experts, I don't know, 10 years ago or even five years ago, would the NFL be breaking records for an audience at, at, at a medium on traditional broadcast television, I mean, it was also streamed, but in, in that, the Super Bowl, but in, in a traditional medium where people thought or felt was going backwards, I don't think people would have been saying whatever the number was, 123 million people, yes. at, you know, average viewer, you know, per minute that, that and, and by the way, I, I, I qualify that because people forget too, that rating we all hear about, that's the average number of people per minute. So the total, I may have this slightly off, but the total people in the U.S. who will have watched some portion of the Super Bowl is closer to 200 million. 202. Oh, yeah. Okay, exactly. I mean, so so it's interesting. Everybody talks about the 123 million, yeah. but I would be talking about the 200 million <laughs> yeah. number because yeah, that's, that's the number of people show. watching. Yeah, yeah. that's our show too. Much smaller number. But yeah, the 202 million people. Yeah, watch the Super yeah. Bowl I mean, that, that I mean, that's and there are 330 million people in the United States. So I mean, I don't how many people are under a certain age who wouldn't be making that decision. I mean, essentially everybody was watching. And also, I was just listening to you before I came out. I mean, one of the things that live sports continues to do, what else brings people in, in a yeah. divided world, divided country where everybody comes together for a game? And, every, and by the way, and not just for the game, but everybody accepts that these are the rules of the game, that when the game is over, this is the team who won. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, this is how many minutes it is. I mean, I, I, I've said the same thing about the World Cup of Soccer before. You know, that was in Qatar. And you had, you know, I don't know, 125 countries that, that, that competed to be in the World Cup. Countries with completely different systems, different values, different governments and everything else. That, yet the games start. Those are the rules. Everybody accepts mm -hmm. that that's how the competition works. And then when the finals are over, you crown a champion. Everybody says... That, that's it. That's how it works. So that, it's quite amazing what sports can do. And, and again, I think the NFL is, is an incredible example of that and that game by, I mean, it helped, of course, that it was a fantastic game and people look forward to watching Usher and the, the commercials. I mean, it's, it's the total package. And, and, and Taylor Swift. That too. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she I, I just heard like maybe they don't want her at the parade because that'll overwhelm the city. I mean, that's, that's how big a factor she is. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, but, but that's been true of all sports. I, I just think we're, the NFL has done a fantastic job is commanding traditional broadcast television. And now, the other, that's why I said I could talk about this forever. To your point about streaming, like streaming, on the other hand, for us, as we look to, to reach 
a younger audience. If, if you think about what's happening in traditional television, cable and even broadcast television, most people at the end of the day are watching broadcast television through cable or satellite. Most people don't have an antenna. Mm -hmm. at, you know, at, in, this, in their house yeah. where there were, where there were kids, people did when I was a kid, but not anymore. I mean, some people do, and it, and it, and it's and makes sense for people who complement a streaming package by having an antenna and stuff. But most people are still watching through traditional cable and satellite. And I mean, this is a generalization to say, but it's largely younger people who either never subscribe to cable or or cut the cord for e economically. And so that portion of our fan base that tends to be very young, probably the youngest of the major sports. They, are, they become disenfranchised. If our games are on ESPN and TNT and ABC, but they're not subscribing to traditional cable or satellite, they're feasting on social media um, and, and you know, watching TikTok or Instagram or whatever and getting a lot of highlights and stuff, but they're not watching our games. And so partly for us in terms of going to streaming, we want to make sure that our fan base can can, if, I mean, they're going to have to pay but that, at a reasonable price, but that those games are accessible to them and particularly... Not, it's, it's not, not just because they're cutting the cord for traditional cable and satellite, but they live on their phones. Yes. Like when, uh, their, their, their first instinct when they want to watch programming or, or even when something's happening in the world is not to go to their television. Like, of course, like my generation, if you heard something was going on in the world, you wanted to see the images, you went, I got to get to a television. Yeah. Now, it, it's any generation, you just take out your phone. Yeah, so you said a lot there, but like the, uh, the first screen, second screen thing is flipped now. You know, Absolutely. first screen in marketing used to be the TV. Second screen was the phone. Now, first screen is phone. Second screen is TV. Because even when TV's on, it's just background <clears throat> for a large portion of people. So let's talk about the streaming thing a little bit here. So, like, Apple is worth $2.9 trillion. Congrats to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that'll, that'll pause. They got it figured out. That's the wealthiest company on earth. If they were to spend... I, I think Microsoft topped them slightly. Really? I yeah. think my, Microsoft hit $3 trillion, believe it or not. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, but that, but they're very close. Excel, okay. but uh, but another technology company. To your point, boom, and they're getting into streaming. They obviously got the MLS. Right. That was a massive deal. So, right. like Howard Stern, whenever he decided to go to SiriusXM, a lot of people thought the decision was made by a person who was like, "I'm going to take a massive paycheck, but I'm also going to lose a portion of my audience because free radio is free radio, and everybody will listen." Like, if Apple wants to get in the game, they have more money than anybody. If they want Amazon, if they want to get into the game completely, will you keep it? Like, because the NFL has like uh, Thursday night football is on Amazon. You got to do that. One playoff game is on Peacock. I believe they just agreed another playoff game is going to be on Am Amazon yep. exclusively. There's a Black Friday game on Amazon, but then a large majority of their games, I think like 92% or something like yep. that, are free on linear television. Is that how you have to break it up? Well, and, and how do you start parceling that? Because with a year out, I assume you're already in these negotiations right now, I would assume. Yeah, and, and, and don't forget your partner, YouTube, Google. Yes. yes, you know, which yeah, is exactly. also a, a, a huge factor now in streaming media. And I'll just go back one of the points you made, you know, even using your own show by, you know, as an example. I mean, think about where how you started on YouTube. And I know this, this show is still streamed in part on YouTube, right? That, Hell yeah. yeah. Right and, now you're on YouTube. Yeah, right now. So we're on YouTube. You're but on then, YouTube but right then you have an exclusive <laughs> portion of it on yes. YouTube, right? <clears throat> and the fact that we're here in Indianapolis in this studio and that, um, and where does AJ come from? Dublin, Ohio, wherever he is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite remarkable that I'm watching in New York. To me, you guys, I mean, to most viewers, you might as well be either in Bristol, mm -hmm. Connecticut at ESPN or in a studio. I mean, like so much has dramatically changed. I don't think people have caught up with yet. Like even, so I was saying, if people could see this studio, I mean, when I'm watching, I mean, the quality is perfect. I mean, it's no, but it's not as if we're thinking His you guys kind of stinks today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> up. yeah. yeah. yeah but, but, but it's not as if people have to understand that you could essentially be anywhere. You can take your show on the road. You can take a former church like this and this becomes a studio that you can have guests that can be anywhere. I mean, the, the, the nature of the whole business has changed, I think, more than people even understand at this point. And we have and, people that watch in New Zealand and Australia live mm -hmm. yeah. during the show. And, and for the NBA, people in 215 countries and territories mm -hmm. watch our programming. And, and what's happening now in, in, in this global market is, and I think it's, it's good news for content creators like you guys are for the NBA, that at the end of the day, regardless of the platform, broadcast cable, streaming, satellite, you know, that old adage, content is king. People will find great content. Like when they had that, that NFL game on Peacock, um, a playoff game, and there was a lot of conjecture, well, 
yeah, it's so difficult, you know, is are my parents going to figure out what they have to do to stream the game? You know, all the things talk. 23 million Ratings people. Are up. <laughs> yeah. Ratings are up. 23, because people find mm -hmm. great content. And, you know, there was a time like roughly 20 years ago when the NBA, led by David Stern, when we, frankly, for economic reasons, went more heavily to, to cable, you know, from where we had more of our games back then on NBC then we moved to ABC, but they wanted a big portion of the package to be on ESPN and we remain on TNT. A lot of people are saying that was going to be the demise of the NBA because you've left broadcast television and this cable thing, you know, <laughs> that, and, and, and now it's interesting that 20 years later, now here's the next generation of technology and people are saying, oh my God, it's streaming. Yeah. Now, I, I would say that I think what streaming can do, the what, what people forget sometimes, like the, the Peacock game in a way, you could take a game that, let's say, would have been on NBC and they put it exclusively on Peacock instead. And it's essentially the same game. I mean, that there, there's some slight variations, but you're watching the game, you just got to find it on Peacock. I think it's, it's early days, but Amazon's been experimenting a lot there, um, YouTube TV, et cetera, in terms of what the functionality, what the personalization, customization you're going to be able to do well, when you move off this mm -hmm. traditional television. And, you know, you guys were talking about sports betting before. I mean, the great news about sports betting when you get to those formats, to the extent you're either, it's because there's minors or you personally want nothing to do with sports betting. You don't want to hear odds. You don't want to talk about it. Click, click, it's done. Yep. Or if, if you want, like, show me everything. I want to know the odds on every play. Mm -hmm. You got that. You know, I, I only care about... You know, watching, I want to follow Steph Curry wherever he's on the court. I want to hear it in unlimited languages. I want to be in the locker room. I want to buy product while the game is going on. I want to be having a conversation like you guys are. I want to replicate this. I want to sit and talk to my friends and just talk about it. You know, I'm going to tune in and out of the professional announcers. I just, I, I want to call a game. I want to treat it like I went to a game with my friends, like we're in a suite and we're just talking about it. I mean, that it's such early days there to me of how much richer the experience can be when, when it comes to streaming. And as I said, that's gonna change dramatically as well. And then there's also the availability that, you know, now, sure, I think people, to the extent they have a beautiful, large, high definition screen and they're at home, presumably that's where they're gonna prefer to watch it. But not always. I'm often, I, I live in an apartment in New York, but many, in many cases it's easier for me, if I'm going through the NBA League Pass, there's a lot of games on, it's, it's easier from a technical standpoint for me to flip through on my iPad to go from game to game than to do it on my television. Well, let's not even it's, start talking about the Apple Vision. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the, the Apple Vision had like five games yeah. on at one time where they were swapping it out. So good luck negotiating all that. <laughs> Honestly, good luck negotiating all that. Thanks. We're excited to see what you do. Let's talk about the on-floor stuff. So the 65-game minimum. Uh, agreed by you and the Players Association. I think it was an attempt, obviously, for whenever fans show up to games and there's obviously load management happening and all the stars aren't playing on particular evenings. Like, there was a couple times where somebody was coming to Indiana to play and literally the place sold out for whoever, and then they get there and that person's not, they're just sitting there. That's not good for the player because right. that player is getting booed by those fans that are there. Not good for the league because obviously you're maybe selling something that isn't the case. So you come to the 65 game agreement where you have to play this amount of time to get awards. Now, in your league, if you get awards, that bumps up paydays and future contracts, so they very much matter. Now, with Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton, and a little bit of backlash of the situation, how do you feel about the 65 game minimum thing? Will that evolve? Will that change? And do you think this is has been good overall for the NBA fan experience, which I think is the only thing that really matters at the end of the day in the conversation. Well, great point. I, I think generally it's been very positive. And you can look at the numbers in terms, just take the, 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 the pool of all-star players. And if you looked at the number of games to date that they had played last season, essentially to the all-star break and compared it to this season, it's up significantly in terms of because they care about eligibility for awards. I think because that what that means for their legacy and there's financial implications too for being all NBA or, or, or winning other awards as well. So I think from that standpoint, it's been effective. I think we always knew once you were going to establish a cutoff and remember the, the 65, I mean, it's not an exact science, but it was intent when we sat down with the Players Association to incorporate both injuries and resting because certainly there wasn't the sense that you could rest 17 games and that you should still be eligible it was like all right there's on average guys are going to be injured a certain number of games so we tried to come up with a line that we thought was fair you know it, 
uh, Andre Iguodal is, is, is head of the former players, now head of our Players Association. He and I had a conversation about this the other day. And, and his, he wasn't there when this provision was negotiated. And Tyrese is a great example where somebody, it's a, it's, there, there's no question about rest. I mean, he, you know, he wants to be out there He's every awesome. night. And, and these kind of injuries, this, again, when, when you're injured, you're out for, for successive games. Nobody's questioning his character. Nobody's suggesting by any means he's not out there every night he can be. And I think the question from, from Andre was, is this something that we should take a fresh look at? And, I, and my response was, first of all, let's wait till the end of the season. Because one, Tyrese, like he's still, I forget, I forget if it's ex exactly three or four, but he could still miss a few more games and still be eligible for those awards. So he's not below. And like an extra 40 million or something. Like oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah so I, so he's, not, he's not below the six. Well, he, he'd also then also need to become mm -hmm. all NBA. I'm not suggesting he won't, but it's, yes. it's not just automatically if he plays those number of games. But I, I think most importantly, we, got, we should wait till the end of the season and look at the numbers because, yeah, you know, and I, th and I, and I, I think Andre sees it the same way. His obligation is to 450 players. As, as, as you began your question, ultimately, this is about the fans and about putting the best product forward. And it's in everybody's interest. That's why when we sat down in collective bargaining, there wasn't a lot of, of, of um, dispute about the fact that load management was not working well for this league. I mean, there's a whole separate issue as to whether even there's sound science behind it, whether it even works, frankly. Like, a lot, you know, and, and we've done more research on that. Sure, it, it affects, I mean, you guys know as athletes, if you're tired, there's no question if it's the second game in a back-to-back, back-to-back, it may reduce performance. But there's no good data that that leads to more injuries. So, so parking that for a second. Jeez, uh, I'm so, excited so, to hear the rebuttal <laughs> to that. Yeah, yeah, but- There's but, some but, analytics person. I'm sure there is. And by the way, when one thing that we did, and, and you guys end up wading into science and, and, and oh, medical sure. issues. Yeah. So, 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 not so, now. Man, no, whoa, whoa, so whoa, whoa, I'm gonna like, when, when we did that research <laughs> you guys with, a, with a group of doctors, I said, let's publish it. Like yes. this is this shouldn't be we the league decided like put it out put all our data out there and like have at it that's what's cool about science in a way that you know people you can put information out there and then if people have better data better research other science or just other opinions mm -hmm. like let's let's consider them all so this is not uh, don't and, you and, get into that or I'm not, but, but, but I'm, I'm moving on from that so so <laughs> in, so in, so anyway I, the, the shorter answer to your question I think it's generally working it's having the desired effect that guys are out on the floor and I think there's a realization just back to your question about media it, the, all these things connect to each other the one thing that's really changed it's more pay for play these days I mean the biggest issue for streaming services and you hear this all the time is churn and that is people who are saying um, I watch my show that I that I bought this service for. It's over. Click and remember, like churning out of cable was all right. Uh, the truck has to roll, and they're like, oh, "All right, can you be home between nine and five? You know, on March twelfth." And you're like, "Ah, oh, like you the know, windows, yeah. you know, the window." And, and to get it back, and so, and often if you wanted to switch providers, they literally had to, you know, whether they had to put a dish on your roof or you know, or, or install you know other wiring in your house literally like to, to switch in and out of these services is, is a click. And so part of um, hmm. what, what we have to focus on as leagues and all entertainment programming is people staying with you. And, and, and just back to your, your early question about us going to market, the WNBA has grown leaps and bounds in popular. Look what Caitlin, Caitlin Clark is doing mm -hmm. coming into She's the coming to the fever next year. That yep. would be incredible. It would be. <laughs> that, that the NBA is 260 nights of programming a year. The WNBA is 60. So as we go together to potential media partners, that's 320 nights of programming. So, I mean, nothing is churn-proof, but the extent that you can have great content throughout the year, that's going to strongly encourage somebody to stay with that service. Yeah, and you need your stars to play. Like, and, just and you talking, need your stars to play. Just talking as a human that would potentially pay a ticket to go watch, mm -hmm. if I want... And I think every OG of the NBA was on the same page as well. Like, this load management is crap. Like, they're talking about what Michael Jordan and, like, Kobe and the greats, how they had to play. And, like, their obligation to the league almost is what you heard a lot of the ex-stars talk about. And I can appreciate them saying that. And anytime Charles Barkley speaks, I'm going to be listening, of course. But, like, just as a fan that might pay money in Indiana to go watch somebody who's coming to town, and then you go down there. Let's say I paid 50 bucks for a ticket. Food is what? 
another 30 bucks yeah. probably for my eight, I'm spending a hundred bucks, okay, to go watch this. And then I get there and I'm told 20 minutes before they're not gonna play. Like that's not good. That's yeah. not good for the NBA. That's not good for anybody. So I think you're you're on the right path, I think, personally. Yeah, and Pistons great Joe Dumars is the head of basketball operations at the league now. He, and he, he he recently joined the league and he has so much credibility as a player than as a GM where he won a championship. And I love when I hear Joe say, because to me, frankly, it's more credibility than me saying it's former player when he says, we are an 82-game league. Yeah. We're an 82-game league. And of course, that doesn't mean we're trying to turn the clock back because in the old days in every sport, guys probably played at times when they were legitimately injured. Mm -hmm. And they ended up hurting themselves physically or, you know, where, you know, long past their playing careers. I, I think, you know, there's a distinction between injured, caught, and hurt or banged up. And I, and I think as professionals, and again, it's everybody has to find where that line is, but I think what you hear from, you were saying the OGs in the league, that partly they see an issue with the young, a younger generation of player coming in the league where- It's happening everywhere. It's just professionalism. And, and again, I don't want to pick on athletes because it's, it's in every field. You hear it from old lawyers talking about young lawyers, old doctors talking about young doctors. Oh, I didn't know it's, suits are talking about suits. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and this just about, you know, and, and, and maybe that was time memorial when I was a kid, right? Yes. I don't think there's anything new going on, but I think teaching that, 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 that ethic, the professionalism that comes with sport, and particularly in a team sport. Yes. yes. Because it's not just about you. Hell yeah. Connor's got a question for you. Yeah, Kamish, one thing that the NBA does that it feels like not many other leagues do is the teams that get formed in the offseason are just massive. Obviously this year, Damian Lillard going from Portland to Milwaukee was a huge story. I mean, Lillard was, has been a story for a couple years now, but is that something that the NBA wants and is cognizant of? Like, the Pacers, for instance, they just made a move for Pascal Siakam. Mm -hmm. Like, are, are those type of teams where there are multiple stars on each team, something that the NBA likes, or is you know this kind of contract sixty-five game rule? Is that something that also kind of factors into the hey, if guys do stay with their teams longer, then they do have that potential to you know have the escalators in the contracts like we talked about. And to piggyback on that, LeBron was almost at the Golden State Warriors <laughs> Bingo, yeah. just a couple days ago. I, I read that. I, I have no other knowledge other than I read that there was those <laughs> yeah. discussions. So who knows? But, oh, to say they don't they don't run that by like LeBron no. going to the Golden State Warriors. It, like only, it only comes to the league office if they actually have a proposed trade. Then we have to approve it. But for, as I just read the reports, that if owners are talking to each other about possible moves or GMs, absolutely not. They, and, and in fact, I, I, if they, they're laughing to hear me say this. They don't trust the league office. <laughs> if they're thinking about something like that, we're the last people they're going to tell until they have to. Would you approve that, Craig? You know, it's interesting. For, for us, we don't have discretion. If a trade, because I, I get this question all the time, oh. if a trade was in, is within the rules, it's within the rules. And I don't think you would want, back to my point before about the sort of rule of law around sports, I don't think people would want me sitting here saying, ah, I don't think that's good for the league. That could, I mean, the rules are the rules. If we don't like the rules, next time we sit down and collect the bargaining, we should change it. But to your question, so... So you would approve that? If it were, if it fit under the rules, I would have to. It's not within my discretion. Well, the Chris is that, Paul. Yeah, thing. is that a new rule? Because Chris Paul well, got the, traded the, to the Lakers. The, the, yeah. All right, I'm going to defend <laughs> my 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 former Boston mentor, David Stern. <laughs> rest, rest in peace. So, at, rest in peace. At at that point, David was acting as the in essence owner of New Orleans. Got it. Uh -huh. He was. Make it sense. was a, a, an unusual situation there, and he was wearing two hats. And his view when that trade came to him. He didn't think that trade was in the best interest of the team. Incidentally, when I learned my lesson, there was a period when the league office was running the Clippers when, when Donald oh, yeah. Sterling was, was banned from the league. And I brought in a guy named Dick Parsons, and who'd been the this former CEO of, of Time Warner. And I said, Dick, you are now running the Los Angeles <laughs> Clippers. You're making decisions about basketball, not me. So, and now to Connor's question that, so, we, in successive collective bargaining agreements, have, I think, done a good job incrementally creating more, I would say, parity around the league. And, and by parity, not to me, it's, it would be fake parity if you sort of played it as if, let's just divvy up the players around the league and say everyone, every team should get one superstar of this level, one there. I, I, to me, I think of it as parity of opportunity because the great GMs, the great management in this league should have an advantage. And you're seeing that now in small and big markets when you have really good people running teams. And then to your point about someone like Damian Lillard leaving, I mean, one, of course we want guys to honor contracts. In some cases, 
behind closed doors, I think teams and players are coming to agreement that it may be time for the player to move on. And so it's, it's a mutual decision. But I, I also think one of the things we've worked towards, again, over, over the years in, through collective bargaining, is shortening contracts and trying to find the right balance. Because remember, in our system, we pay out in the aggregate, call it you know, 50% of the revenue of the league, not a penny less, penny more. And then it's just the question of how that money gets distributed among 450 guys. So when, when, when we come up with a system where, for example, a team can pay its own player more, that of course creates an incentive for the player to stay in that market, but the player could choose to still move on. When we shorten contracts, on one hand, if I were representing the players, I'd say, well, you want guaranteed money. You don't want a position where oh, yeah. guy blows out his knee or whatever. There's just all kinds of risk where a guy is out of luck or, or just his skill declines. Let a, guy, let a guy take advantage of the leverage when he has it. But remember, Magic Johnson had a 25-year contract. <sighs> Damn. It, it, and people went crazy at the time. And Jerry Buss was a genius and probably made incredible good business sense for Magic Johnson. But now... You know, we've essentially reduced maximum contracts to five years, in some cases, six. So now, you know, we used to refer to it in the league as sort of dead money at the end of the bench. You'd have a star player, but then enter, let's say, a nine-year contract or eight-year contract or seven-year contract. They would know at the time they negotiated that contract, just analytically, it was unlikely that this player was going to be at the top of his game towards those end years. Now, the player had the leverage in totality to get that money, but it also meant, and, and not to take anything away from the player, but if that player were sitting at, at the end of the bench and were a max player, there wasn't sufficient money to have guys on your roster that were going to help you win champions. Good, yeah. So mm -hmm. I think, again, when you shorten contracts, again, if you have a system where in the aggregate you're going to pay out 50%, by definition, it has to go to someone else. So it's, it, it might surprise you guys, but when you're sitting across from a group of players and you move more towards a paper performance and it's a fixed pool of money, that's not something that players come in who are automatically against, especially players who believe in themselves, <laughs> you know, who are saying, like, it's fine. I like this paper performance. Because the other hand, if you have a shorter contract and you feel you're underpaid you're or free. you haven't had a chance to, to – you become a free agent. Also, it's like, I'm going to show them, and then my next contract, I'm going I'm to make even more. Yeah, I think everything that you guys do business-wise with the players mm – -hmm is idolized by every other league. Yep. So you need to know that as a guy that's running one of the power fours. And All-Star Weekend is a celebration. I'm excited to see how Indianapolis treats you, how yeah. you appreciate the hell out of the city. I think you're going to love it. Obviously, you've been here before. And uh, I can't wait to see you guys put on a show this weekend. We appreciate the hell out of yeah, you. Yeah, well, th thank you also for uh, participating in the celebrity. I, I, not as a player, as I understand I mean, yeah. it. But, I'm but, in balking season. Okay, I got it. But uh, <laughs> Now's not time to jump. You're going to be out there, so I'm thank on you for being there. Yeah, thank you for the invite. Friday night. And uh, no, Indianapolis has been fantastic. Uh, I, I just quickly about Herb Simon, who is the, mm -hmm. the principal governor, owner of the team. He's the Simon Malls, yeah. brilliant. Oh, Simon Malls. Nice he, 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 and, he and his brother Mel created Simon Property. Simon Malls, they, they own the bought the team together. Mel died some number of years ago. Um, but Herb is, he, he's very sensitive. I'm not going to say the oldest owner in the league, but he's the longest standing. <laughs> he truly is the longest standing owner in the NBA. Um, it, it, he's an incredible person. Uh, this guy, Rick Fusen, who runs the team, he was here in 1985 when the last NBA All-Star game was in Indianapolis. You know, and also just, just a shout out to your city. I mean, to me, just as someone who travels all over the country and all over the world for that matter, this is the city that works. Yes. You know, and the oh, state yeah. too, you know, with, you know, it, the party doesn't even matter. A governor of one party, a mayor of a different party, they work so well together. Uh, just the way the community comes together for big events. Oh. I mean, I, no one quite does it like Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. I mean, Las Vegas is just at a different scale because of who they are. But I'd say different if someone's laws. coming into a market just to make it turnkey for us to do business, um, it's been fantastic here. So, so thank you to the community. Hey, we thank you for joining us. And thank you. For, you're awesome. Yeah, we'll be yeah. back in about three minutes. Take care. Hey, you're awesome. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric in Brookings. Yes! College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. 
a man who was my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. No, big go, blue go, Jacks. see Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right oh. off the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hi, Daniel Russo! <laughs> wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes! Yes! Serious. Go! Yes. Go! Yes! He's being stick with that 15. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! Whoa! And I will never, ever in the history of my life cut against that ball. Oh. Please no excuse my dumb friend Kirk. <laughs> you look at this crowd, they've been out here since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000. And when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakota. The Dakota was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota marker is back in beautiful Brookings, South Dakota. The following program is a collection of stooges talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Damn it! Your friend tell a friend something nice could change their life. Hello, beautiful people! And welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this We Love Love Commissioner Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Hour 2 of the program begins right now. Sports! Our wonderful, we just had a great conversation about the sport of basketball with the commissioner of the NBA, Old Adam. So, hey, six foot three, not six foot six. Mm -hmm. He is handsome. Might be the first person that has ever worn an actual suit and tie into this particular Thunderdome, but thank you. To him and the NBA for their hospitality, for not only joining us, but taking over the city of Indianapolis and bringing so much money to this glorious town. We will play great hosts as the NBA celebrates all of their phenomenal talent that have come to town. Now, it's not just me here on this glorious Valentine's Day, which we hope you are having a lovely one. The Toxic Table is here, although it looks a little bit different. Boston Connor and Darius J. Butler. Hey, Con, man, I know you're a big basketball fan because you're from up there in Boston. Sure. Uh, a lot of people say that, like, Adam Silver, you know, uh, not an easy job being a commissioner or anything. No. How about how he handled that like a complete human there? I mean, yeah, that was... I, I mean he's a nuclear weapon. <laughs> uh, there, there are some commissioners who refuse to come on the show and we won't, you know, acknowledge them, but Adam Silver is a weapon. I loved everything he said and then when he talked about Indianapolis too, like Indiana is a working city. And, and 
for things like this, and you've mentioned it state, a bunch of times. State, yeah, excuse me. Yep. Yeah. But a bunch of times you've said it. Like, the hospitality in Indiana is real. Like, this is a great city for an all-star game. Hopefully we can get some other events, a la Super Bowl, WrestleMania, who knows. Come on, come on. Something come to think about, and I, I think this weekend's going to be incredible. Also confirm his windmilling days are behind my What? I, I, asked him. I did ask him. He said, no, I can't. That's a great anymore. question, uh, because we were, whenever he was going to get introduced, we are going to chest pass, boom. boom. So go ahead and take one. Yeah, if yeah, you want to break the gro- uh, break the glass mm-hmm. here at the Thunderdome, do it. He said he doesn't do that anymore. Darius, yeah, that's cool. good journalism. I had to ask him. I had to ask. I know the people wanted to know. That Chris Paul trade was obviously a topic of discussion mm-hmm. for us here earlier today because if LeBron was to go to Golden State Warriors, Ooh. you would assume like Wild. LeBron, Steph, Draymond, who's – Oh yeah, he probably he might. He would love that. A little bit of Draymond. Clay probably would have been a Laker. Clay's gone honest. for sure. Yeah, but like the thought of Draymond and LeBron being on the same team, you know, wow, that's what a force to be reckoned. Yeah, Draymond tried to recruit him allegedly. Well, called Rich Paul. You're talking about recruit them now. What about all offseason? Aren't they? Oh yeah, they're hand in hand pretty much every event mm-hmm. kind of uh-huh. together in there. But LeBron going to Golden State would be absurd. That would be yeah. absolutely absurd. I guess we were pretty close to that, even though the Lakers said no at the end of the day. How about him saying, "I didn't know anything about that." Yeah, don't worry. don't 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 say that. That's me. I I I, I they, if they would have put across my desk, I would have approved it if it was within the guidelines. Don't trust them. of an NBA trade. But to be clear, they do not trust us to kind of hold that information in, which I respect the self awareness. One half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys tone digs is here. Tom, whenever you talk about gambling on the NBA All-Star game, what are you looking at, pal? Uh, The over. The over always and forever will be the play in the NBA All-Star game. I mean, and if you're going to bet on the dunk contest as well, there's pretty much only one NBA player in the dunk contest, and that's Jalen Brown. So, I mean, that's probably the way to go there. But over and then dunk contest, there's there's one NBA player. What? I'd probably bet on the one NBA player. Who's that? Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, baby. And and then you got um, Mac McClung. Mac McClung. Not in the NBA. Nope. You got Obi Toppin's, Obi Toppin's brother. brother. Is he in the NBA? He's in the or, NBA. Okay, but sure, we all know that. But Mac McClung has a chance to win that. Yeah, exactly. This is his super. Yeah, yeah, ball. because Again? no one's he in it. Last year? He won it last year, right? Yeah, he won it last year. Yeah, Looking yeah, for back to back. Yeah, yeah. How, how, that's, and I was going to ask him that. How does that happen? And what I, I wonder what type of brainstorm, what type of things they're throwing at the wall to get the guys back in it. Because we all grew up with, I mean, we're too young for MJ and Dominique, but Kobe. Yeah. We saw Vince. Vince. We saw all these greats, you know, have Tracy. that moment. Dwight Howard, Trace mm-hmm. McGrady, like some great, great dunk competition. So I would, I would, I would be interested in how they're figuring it out. Joining us now from an attic in Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, a man who's a Super Bowl champion, the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, uh, college football national champion with the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. Hey, hey. Hawker. Oh. AJ, we have a man named AQ Shipley joining us sitting at the end of the desk, but he can't hear anything or say anything. So uh, it's good. he's just going to be doing a lot of hand motion. Hey, baby, AQ. Super Bowl champion. AJ, AJ, we got a Super Bowl parade kicking off in Kansas City. I believe they're having an absolute blast. Uh, you were the only team, I think, in modern history that did not get to have a parade, even though you all went to Lambeau and had a blast. Do you look back upon that day fondly as the greatest day of your life, like what AQ Shipley called the parade, the boat parade they had down there in Tampa? Well, I mean, AQs was much different than what I experienced in Green Bay. It was very, very cold, and we did a lap around the stadium and then stood there, and some people made some comments, and then we left. So we didn't really have the same boat parade experience that AQ had. That looked like it was a lot of fun. Ours was fun, just a little bit cold. I, I can't say it's the greatest day of my life, but winning the Super Bowl was definitely one of the greatest days of my life. No yeah, I, I assume that you remember that forever. And congrats to Patrick Mahomes seemingly having another 10 uh, that is yeah. going to take place. Mm-hmm. He already has three. And he's only played football for six years in the NFL. So his batting percentage is pretty high for when it comes to Lombardi. If he gets to seven, which is where Tom Brady is, obviously you have to have the conversation. And we thought to ourselves, there's no way anybody's going to catch Tom. No. And then this son of a bitch wins it with his worst offense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to see videos from the parade where he's going to say, hey, see you guys next year. First team ever to get a three-peat. Did the Patriots ever do that? I didn't think so. We'll see you then. It's like these guys have the right mindset. They have the right team. And they're going to continue to enjoy themselves. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who's one of the only members of the Houston Texans Ring of Honor. He got a chance to call a Super Bowl from the Super Bowl field Whoa. on Super Bowl wow. Sunday. Now, what he said was obviously fantastic. Very in-depth knowledge yep. and insight that right. people could have not only gambled upon, but looked at during the game and said, you know what, that J.J. Watt, he said this was going to happen. Yep. But it seems like his words were forgotten. It was all about how he looked. <laughs> More specifically, that hair. Yep. Joining us now, the man with the hair, J.J. Watt. Yeah, J.J. Woo! 
JJ, obviously the pearly whites are beautiful. Nobody was talking about those. Nobody was talking about your suit that fit perfectly. Oh, had that big tie. Perfect. Nobody was talking about your posture. Your posture was phenomenal. Second to none. At that desk. All anybody's talking about is how good that hair looked. That, at least that's how I read it. Uh, whenever you're opening your phone after your coverage of the Super Bowl <laughs> and you're seeing one particular notion the entire time, uh, how did it make you feel? Did we make any changes? And congrats on one of the most self-aware tweets in the history of Twitter <laughs> slash X, JJ Watt. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, I, I you partially expect it. I mean, when you, anytime you switch it up, especially when there's 125, 200 million people watching, you know, um, there's a chance for a reaction. But um, I definitely didn't know it was going to be like that. That's for sure. Um, I mean, it was it was fascinating to watch. It was fun. It was it was great. I mean, uh, yeah, it was. I, I don't know what to say, really. Uh, can you turn your head to the side a little bit? Let's see. I mean, you guys saw it all week. Like, I, I had the hairstyle all week. Like, yeah. I got on your no, no, I like that. that was what I think happened is the ratio of Spike to Don. The ratio to Spike to Don. I don't know if you've heard me talk about this yet, but the rate because as somebody who had that hairstyle at one point in my life. You know, the sloppy spike there. Uh, the ratio in which is up and down is a big part of the slot. I think Super Bowl Sunday, your hair was right. You know, your hair was right. There might have been a little bit more spike than down, and everybody seemingly noticed. But when it comes to that particular hairstyle, I think you executed it perfectly. Yeah, look. I think it was well, a good, I, good look. I mean, the thing about the hairstyle is you literally just, you know, take the product, you do this Gotta and then you're blue. done and so like if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't you're not like going back and fixing it so i just woke up on super bowl sunday put the stuff in went and that's that's how it looked that day so yeah that's what it was when you looked every in the, day it looks different when you looked in the mirror did you think to yourself those people were wrong I don't look like a boy bander. No, I look good. Did you think that to yourself? No, no, they're, no. It's I mean, they're all all of them are fair. Yeah, I, I don't. I any I like it, so I I really don't care. I Amen. think. Hey, here we go. Amen. That's all. Hell yeah. Yeah. Look, look here. Some Guy Fieri there. There's certainly some yes. Sugar Ray. There's definitely a little nine boy tips. band action. Um, there's no frosted tips. I I don't think it. It took Same it to shit. that extreme, but I absolutely loved all of the, I mean, the memes and the jokes, they were great. They were hilarious. I'm sure you loved them. Yeah, you, you should maybe put the sun in in there. Ooh, yeah, smart. that's a good a idea. Sun in. You remember, let's go. Lemon, uh, lighten it up. I mean, I, I don't I don't think we're going to take the tips should. that far, but I, I do enjoy, I've never had my hair really this long before. It's like, I, I've never grown it out, so I'm enjoying growing it out a little bit. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Keep going. Oh, maybe, yeah. Get a mullet, yeah. dude. Yeah, Get a, you would look unbelievable with a mullet, bro. I mean, Usher... 90s, like a little throwback, yeah. Alicia Keys, Usher. Like, I, you know, just toss it back a little bit. Every style comes back around mm -hmm. every 20, 30 years. Cool. So, why not? Let's talk about the Super Bowl. How'd you feel? I feel like the game was fantastic. Started out a little tight, obviously. Thought the Niners had it. Then there's a fumble. The ball's on the ground four times in the first quarter. There's nerves for everybody, even the back to back champions now, the Kansas City Chiefs. How do you feel like the game went for CBS? 202 million. They said that game reached. Obviously, it's fantastic. But I think the game was great. What was your take on it, JJ? It was an incredible game. I mean, we were obviously extremely excited and happy to have such a great game. Um, that's all you really want. You know, the first half, Coach Cower and I were extremely happy because it was, you know, defense. There was there was a little bit of a low-scoring game, you know, fumbles, things like that. Um, so we were all happy. And the offensive guys at halftime were wanting some more action. And then the second half, obviously, everything picked up. And, I mean, at halftime of that game, I literally, on that broadcast, I said, this, this game is going to come down to two things. Who makes a big mistake? And does Travis Kelsey get involved or not? And that muff punt, um, muff, not muff, whatever, it hits the guy's leg. And then Kelsey obviously had eight catches for 92 yards in the second half. I mean, those two things right there changed the outcome of the game. So it was it was fascinating. I really, really, really wanted it to go into the second overtime period so that Sean McManus, our outgoing CEO, or, could say that he – called it and the internet would lose its mind completely um, but we were four seconds away from that. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes ruined it all for Sean McManus and the script writers mm -hmm. and also Man. I saw some people talk about the script writers about because of how much money was gambled upon it, the Niners had to win that game. Mm -hmm. The Niners had to win that game so kind of a little bit of a throw off of the script at the end but the refs obviously wanted Taylor and the Chiefs yep. to yep. win which is this is the world we're going to live in now forever Yeah, and that uh, 
That's good. I guess anytime you got 200 and some million people watching something, money gambled upon something, the eye of the world on something, there's going to be thoughts about, well, this seems to be a little bit of muck. And uh, the Chiefs being the next dynasty seems to be the, the red dot of everybody's focus now at this point, JJ. I mean, it was very nice. I mean, there's no, no point in that game where you're like, oh, these refs are really slanted one way or another. It was very nice. The field was never an issue. The refs were never an issue. Like, it was really nice to have a game where it was just good old-fashioned, solid football game. Um, and that I, I do think that it's easy to point out those flaws when it happens last year's field or, you know, big ref plays. But it was great just to have a football game decided on the field. It was there were a lot of fumbles in the first half. It was it was pretty wild, and then obviously the punt in the second half too. Um, but it was it was fascinating. I, I like to shout out Leo Chanel, uh, Wisconsin Badger, who forced that fumble in the first quarter on Christian McCaffrey, massive play, and then he's also the guy who blocked the extra point, which became, as we know, one of the biggest plays mm-hmm. um, of the entire game. So give a lot of credit to that guy who might not be getting as much credit as he deserves for having a massive game for the Chiefs. What? Who? What's his name? Leo he, he does the dirty work too. Oh, yeah. He does a bunch of dirty work. He was setting edges. He's taking double teams yep. off people. He had a hell of a game. Wisco guy. He did weapon. High Wisco guy. He had a great game. Wow, Super Bowl champion. I, I assume he's enjoying the hell out of the today's parade. Go ahead, AJ. JJ, what was it like? Like, what was the atmosphere like? You, I know you had like a six-hour pregame show, halftime, cool. post-game, all of that. What was that atmosphere like? Like, how bizarre was it? Did you get to meet any of the cool celebs we saw throwing up? Maybe some. I don't know, weird signs that we're not sure uh, what they might mean. And also, the second part of that, how awesome was that grass? Like, I thought for a little bit that they had field turf. It looked so beautiful. The grass is incredible. I will say that. We were obviously focused on that most of the week. And I had actually been out there earlier in the week with Usher for his halftime rehearsals and everything um, and was oh, looking at the grass. What's that? What's that? What's that? Were you, you supposed to be? Yeah, were, were you, you supposed to be Alicia Keys? Take Bieber's no, no. No, the show the show we're doing, what it takes. Um, the episode one is Usher in the halftime show. Whoa! So we've, we've breaking, breaking. For, Did we sell that? Where's that going to air? Is this ball time? We've been with him for a while. We're still in the – no, ball town's coming. Um, but, no, we're still in the process. But so the grass – the grass was phenomenal. I mean, it truly was. And I'm, I'm very critical of grass. Obviously, I haven't played for 12 years. And you go out there and you look at it, and especially after the game, went back out there and looked at it, and you could have played another game immediately. It was held up really well. Um, as far as the atmosphere, uh, this is really the first Super Bowl that I've ever like let myself just take it all in and enjoy it and appreciate the atmosphere because normally I've only been a couple times for the Walter Payton man of the year where you have to go out and do the little speech and then I would leave right after like I was a player I wanted to be a part of it and I didn't want to sit there and watch it if I wasn't going to be a part of it so this one for me being able to take it all in um, I'm not going to lie to you man it really made me sad that I was never a part of one never never got to one because it is it is incredible the experience i mean everything that comes with it is is special and then i also saw the other side of it um with the end of the game and the chiefs winning that and then watching all the 49ers players and seeing how close you were to infamy and in history and legacy um and knowing what that means and knowing that crushing feeling so it was fascinating for me to watch i really really enjoyed it and uh, it sure is a spectacle, man. Vegas does it right. Vegas absolutely does it right. So much heartbreak in that Niners locker room. I mean, just Ooh. so much. Mm-hmm. You know, especially with everything they've been through. And now everybody's comparing Shanahan to Andy Reid, getting to the game. Can't win big games. Well, was the NFC Championship a big game? Because one NFC Championship. Well, we're talking about the biggest, the biggest game. Well, we played Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. So, like, what do we, uh, you know, maybe that's going to be a tough thing to win in this entirety <laughs> of it all, whatever you talk about it. But, like, that Niners team, you know, they were favored, obviously. So that makes it even worse. But whenever you think about this Chiefs team, listen, shout out to the Niners. Hell of a year. Ta- so good to, year. Now. Excited to see what the Niners do next year. We got nothing but faith in the Niners. Yep. And I'm excited to see Brock Purdy in his third year. Mm-hmm. Woo. Brock Purdy is going to be in his third year next year. Whoa, he's a vet now. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see what he does. But let's talk about this Chiefs team. We talked to Patrick Mahomes. He said he's planning on playing until his kid, you know, can grow up in a locker room like he did. So he's got another what, 11, 12 years left in this thing. Andy Reid said, I've never thought about retiring. Everybody keeps asking me. Stop asking me. Go ask Belichick if he's going to retire. He's still trying to get a job. Go ask Pete Carroll if he wants a job. He's going to do that. Travis Kelsey said, I'm playing for as long as Andy Reid is coaching. He just said that on his New Heights show. It's like, what are we looking at? We're looking at something. We're looking at an anomaly here with this Chiefs team. It's almost like 
it's devastating to think about, especially because you got close ties to Houston. Obviously, with me with Indianapolis, these are AFC teams. Then you think about Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, what? Lamar Jackson. You go through the list of all these greats, and it's like we're staring down. This is this is the one. The, the, they're the ones, aren't they? they? They are the new ones. That's what we're looking at. Yeah, I mean, I I have to. I mean, I I ran into the Tom Brady New England Patriots buzzsaw. Also ran into the Patrick Mahomes Chief buzzsaw. It's uh, there's no doubt about it. They see they clearly have. Um, not only a phenomenal roster organizational build, but they also have that extreme confidence and belief, in, rightfully so, because of everything that they've done, because of what they've built there, and because of how they've built it. I mean, people looked at this year and said this was kind of their down year, or whatever it may be, and all they did was go out there and say, no, you know what, I think we will win another one. Um, I, yeah, I think we will go through some of the greatest teams of the entire season on our path through the playoffs to win the Super Bowl. I mean, just look at their path. It's unbelievable. You know, you go through Miami, you go through the Bills, you go through um, the Ravens, and then you got to go through the Niners. Like, that's a gauntlet of teams, and they just, every single step of the way, chop them down, and you got to give them credit, and, and it's truly impressive. It's truly incredible, and Andy Reid, unbelievable coach, clearly knows how to handle those guys from a personality standpoint, and also just a phenomenal coaching standpoint. Um, and then Pat Pat is Pat, man. What do uh, you think about Travis though pushing over Andy Reid? Whoa! Yeah. Come on! I, I I saw you address it. I think you addressed it exactly correctly. I mean, yeah, I bet in that moment uh, he definitely wishes he had that back because I mean, Andy Reid's what seventy plus years old. Like he can't be just coming out of nowhere blindsiding that guy. Like he 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 handled it well. I mean, he he stumbled a little bit, but he didn't go down. Like I know a lot of seventy plus year olds going down right there. Um, Andy Reid held it well, 70. and then I did see the clip where Andy Reid shoulder check Kelsey earlier in the year. So <laughs> there was a little back and forth. And I think that that truly is a sign of like a phenomenal relationship when you can do something like that, which is clearly like, okay, I probably shouldn't have done that, but everybody overcomes it and still goes out there and does something great. Um, and I mean, also like, he did need the ball more. Like he did get the ball eight <laughs> times in the agree. second half for ninety-two yards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was your big halftime. It worked. I think that was your big halftime take, actually. Uh, if I recall, yeah. Right. Nobody remembers what I said. Not a not a single person knows well, what the hell I said. Yeah, Pat does. Pat, Pat had knows. one catch. Remember. One catch. He needs more catches if the Chiefs want to win this thing. I mean, AJ were actually mistake. texting Thank during you. it. We're like, JJ's right here. JJ, out of everybody up yeah. there, there was like fourteen people on that. So many tons. At, at least, least. fourteen. Hey, they got they, they they throw some slight shade at you too. I, I don't know if you were picking that up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Who? I mean, I only show up part time. I mean, I, they, they, I mean, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, they love to throw that. Boom loves Boom loves to come at me for uh, being part time, and I'm like, yeah, I I like to spend time with my kids. No yeah, but you. if you were there full time, all of a sudden we don't really remember potentially. Uh huh. You know. A good point. Yeah, because you showed up there and your hair was the topic of conversation. Mm -hmm. Let alone if you were there every single. Mm -hmm. We would like to see you there every single Sunday as well. Now that we're talking about it, why don't you gain a work ethic a little? Please. Bit? Yeah. Why don't you go there every single week? Um, oh no. No, nope, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I don't know what happened. I'm here. Sign up. I'll Can't hear him. Well, can you hear me? Oh, don't die. Uh, you can hear me. Can you, you hear, hear me? I don't. AQ? I okay, can't believe I fell for that damn trick. Yeah. I really can't. I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> I know you guys well enough by now. I know the show, and I still fell into the trap like a dunce. No, I mean, you're kind of on an island there. Yeah. Okay. You have to fall for it. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, if you don't, then you're not paying attention or listening. That's why we're real assholes. Yeah, you know, because like you have to fall for that. Seemingly, you have to. Because what was the uh, right. what was the best moment of your guys' week? I'm fascinated. What was the best moment of your week in Vegas? You, yeah, I mean, besides it, you, it, it was the it was the first night, but Ty and Pat ringing that siren. <laughs> it, it, it's real hard to beat that. The Las Vegas Golden Knights really. Hey, they took care. How much of the city did you get to experience? Did you go to U2? Did you do that entire thing? Dana's gym. <sighs> no, I didn't I didn't go to U2. Um, and it sounds like after lucky your guys' view, it was uh, probably. <laughs> All right. You call, lucky uh, son of I'm sick of Adam Silver hearing about us and obviously <laughs> everybody else hearing about us. Like, yeah, we, we're the first people, I guess, to ever. And by we, I mean Ty really <laughs> dove in because Ty was. I was either hungover or drunk for five straight days, yep. which was a <laughs> yeah. phenomenal play. And that's when you get the best tie. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. when the it's, best tie is really – yeah. it's not sustainable. But if he could do that every day of the program, oh. I think people would then finally watch our show, yeah, start which drinking. is what people were kind of saying about it. But it's we're not big U2 fans. Like, we know their songs. Same here. We're there for the sphere, though, and U2 just so happens to be the host of the sphere almost. What we should have known is, like, U2 is established enough. Mm -hmm. U2 has done enough. That's a U2 show. 
and the spear just so happens to be alongside U2. Like, that is where I think we potentially got it wrong. But on the flip side, U2 definitely got it wrong for the crowd that was there. Yep. For sure. Because there's nobody really singing alongside of it. What did you get to do? Because I, I assume you went to all the events because you're, I, you're I did the Walker. sphere. Um, I did the sphere. I did the postcard from Earth, which was great. I just wanted to experience the sphere. The sphere is insane, as you guys know. It was 50 minutes. Perfect. In and out. Got oh. to see the sphere, experience it. Get out. Great. Um, I, Friday night was probably, Friday night was probably my, yeah, I had done that before you guys asked me to come with you too. And that was kind of why I said, like, I got it. Um, you did, you did stiff arm us. Yeah. Yeah. Remember we we invited him. That was the right play. You did the right play. I didn't know if you remembered that phone call or not. So I'm glad you remembered it. Thank you. What What? are you talking about? Um, What was that? It looked like it was a great, great night. This guy's got the mind of an elephant. I mean, you did. Truly great night. Yeah, it was great. Um, Friday night for me was great. Um, TJ was here, TJ and his wife, and uh, we we went to our f- good friend Sebastian Maniscalco. We went to his show at the Win Encore, and then after that, we went to Zach Bryan. Um, so it was kind of a cool one-two punch. That was the perfect quintessential Vegas. You get a comedian, you get some good dinner at an Italian restaurant, and then we got to go see a concert. So kind of rolled it all into one, and then obviously Super Bowl Sunday was pretty awesome. What'd you do, early bedtime for Super Bowl Sunday on Saturday night? Would you prepare like it was an actual game? How'd you get ready for that? No, um, I, I, I don't mean this as any, um, like, I know, like, it's a, it's a, it, you do your research, you do everything, but like, I, I'm talking about football. Like, it's, it's We're talking about football. Hair. Like, I don't, I did not, I did not uh, prepare. Like, I mean, I read my notes, but I did not, like, I, I was at the hotel gym until nine. That's the problem. I went to the, the, I went to the hotel gym care. at nine until it's 9 p.m. until she closed. I closed it down gym. the final night. Well, that's smart. How was Dana's gym? Did you get to go over there? Yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's, it's 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 truly insane. I were, mean, it's truly. Were you insane. alone in there? Did you get to work it, out with the Rock? Yeah, hundred percent solo. No, I walked in. I, I first of all, I had no idea what to expect. I literally, he was like, "Yeah, come over anytime today," and I actually showed up later than I thought. And I was like, "I literally don't know if Dana's here, if Dana's not here, if I'm working out at the UFC Performance Center, if I'm working out at his personal gym. I have no clue." So I pulled up. The you know, security gate, they let me in the front door, and then his assistant meets me out front and says, come on up, brings me up to his war room uh, where they make all the fights. They got all the fights on the wall and everything, and he's like, hey, man, come on in. He shows me around the war room, and then he goes, here, let me take you take you in, and he takes me into his personal office, which is mind-blowing in its own right. I mean, he literally has a 1500 full samurai suit and yep. three samurai swords in there with a saber-toothed tiger fossil. Yes, like, just and just you're just like all right where am i like what what's going on then he takes you back through his through his closet he has like a full blown closet with all every shoe and and then through the closet is his personal weight room and it just opens up into a i don't know 3000 4000 square foot weight room I, I don't know square feet but it's very very large um and then you go through that and he's got his own full blown personal spa. I'm talking like <laughs> nicest hotel spa you've ever seen just for him. And he's got a cold tub, he's got a steam room, he's got alkaline aligning beds, he's got the red light therapy. Look at this, look at this spa. Like this is his personal spa. It, it, and then you walk through that and he's like, here, and then this is my kitchen. And then he's like, this is the kitchen. There's four chefs on staff. Just tell them what you want to eat and they'll make it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is just for you. Yeah, it's just this is just it's, we just got this. You know, I figured. Well, you got it. too much money. Yeah, yeah. They told me I had <laughs> this amount of money uh-huh. on an office, and this is how it ended up working out. But congrats to you. Whole place is yours now. Works out. Did you go through the Did you go through the closet and think about taking some? Dana, way to go. I, uh, hey, Dana, Dana way nice to go. Setup, man. He's got a nice setup. Yeah, and he was like, "Yeah, anytime you want to use it, come on. Like, it's my gym is your gym, and like you know how that is, like." I, I would use it every single day, but I'm not like I'm. I'm not just going to be like, "Hey, here I am again. Look at me." Like, <laughs> you should think about it. What did you order from the chefs? Did you get anything? Nothing, nothing, dude. I, I felt so Jay, bad. Jay. Like, I literally, I felt bad. I, lit- I I did my workout and I got out of there. Were I you the grunting in there? Did you do like a real workout? Did you like real? Did we? Really- yeah, no, I, I did. A- <laughs> so this is messed up. This is how my head thinks, and maybe this is messed up of me. I assume he's got to have cameras in there somewhere. Like, I assume he's got cameras because sure. it's, I mean, he doesn't want people to steal shit. So I felt like I had to perform during my workout. Like, I, I, I did some serious weights in that weight room because I didn't want him to think I was a punk. So I was putting up real weights in that weight room. 
Dana White's watching the video back from the surveillance. He's like, uh, I think Jim Records. I think JJ just smashed. <laughs> Holy shit. All of the gym. And I had no spotter. It was just me. Just oh, me by myself. Trapped no under a spotter. Bar. So I'm like, I'm like. You're trapped under 505. <laughs> hey, so That'd JJ. Be awesome. So whenever we say you look small and your neck looks small, like you get very genuinely offended. Yeah, wow. You get genuinely offended. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm purposely losing weight. So I'm not like, not much weight, but I'm purposely redistributing the calories. Sure. All right, well, you look good. The calories going right hey. to the hair. Yeah, it feels like it. It's fantastic. It Let's get back up. to the game. D Bud's got a question <laughs> for you. Not ask Dana to uh, come on your pod any time soon. He just walked off <laughs> Howie Mandel's pod. Did you see that? Is that real? Is that I real? saw that. I saw that. Of course. Is that AJ? for shoot wow. for shoot, brother? Was that a work? He didn't he didn't walk <laughs> off your guys' pod, so it's great. Well, he actually uh, told us he loves being on pods. He did say that. And then today we wake up to <laughs> Did a you guys ever gamble? Did you guys ever go gamble? We did not make it over. You two drained the energy out of the room. It killed us. <laughs> uh, to be honest. Us. And then on uh, Thursday, the WWE presser took place. Yeah, yeah. And then it was a big uh, get in where you fit in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was sleep. Yeah, bingo. Me yeah, too. took we Same. took a sleep on Thursday. Felt very old. I actually sent a text to Dana like 4 a.m. local time because I passed out at like seven. He he had sent a nice voice memo. You know, saying, hey, what's going on? Big voice, big voice memos, yeah. Yeah, he sent me a voice memo. It was very kind of him, and I just responded, I fell asleep at 7. Wild decision. Missed everything. Sorry about it. Whoops. And then we just moved along. <laughs> he would have made us probably 120000 oh, bucks. Yeah, probably. I guess that's how it goes. You go gamble with him, it's like, yeah, yeah you're going to make your money. It's absurd. That's how it's going to yep. go. I, I Did you do that? Win. Did you go? No, I did not. Um, I, have, I have heard insights into how it works, and everybody wins. Everybody wins. It's pretty awesome. It is awesome. I yeah, think we need to. Do, I need would like strategy. to go work out there at the at the yeah. gym. I want to get definitely. You see the pedicure set up there? Yeah, yeah it's very nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, four chefs. I'm ordering something to eat too. Yeah, Duncan, before the workout. By the way, right. during the workout. What would you order, man? Like I, I was like, I'm staring. I love. Chicken I walked parm. in. Oh, I chicken parm. I was gonna order omelet. something. Filet. Yeah. Omelet. And then I just grabbed the water and walked out. I felt so bad. Like I was like, you guys did you cold crazy. tub and all that? And do the light, yeah, the yeah. red light and all that, everything? Yeah, I did all that. It was okay. great. I mean, it is a great setup. So you did go into the spa? Yeah. No, I, I did the cold tub, the alkaline bed, and the uh, yeah. red light so bed. Was he okay with you just broadcasting this all to the world? Yeah, I assume you had to yeah, ask. I, yeah, I asked. I asked before. Because he, he was obviously clearly proud of it, as he should be. I mean, the place is insane. Um, and I was like, dude. This place is absolutely nuts. Do you mind if I share this? Because this is this the world needs to see this. Like, yeah, no problem. What if, absolutely, man. Did you hear? Great dude. Hey, did you awesome. Hear PK Subban. The, yesterday, did you no. hear this at all? No. Six days a week, he's retired right now. Six days a week, he's getting a ninety-minute massage. <laughs> what? Uh huh. <laughs> that, 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 that's that, that's got to be counter. That's got to be counterintuitive. No? I mean, that's that's like a that's like the Wagyu beef. In Japan, uh, oh, the baby months? cows. What do you mean? He's like, saying, don't don't they massage those cows every single day? Oh yeah, they're tender. They got deep I tissue. That's why. Uh, that's they why the restaurant young, we went to that was eight hundred twenty dollars for twelve ounces of wagyu beef. Oh, you soak uh, them in the Epsom. I, you, Man, ninety minute massage every single day. Do you, different body part every day. I mean, nope. ninety minutes on one, one body, body part. No, that's. And then he does a forty five minute hot bath afterwards with Epsom salt. After every day, six out of seven days of the week, he's doing this. I mean, that's that's what. Uh, I mean, this is terrible math. Two hours, fifteen minutes every single day, gone right out of the gate. Well, oh, plus oh. an hour and a half workout beforehand, mm -hmm. and he potentially adds boxing. Yep. Yeah. I mean, sweet life. Wake up, sweet at life. Is, Self improvement every day. Yeah. There you go, PK. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Do it. I think Dana Dana doesn't even do that. He's literally yeah. in a full spa in his office. PK's got life figured out right yeah, now. Yeah, he sure. does appear. Darius got a question for you. But too, yeah, too. let me ask you about uh we talked about the refs kind of staying out of we had Gene on, on Friday. He talked about kind of the refs and they're looking for wells, not the minnows. But as a as a former great pass rusher, how do you feel about the lack of holding the calls? I think Connor said last three Super Bowl the Chiefs have played in, zero holding calls. I know a lot of people were talking about Michael Parsons barely getting any calls this year. I'm sure your brother and my Miles Garrett, all these guys deal with the same type of shit. How do you see that, I guess, as a former pass rusher and then objectively as a fan of the game? Would you prefer to stay that way? Or like, how do you see it on both sides? Yeah, uh, as a pass rusher, it is extremely frustrating. I mean, there's 
no question that every great pass rusher in the game is having holding calls missed on them multiple times. Um, you definitely do have situations where they are holds, but you know you're not going to get the call. And then you have situations where they are holds and you know you got screwed and should have gotten the call and you didn't. So there's two different ones. And it is getting a little bit harder and harder to discern them. But like when you're watching on TV, you know, with all these slow motion replays and everything, there's a lot of times where fans are complaining like that was a hold. And as an NFL pass rusher, you know you're never going to get that call. You're like, okay, if I rip into him, a lot of times I'm not going to get that call. The refs have been told if he rips into a hold, don't give it to him. Or a lot of times if you're double teamed and they're holding you, which they do, the refs say if they commit two to one guy, they're not giving you that hold. Same thing. Like I've seen the post one going around. Like if you spin into if you spin into a hold or if you go straight down the middle of a guy and he has you, but you're chest to chest, yep. they're not calling that. Like it has to be outside of the body where a guy is literally pulling you and it's like away from his body. It's and it sucks, yeah, because it's it's very difficult to do. Um, but I learned by the end of my career what they were gonna call and what they weren't. And I only went to the ref and talked to him or had a conversation if it was one that I that I thought. And what I think is the answer, um, because I think refs understand that a ten yard penalty is a massive penalty in the NFL. So I think if you made holding a five yard penalty I think it is going to be called much more fairly and much more realistically because it's not as crippling to the offense. Man, I've been pitching that for a few years mm -hmm. because it is like because you could call it on every single play, and then first and twenty, done. That's it. It's all you're done. punting. You're you're immediately punting. It's just it doesn't seem mm -hmm. to make sense, especially because defense holding is five. Yeah. So yeah. like, what are we even doing here? Speaking of defenses and being held. AQ Shipley's got a question for you. <laughs> yeah, JJ. So obviously you watch the D line, right? Nick Bosa had ten pressures. There was plenty of times where he could have taken the inside move and probably got a sack and done all this other stuff. But I thought he was really disciplined with his rush, kind of doing this, and then making sure he kept contained. What were your thoughts on his game? Obviously he didn't have the stats that he was looking for, but ten pressures is a big number. Yeah, he played well. I mean, he played well. It's very tough, you know. And I thought about this in the Super Bowl in general, like. As soon as the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, automatically people are going to be like, oh, Brock Purdy can't win this, or oh, the 49ers did this, or oh, that. Like, you can play good, play very good, and lose a football game. And, like, that's just – it just so happens to be the most watched telecast in history, and it just so happens to be the biggest game in the world, and it just so happens to be the biggest prize you could lose. But you can play good football and still lose a game. And, yes, there's things you can do differently, and, yes, there's things you can want back. But I don't think the 49ers played a bad game by any means. I think that the Chiefs just played better right at the end. And, I, I mean, you look at it now, and especially in hindsight, but with the research and everything, I mean, taking the ball at the beginning of overtime probably was not the right decision. So, I mean, that, well, that's okay. one thing. There's a take from J.J. Watt. Ooh. Your take is, for, uh, is that I think you're viewing it more like college overtime rules now with the way the playoff rules are set up because you're going to get your shot anyways. Now, if it gets to a third possession, cool, but what do the stats tell you about a third possession when Patrick Mahomes on the other side? Uh, so you are And the only time it gets to a third possession and it matters is if they were both field goals because the Chiefs said they were going to go for two if they got the if they got the ball in the second possession. So either way, it was going to be over after two possessions unless it was field goal, field goal. So then you have to factor that into play because – like all the, then it shifts the analytics completely. The third third drive doesn't matter. If they said they were going to go for two. Yeah, but then Niners maybe get for two. There's just so many conversations about like if you execute, who cares? Get like two. Niners take ball first. If they go down and score a touchdown, there's a whole different pressure. Obviously, maybe momentum, vibes, everything like that. That is a conversation, and obviously the game plays how it is. But yeah, I do think though, like preparing for that and and there are teams that do prepare extremely hard for every single possible situation that comes up and sometimes it does get monotonous sometimes it does get you know you get bored with it and you're like we practice these uh nascar field goal scenarios a thousand times and it's never come up once in three years well you know this one time it comes up it's important hey we practice these overtime playoff rules in training camp and that's all the way you know four or five months away why are we practicing that now well because when that situation comes up you're going to be prepared and ready to handle it there's teams that have refs refs video every single week explaining what the refs are focusing on that week explaining what this ref called last week how they call the game so um i do think that sometimes those meetings can get like a little monotonous but 
in the biggest moments on the biggest stage, they certainly paid off here. Yeah, and you heard all the Chiefs players come out and be like, Andy Reid has gone through exactly what we're going to do with the playoff rules and overtime. Just making him look like a genius coach, like uh, yes. everything fantastic. And then on the other side, Yushchuk was like, oh, I didn't know that was the rules. It's like, oh. Whoa. Like, don't, don't say that, man. Just don't say it. Just don't say it. Don't say it. Like, yeah. like, I don't know what the benefit of saying that you didn't know the rules was. Like That doesn't make anybody here look good. Go ahead, AJ. JJ, so you said you went to the Zach Bryan concert on Friday. There's a video from, I don't know how many years ago, you demolished some poor guy at a Zach Brown band concert, uh-huh. I believe, on stage. Can you, can you let us know exactly what happened there? And if AJ that thinks alive? that was fake. So I didn't say that. I think it's oh, fake, I too. mean, is wrestling nice fake? Path. I mean, what do you mean? Whoa! whoa, whoa, whoa. The answer to that question is no, JJ. Shut your mouth. Watch it. <laughs> It uh, it was a great time, man. I've been Zach Brown's been yeah, a fan yeah. for uh, a friend for a oh. very long time. So saved his life, obviously. Nice tackle. That was a great. What, what is that great, guy exposed his ribs? That was a so, poor decision. Um, I'll give you the real story behind it. So oh. so that guy oh, is the soundboard operator. Is the soundboard operator for Zach Brown band? So we were behind the oh. stage, and he's a big Alabama fan, and I was a Wisconsin fan, and we were playing. Alabama that year in the first game of the season, I believe it was. And we were just messing around backstage, having some drinks. Zach was playing some music, and um, we were like, why don't we do something fun here? Because it was in Wisconsin. And so the guy was like, why don't, you, why don't, why don't I pretend to be a fan and, and storm the stage, and you're Zach's security, and you tackle me? And I was like, hey, man, like I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you're going to get hurt. <laughs> like I'm just going to let you know. And so I said, so we took a video. I still have the video. I don't know where it is, but I have the video on one of my phones. And it's, I took a video with him and I said, I am going to tackle you on stage. You will not hold me liable for anything that happens with <laughs> this back on. He on the video said, I will not hold JJ Watt liable for anything that happens on the stage. So we do it. The crowd goes nuts. It was bananas. Everybody, nobody knows. Is it real? Is it fake? Turns out. He broke a rib. Yeah. Oh. No. Yo, you broke his rib. Yeah, yeah. he didn't break yeah, a rib. He no, rib. he broke a rib. No, he you broke you oh. broke his rib. Now, you're not liable for that, but... Your shoulder did. Yeah, I'm not liable for any of it. I mean, you're just so big, too. So, I, I appreciate yeah. that soundboard operators, like... Why don't you why don't you not be a bitch? Yeah. <laughs> why don't you... Looking <laughs> up at oh, you, yeah. why don't you tackle me a little bit? You go form tackle there. Obviously, Zach says, J.J. Wald, everybody! Wow. And the place goes bananas. What a moment. That's what... Hey, that was when the J.J. Watt won it. That was that. That was during the. Yeah, some people didn't like that. Yeah, some people were like, "Oh, look at this guy." Yeah, well, that's <laughs> guess what, man. That's how shit goes when you when people are on board. People are on board when they hop off. They hop off. Why do you think people want to make the Chiefs villains now? Like, I'm sure it'll happen. Well, what people got people mad at Travis and he, for his haircut thing, and he didn't even say anything about it. So, well, listen, that's the world at the top. But like for you. What do people expect, J.J. Watt? Hey, do you want to go on stage during Zach Brown, who's one of the greatest musicians of all oh, time, and, that guy. and you want to tackle somebody, and then Zach say, hey, shout out to J.J. Watt. Like, are you supposed to say no to that? I don't understand on, how you're supposed to say no to that stuff. Like, you would be exactly. You'd be a bigger douchebag if you said no to that, I think. And that is kind of gets exactly. lost in the entire thing. But you've lived, obviously, a life of blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, like this, both publicly mm-hmm. and personally. Your brother is kind of in the middle of it right now. Everything he does is being talked about. Tone's got a question for yeah, you. Yeah, JJ, I, uh, I looked at the film and I looked at the stats, and I, I'd say you're a top five uh, rusher of all time in the NFL. So I want your opinion. I don't know if Mike Parsons agrees if you're top five all time or not after he's looked at the film. <laughs> for sure, he's looked at the film and the stats. Um, you know, saying one thing one day, one thing the next. He said your brother, who I think he played hooky because he isn't a top five pass rusher in the league right now to the NFL honors on Thursday night. Um, what's your thoughts on your brother playing hooky? Okay, he didn't go to the NFL honors, he didn't win defense player of the year, should have. And uh, Mike is saying he's not a top five uh, pass rusher in the NFL right now. <laughs> Question. To... This is journalism. Uh, Answer him, JJ, man. with your new hair. I mean, and make sure you watch the is, film. I, okay. And the stats. Yep, and the stats. But not the stats. But not the stats. But and and the stats. Yep. But bingo. definitely not the stats. But look at the stats. Bingo. Got it. Yeah. So uh I think I think the internet handled that properly. Um I think that it was <laughs> I think that it was handled appropriately and I mean that's what we're dealing with, man. That's that's, that's what we're dealing with. Was it your idea not for him to go to the honor? So hold on, or? it feels like quiet mouth, loud mind. What's going on over here? You say that's yeah, what? yeah. You don't you don't got to say everything. You don't got to say everything. I've said all the stuff I've needed to say about it. I've said everything I've put. I mean, it's 
I, I said what I wanted to say about it. Like it's, there is nothing against any, there's a ton of great pass rushers in this league. There's a ton of great defensive players in this league. There's a ton of great talent in this league. And not, none of the, none of it is anything to do with any of them. Everybody is great. I'm not, I'm not saying that anybody else is not great. I'm just simply looking at the literal facts and it's still, uh, just boggles my mind. And that's, did Raj call him and say, hey, we need you at NFL Honors? Um, no. Hmm. No, I mean, I would like, what, why would he be there? What, what, did he need, what did he need to be there for? So he knew he wasn't going to win before the award show? Yeah, wait, what? Yes, correct. That comes out before? Are you shitting me? Live? What are we talking about? What are we even doing? That's a shit. What do you mean? You guys find out before? When did you know you're a defense player of the year all those times? You're a defense player of the year. Yeah. Day of? When they call your name, right? I mean... No, like when I finished the season because I was the best. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Yeah, that's that's good work. <laughs> so you weren't surprised when they called your name? So TJ said I'm no. not the best at the end of the season. He said I'm not the best. I'm not going to end. No, I mean, no, I mean, there's like probably for oh, friends you getting throttled Rod- by Rod right now. Oh no, <laughs> it's a fake. Oh no, JJ's connection oh, is on. This is Rod. Oh, oh wow. Wait a minute. Real hey, time. don't be giving yeah. away. Don't be giving away the NFL. What are you talking about? Son of a bitch. People are betting on these things, pal. You ever doing that? Oh, when do they know? I wonder. Day of. I, I thought. I thought when they re- read the envelope. Yeah, me too. Same. Yeah, me too. But now that we're we are in a different time now. We just learned. I thought Zach Brown was real. I thought that was. This Tony day sucks. Tony. Zach the only Brown. thing that's real anymore is that. The bloodline is stronger than it's ever been with the Rock and mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah bloodline. Cody's super... gonna finish his damn story. We don't know about that. I, hope. I don't know about that. You think Kelly Rhodes gonna be Roman Reigns in, finish his story? In my heart of hearts, I know the American Nightmare has what it takes. So TJ Watt, why? Immediately upon finding out he was good, he's. I'm not going to sit through this terrible award show. Why would he? It's I, wish, I wish they would have told me move. whenever we were in that uh, college football awards. See, I knew. Yeah, because your award was given the night before. Yep. So it was nice. I knew I was going there to... See, for me, I wasn't told, like, hey, you're going to go sit incredibly uncomfortably in a very tight theater in a stupid clown suit with your mom and your dad who take time off of work to come do this. You're going to have to listen to, no offense, Tim Tebow give six speeches. Mm -hmm. Too many. Bowden give four speeches. Too many. And then you're going to lose. It would have been nice to give me a heads up, like, hey, come down for the festivities, but we're not going to make you eat your knees in this theater for four hours while everybody else gets to celebrate and you just get shown, and then you have to clap and be a good person. Have our night. Leave the next morning. Boom. I did college football award show. We did it. Joining us now, J.J. Watt, who has the answers. J.J., when did T.J. find out Roger Goodell said NFL cut me off. And they did? Yeah, they did. Turned off my mic. So TJ said, I'm not sitting through a stupid award show as soon as he found out he wasn't winning this thing? Well, I mean, the, the, there's no reason for him to be there. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't win. What do you want? Like, what, what are you going to do? Like, you can sit in the crowd? Support your brothers. Like, Support your NFL brothers. Ooh. There was no other Steelers there. Yeah. Damn, hey, we won the Walter Payton <laughs> Man. No, no, what that was uh, that was a different. Okay. It was a different night. Cam won the most prestigious. No, I mean, like, like, what are we mad at him for being frustrated? Like, no, he he should be frustrated. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame him whatsoever for being frustrated. There's nothing. If he wins next year, if he wins next year, he's not going to go. Can't go. I mean, we've seen how that pattern goes. Like, what does he got to do? Fifty sacks? What do you want? Oh, you're saying (laughs) it's going to be impossible for TJ. Mike has already chosen one for next year, so yeah, doesn't matter. Like, yeah, that. It is what it is, man. I don't. I, re, I truly don't want to take away from any of the other players. Like that's not what I'm here to do. I, I think guys. I think Miles is an unbelievable player. I think he's a great, great football player. So I, I have. I don't want to take away from him at all. We don't have to put Thank you, down. JJ. Wow. Thank you, JJ. Yeah, Connor's smile. got a question for you, JJ. Yeah, that was really nice, JJ. Uh, and also, let me just say, your shirts all year have been incredible. I like that you mailed it in for the last one after the Super Bowl, though, and just wore a sweatshirt. That was cool color, though. That was fantastic. Uh, Looking at the game as a whole on the defensive side, though, it felt like Wilkes and Spags obviously both had pretty good games, 19 points at the end of four quarters for both those offenses. Pretty unbelievable. But for you on the defensive side, what was kind of the biggest moment of the game? Obviously, people are talking about the overtime pressure from Chris Jones so that Jennings doesn't get that first down on the out route, but when you're watching, what to you was the moment where it was like, ooh, that's going to be the play that either or that wins them this game? Yeah, I mean, I think there's two there's two really big ones in that second half. I would say the punt, um, the fumble on the punt, you know, punt hitting his leg, that's massive. You can't get Patrick Mahomes the ball inside the 20-yard line. You just can't do that. Um, it's, it's just – 
Mm. That, that like, like we said at half, you know, a mistake is going to change this game. And that is such a gigantic mistake to give Patrick Mahomes the ball in that situation when you're leading. And now here he is, third quarter, two minutes left, and he's going to be able to go in there and score. Um, and then the the third down um, with about two two minutes left, two minutes, 30 seconds left, where Trent McDuffie came free mm-hmm. um, on a blitz, I would say that was a massive one where if the 49ers get that first down, they're able to waste so much clock and they're able to, um, I mean, possibly just take that thing in and and maybe go down and score win the game. So I think that uh, one of the things that happened here is – Spags is so good at using these DBs, and the DBs are so good at executing what he wants them to do. McDuffie really waited until the last possible second so that they had to pick up everybody else in the blitz, and then he just came scot-free right up the B-gap and um, bats the ball down on his way in. I mean, that's that's an unbelievable play. And I'm talking to some of the Chiefs players during this week, what Spags does is, with those guys is so incredible. He puts so much trust in them to make the right decisions from a coverage standpoint, depending on the formation the offense comes out in, depending on what they want to do individually. I was talking to Justin Reed, and he said that there could be four or five different coverages based on how they come out of the huddle. And then within each individual player, there could be two or three different things you could do within those four or five coverages. Mm, and Spags okay. trusts them to figure it out. It's thoroughly impressive. A lot. Spags, That's why I'm a D lineman, man. Just tell me where <laughs> where's the ball. Go get it. That was even a massive part of it, though. You know, uh, lane integrity and dis- gap discipline is a big part of it all. Uh, we'll we'll be breaking down that play on in the trenches later, and I think also yeah. everything mm-hmm. DB mm-hmm. about how the they had Kittle, I believe, offset to the right, mm-hmm. and then they also send the offensive line to the right because the Chiefs showcase that they're coming that way, and then boom, Mc, they got a two for one on the right side, and then McDuffie comes scot free on the other side, so they mm-hmm. they legitimately confuse the protection for the Niners on the biggest play of the game. Like obviously they pick yeah. up that third and four right there, they milk the clock, they kick the field goal, they win the game. Instead, classic Spags defense, a little bit of how you doing, keep it moving from the other way. They get a two for one. Like that is and this. That's brilliant football. That's brilliant, brilliant football on the defensive side. This is a thing that I think we talk about sometimes with the Chiefs, but we don't necessarily talk about all the time. So Andy Reid obviously going to be back calling the plays for the offense. Spags just signed the extension, coming back for the defense. And think about this, because I was I was talking with some people about this, and sometimes you get the argument that the teams that play in the Super Bowl have less time to rest and recover in the offseason and then rebuild for next season because they played an extra month of football. Possibly true. On the flip side of that, think about how many extra practices the Chiefs have had together. Think about how many extra games the Chiefs have had together. Think about how many extra scenarios and experiences that they've gone through together and worked through over the last six years when they've been going to the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl every single year. You know, you go with Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours. They've had those 10,000 hours in just the playoffs alone, whereas there's so many teams that season ends January 9th and boom, everybody's out, spread out, not playing football anymore, not working. You you know, you're doing your own individual workouts, but these guys are getting actual football reps. It's like a full-blown spring practice for them on their way to the Super Bowl. And now you accumulate all those hours years after year, and they're much more closer as a team. They're much more experienced. They have that many more reps. I mean, I think that helps play into it. That sucks. That sucks. You know, we have a a take on this particular program for a couple years now. Uh, We think teams come together better a lot more around a keg than they do kale. And these Super Bowl parades – you know, it's almost like their team grows tighter. You talk about them remaining consistent with the OC and the DC mm-hmm. and the special teams coordinator locked in Tobe, uh, Spags, and Reed, and here we go. Yep. We're running. But they also get a moment seemingly every single year where they get to celebrate life with each other. Mm-hmm. This photo of Willie Gay, he's dying in the middle of the parade. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Shirtless, jacked, shoeless with a bottle of Hennessy, <laughs> yes. laughing his ass off. Like, you don't think, look at this guy. <laughs> oh, no. He is not dead. He is a okay. Yeah. He is Yo, not Yo, dead. Yo, so so jacked. Jacked. So jacked. He's sweating too with the sun. I mean, just so. Oh. That guy's a linebacker. Look at that smile. His face. He's so happy. Out there? That guy played the same exact position as A.J. Hawk. Good call. Oh, I don't know no. what the position. Uh, the weather is, but it is beautiful. Like, you don't think this team comes together around... That man looks like a statue. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's, 60, yeah. in, it's 60 and sunny. In case 60 and oh, sunny. Yeah. The football gods bless him with a perfect day, but it's like there's videos now coming out of Travis Kelsey chugging beers and drinking tequila, and then but, Tommy Townsend and Matt Nagy dancing. Like, mm-hmm. that brings... Oh, yeah. You know, those, you know, like, position groups try to have a dinner each week. 
or, you know, like an offense will try to get together like once a year to like have a moment or quarterback will host a party. And in those times, like when you're drinking together, having fun, yeah. you learn a lot about each other. You, you trust each other more almost whenever you're kind of having those moments. In this team, a lot of them are coming back. A lot of them have had numerous ones of these. So when you're looking at somebody, it's not just a coworker. It's not just a teammate. It's like, oh, that, that's fa- we Hey, remember you were. Yeah. Uh, hey, Willie, you remember you were. Oh, yeah. Shirtless with a head. You remember, <laughs> yeah, like, that is, time. you know, like, it only helps the team. We're sitting in the middle of this Kansas City Chiefs era, and then let alone that's your leader. That's the quarterback. What a dog. What an absolute <laughs> dog. Drinking Coors Lattes, shirtless with a bomber jacket on. <laughs> Mohawk still there. Yep. Yeah, he needs to not cut his hair. I don't know what he's thinking yeah. about there. I mean, they're never going to lose. He, he just he, he it wants sucks. to. Yeah, he wants to cut it, but he knows, like, hey, there's never going to be a point where we're losing where I should cut it. I never got to do one of those parades. Uh, I heard the one in Indianapolis was awesome. You'd be sweet at it, I bet. I think I would, yeah. I think I would perform <laughs> very well. Pretty good. Pretty good yeah. on the mic. Pretty I, good on the mic. Well, also boozing pretty yeah. good. I, 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 pretty pretty solid boozer and chugger. Going to have to own a team someday, boys. Yep. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. we're going to have to own a team someday. That's the only way we get back into this. We'll make that happen. Uh, this has been a fun Wednesday. Commissioner of the NBA stopped by. J.J. Watt brought his hair. Fun. We'll All be right. back tomorrow. Two more days until the Celebrity All-Star Game, then All-Star Weekend. And then we'll be off for a few weeks. Let's enjoy the hell out of it. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Didn't even let you fuck it up. You know why? Because <laughs> you didn't wear a shirt. That's why. It was so <laughs> fucked up. I actually today was like, you know what? I saved shirts for the, you know, the Super Bowl week and a couple for the week after. I just assumed in my head, like, JJ's best shirt is coming today. Like, see, no doubt see, I about thought it. about it, but what what would you go with in a situation? I actually have a couple well, gold, have? gold ones that I haven't used this year, so I have. Uh, there you go, one change. of those. Oh, okay, change. yes. You still got time. Go change. Go change. You at the house right I got, now? Uh, Big house. I am at the house a long right time. Now. Yeah, yeah take back ten minutes. Two hours. Yeah, go do a two mile run to the bedroom. I, I got a. I got the Rudy Letterman jacket. That's from great, Rudy. Dude, we love uh, that. that's fair. I have the. I have the. Talladega Knights sure. uh, race suit from Ricky Bobby. Oh my yeah, God! Why, why are you stop telling, telling us? Yeah. Stop telling us! Why are you saying this shit? That was the one, prick. <laughs> yeah, it was just like sometimes I was like, I the can't internet's got you done. So distracted. The internet's got you done. Wow! Yeah. Because of all, you are bummed up because all the hair talk. Played you were scared to show no, up in the no, Talladega no, Nights. I didn't want to do the hair and and the shirt. Like I didn't want to double down on it. See, no. the internet got to you. See, yeah, yeah that's, uh, soft. You're that's soft. That's soft, JJ. Not you're not always, always no. double I, I down. I wear a hat if I was down about it. I, I, I did the hair again on purpose. No, Burnley. Yeah, but that was you, like. I'm gonna show them, but let's not do too much. Though. Yeah, I don't wanna. I don't wanna wear a shirt and offend anybody and get them all mad at me again. Man, don't don't let these people. Come get, on, you're bowing down. You're JJ, 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 JJ Watt. JJ Watt. JJ Watt. JJ Watt. JJ Watt. JJ Watt. He said he said there's no cameras in this gym and we're welcome to use it anytime. So I'm very thank you, Dana. I appreciate that. <laughs> Who's no we? We That's all of us. We all are. You, you were, I, I was, uh, if it wasn't during the show, we were going to do it together, but it was right during the show. To be honest, I, I said I only had four drinks the entire time I was in Vegas. That yeah. is an accurate number. Mm-hmm. I had 2,000 milligrams probably, you think? At least. 2,500? That's, that's not enough. 25, of, maybe 3,000? Of, of both the vitamins night, and mucinex. I think it was 10,000. They all just taste so good, too. They, they do have a good flavor. Like, uh-huh. That U2 one, bud, every four minutes, I'm like, all right, I got to get to a point where I'm enjoying this. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I'm about, about, about. And all of a sudden, you look around, and you're like, am I in the sphere right now? <laughs> what, uh... Did you watch the stage at all, or was it just pure screen? Yeah, buddy, I watched it all. I watched. Listen. He had a balloon. Bono the, had the a balloon. The stage had gimmicks, too. Stage. I heard it, there was a door on the stage. And then nothing came out of it. Nothing. Chris Rock's birthday. You guys were in a suite, so maybe not. But did you guys have any experiences with the staircases? Because, I mean, somebody is going to bust they their ass on those stairs. So we looked up, and we saw him. And it uh pretty pretty steep incline on those oh, things. Bit. Yeah, very, very steep. Somebody pops some milligrams there and they're gonna be flying right down at the Grateful Dead. Just as a full asshole, now that this become a big deal, you know, with the whole conversation about us thinking like, hey, you're not doing it right to you two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you two's been around long. They're one of the most successful groups of all time. The new era. One of the most great like sure. us. I, the know, music's on every iPhone on the planet. Just like wow. that, which also, I went in there thinking about, like, all right, these people, 
little bit too much plugged in, maybe. It uh, feels like maybe dropped into this whatever, handed yeah. a lot of opportunities. But they've worked for it, obviously. They've worked incredibly hard, uh -huh. and they do their thing. Sure. And they have a few bangers. We didn't hear any of them. None of them. We left early, two and a half hours in. I guess if we would have stayed four hours, five hours, it yeah. would have came at one point, which we're appreciative of. But, yeah, I would like to put a show on in there. Like, you know, Dana, I think Dana had the same thought whenever he was there. So whenever you say, did I look at the stage or anything? Oh, yeah, but I was looking at fucking everything. Mm -hmm. I'm like, How, you got to make the most of this place. Like, Bono was there's so much to do in there. Yeah. Like, so I, I've much. Heard that's, I've heard that's part of, I mean, obviously Dana was talking about, but I've heard that's part of the, the issue is that you have to have all the technological people to create it because it's obviously not a standard video board. Yeah. So you have to have hundreds of engineers to figure out how to build your show for that specific one. And that's the expense that not everybody can take on. And I assume there's some coding that has to happen with the seats and the yeah. everything. Like the oh, yeah, the rumbles. Yeah. Yeah, those did, for the postcard from Earth, did they have those? Yeah, it was awesome. And the wind? Did, they, did you have the no. wind that blows up on your face? See? No wind! Oh, Just from no. Bono. No wind from yeah. Bono! We had no crowd wind. noise singing what? things coming through. What'd you say, AJ? I, there was like, uh, yeah, I don't know. The speakers were really good, so I'm not sure when the crowd was singing along. I couldn't really figure it out where it was coming from. I don't know what I don't know what triggered the rumbles either, because we only got about two of them. They came out of random, but they came right. real random. Yeah, they were coming real hard. It was when he knocked on the door. It was when he knocked on. He yeah. looked in the uh, peephole. Can you imagine and we were looking out. Don't forget, we were on the other side. Can you imagine the wind blew, you were. blew that right. balloon away and it was and blew all over us? I thought he was going to fucking ride the We're balloon. not getting into this again. Yeah. We can't. We're not getting into this again. All right. All right. Jason, this is, stop this it. is four or five straight no. days now. No. Never right. We've got it. We're door. not doing this again. I just bought it. We got so much respect so for much. everything yeah, you've yeah, accomplished. Exactly. Love you. So much. So much. It's like, how is that? Do you remember you when you told me, uh, do you, speaking of milligrams, do you remember when we were talking, having that conversation and you were like, yeah, we'll give you like 200, 250 milligrams. You'll be great. Internet has uh, pretty clearly told me that that would be a large mistake. <laughs> a large what? Why? Why a a large, a large mistake. Why is that? I, I, don't know. I, don't know that. I got a lot of people looking out for me on that one. No, no. Uh, if we just give you 250 at one time, that'd be a problem. But if we... I think that's how they took it. I think that's how they... Well, that's time. probably how it was going to go, too. Yeah, but, but if, <laughs> if we were to you know, brainstorm and go in a different fashion... It would have been a nice little ride to the top. Mm. You know, a nice little <laughs> ride to the top, which is where we headed to. Vegas was awesome. It was. It was incredible. Not not like you two, obviously, we've harped on it. That was the only negative. Everything else was incredible. They Tonight handled it so well. The city was great for it because, I mean, Plus. every single hotel has all of its phenomenal yeah, restaurants. It's got plenty of entertainment. Like, it's set up to handle the Super Ooh. Bowl so well. It was great. Man. I just realized next year. We have breaking news from the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl parade. Travis Kelsey is currently riding Creed Humphrey's uh, shoulders. Dog. Okay, <laughs> through the middle of the street. Normally on buses and things like that, we've seen Patrick Mahomes walk. We've seen Willie Gay laid out <laughs> shirtless and shoeless. Now we see Travis Kelsey riding center. The large man. All pro Creed Humphrey's shoulders through the streets of Kansas City. That's what it's all about, JJ. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That team loves it. Looks also bonding. one of uh, Travis went to the crowd, and this person had a Jason Kelsey from the Bills game cut out shirtless, but without the head. Mm -hmm. So then Travis took the cut out and put it on his body and then chugged a beer. They're having a good time. God. <laughs> Living. They're doing it right. They're yeah, doing it right. Yes, they are. Team. You know what, guys? I should have played a little better and we should have won the Super Bowl. Oh, yes. I had say over that. <laughs> 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 People hate That's that guy, awesome. dude. Think about think about it. How much fun he is enjoying his life. Olivia. And when he's in Ohio, fuck mm -hmm. both of them. Yep. Him, and, him and Jason Kelsey just so happen to be incredible football players through it all. He's become one of the most famous humans on earth, and he's got pit vipers on, <laughs> chugging beers what? in the middle of the streets of Kansas City. Hey, stay true to you, Trav. Keep doing it. Stay yeah. true to you, Trav. We appreciate that. Oh, yeah. a dog. He is a dog. All right, JJ. I guess this is it. Man. I'm going to be in your state, I think, soon. Are you going to be there? You travel so much. Um, when are you coming? I don't want to give you the exacts, but next week. Right? <laughs> yeah, go to that secret. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be here yeah, next no. week. I'll be here next week. I got uh, I'll be, I got to film a Miller Lite commercial quick on Tuesday and Wednesday, but I'll be here. Lattes? Miller Lite. <clears throat> we got ball, Lite. ball Town. We got What It Takes. We got Miller Lite movie coming out. What? Let's go, JJ. Any hair product? It's hey, any hair company? Ooh. That feels like that's sitting right there. Hair yeah. stuff? Tresemme, perhaps? Um, they, they, they have reached out. They have reached out. Toothpaste? Who? Who? Um, 
Toothpaste is good. I don't know. I just know they've reached out. I, I was just told we got a lot of a lot of incoming from the hair department. <laughs> got to uh, be a glue. A lot of incoming from. Oh yeah, maybe that's uh, What's that big spray? The, uh, is for men? Big Tre- hair, I think is what's called. Tresemme oh. has some great products. I mean, I'd really love to just do a throwback to like uh, what was it like uh, L.A. looks or that was whatever what? that super gel <laughs> oh, yeah. was that didn't hold Gotta your hair glue. up at all, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we. Used to, that's what the whites used to do. Yeah. That's literally what the whites used to do. Like Pauly D. Did you ever? It. Did you ever the one where you only spike up the front? I mean, it's happening right now. Kind of. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what I. When you have like a, you have a thousand calyx, I assume, through the back of your hair. Oh, billion. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So there's yeah. only like the, the the sloppy spike. I had that probably from the ages uh, fourteen to about twenty some, probably twenty or so. So I've been where you are. Then I just gradually. I use a blow dryer now. I use blow dryer to kind of get it under control so I don't have to do that. But yeah, I, yeah, when I saw your hair, I was like, that's a really good sloppy spike. And then I saw the internet and say, a little bit too much spike. Not Come sloppy. on. They're saying you look like you. He's just, just, just. Yeah, let the guy live. Who, If he wants a 50 spikes yeah. on his head, looks let good. him do it. It's good, brother. Yeah. It's very nice of it us. Looks, yeah. yeah, It's great. I mean, I was, anytime uh, Guy Fieri any shouts you out and says you got great hair, I mean... Gotta be doing something right. Yeah, you're right. Not only him, Mark McGrath too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was yeah. the the spiked hair club came out of the woodwork, and I appreciate them all. You're a part of them now. Yeah, you're yeah. the leader. You're the face. I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I am a part. What were you gonna say, D. Bud? I know you've been in war with soccer, uh, the soccer war for a few days. But how's Burnley doing? No hat today. Obviously, want to show off the hair. But how's the club doing? Yeah. Um, we we have a. We have a big match against Arsenal. I mean, oh it, boy, are they? We got a rough little run here. We got a rough They're Liverpool good. match. Um, Gump, I mean, I know you watched it. Yeah, uh, we had a great, great start. I thought we had a great chance. We had a couple massive opportunities to start the second half, and then uh, just a couple blunders, man. But I, I actually thought we played really well. You guys game. did was, play really well. It was, it was there for the taking for a minute. Yeah. So what's going yeah. with Burnley? The uh, we're getting relegated. No. I mean, there's a lot of season left. I mean, there's a lot of season. Just be, left. just we, be we, real. Just, just be, just be real. No, we, we, we definitely. I, I mean, we, we definitely as a board prepare for that scenario because it's malpractice. Heard you say that on so CBS, we are, Golasso. We are prepared for it, um, but I mean, we're still, we're absolutely fighting, fighting extremely hard. We're going to see what happens here. I mean, Arsenal this weekend, obviously tough. If we can pull a pull a point or a result out of that, it would be great. And then we have a run of games where. Or we need to get results. When do you run? When do you move to England? Um, near near the end of the month. Let's rally the boys. Yeah, yeah we need this. Yeah, let's rally the boys. When do you play? Center well, back. I mean, I, I, if we're gonna I, lose, I who cares? JJ's Might as well make it a spectacle. That head, yeah, the goal. goal. Their goalie is uh, uh, Burnley's goalie is very good. I'm not talking about goalie. I don't give. You put you right up there at striker. Let's run a. Uh, they would flop yeah. so much though. If there's I, no occasion uh, coming. Everybody flop. Let's run like, a four-five-one. Just have you sitting up at the top, like Peter Check. And then. So I uh, obviously my wife's a professional soccer player, and so like I've, I during COVID I was tra- her training partner, and I I thought during that time that I could play, and I learned I couldn't. And then the other time I thought I could play, and I learned I couldn't, was I did a Gatorade commercial with a 13-year-old uh, girls soccer team. And they put me out there with them, and I was like, "Oh, I mean, guys, this isn't going to be fair. Like, I'm going to score a bunch of goals. It's going to be fun." I got absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Dest- I mean, it was it was embarrassing. They were running around me. I thought just toss it up in the middle of the box and head it. I couldn't even figure out the timing of how to head it and shit. It was it was a rough rough day for my confidence. I'll tell you that. Well, I mean, you never played. You played hockey yeah. instead of soccer. It's a little bit different. Correct. But if you guys are going to lose. You might as well make it a spectacle. Sure. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. You know? Asses and You guys seats. got any soccer players over there? We got any soccer players in the uh in the studio here? AQ. I think just Cor- that. Gumpy. Gump, she's a player back in the day. Up. Yeah, I could run around in the middle of the park, spray the ball around. I wouldn't be able to pass any of the tests, but I could give you a good four or five minutes. I'd mm-hmm. give you probably a good yeah. five minutes. I'll get a red card. You give me a free kick, I'll probably put it in. <laughs> Sometime down the line, we'll have to test that out. We'll have to we'll have to oh, when you guys are in the F League? When's that? Is that so if you two get, years. Uh, to, if you two, get relegated, yeah, yeah, relegated. Yep, they'll get they'll get relegated again next year. Whoa, whoa, then, whoa they no, won they that league. Won't. Yeah, well, no, no. If they go down, they'll no. bounce right back. Yeah, come that's on, how, that's this on. summer. This summer, sometime we'll find a way to get the get a Burnley squad against the McAfee squad, and we'll figure it well, out. We'll, well figure I think out. there's a potential opportunity for that to take place in the United States of America when it's turned. Could you imagine me just side volume, boom, boom. boom. and then probably pulling out pre-roll, lighting that thing up? Mm-hmm. 
taking a couple of the peptides I'm on. A couple suckets. Just being right in your face. I failed all your tests. And I score a goal. Give me a high sports. Can you give me, can you give me a rundown on the peptides? I'd love, to, I'd love to hear some more information on the peptides. So I don't think I fully understand them. I just know that you take them and they make you stronger, faster, more fit. So I don't, I don't know. All but, it's not, but it's not steroids. No. No. No, you can stay on them forever. Steroids are bad for you. That's what I've been told. But don't have to, I, don't I, have to I, I literally have never done any research on peptides, but I've heard multiple people talking about them now, and I'm fascinated, and I want to hear more. So this Affinity Whole Health Company, uh, I don't know where they're from. I'm talking to the people in Ohio. I saw Bobby Carpenter, right? So Bobby Carpenter, I don't know what his full operation is, but he puts over Affinity all the time. And I was like, for this football season, I'm going to need something. We got game day. We got this. Yeah. We got that. We got that. I'm going to need something to stay in shape because I'm not the most disciplined when it comes to eating. I am going to work out, but I would like to have a little bit of a help. You know, like, what are all these rich people doing? That's basically what I was like. What, what are all these rich people doing to be able to continue to have the juice? And I don't I don't fuck with Adderall. Like, I get a lot of people that are brand new to the operation. Like, this guy's Adderall out of his mind. It's like, nope, hate it. Can't do it. Actually, complete opposite. Hate what it does to my brain. If you watch our show, we're pretty much like, yes, Adderall made me a little bit too focused probably needed it but i i don't i don't want to be part of it so i started talking to these affinity people they we drew blood they did a full test like we think we give this will help with this this will help with this this will help with this just these tiny little i think they're available in like five states i'm not 100 sure and i think there's other places like out in arizona there's a bunch there's a bunch of stuff really? out there dana too. Mm -hmm. what about dana's Florida's guy big. dana's got a crew Brecca, Brecca, is yeah, Brecca do peptides it's, Florida? Yep. it's like these, i don't know Florida. what he does but. yeah he does it's like these super pharmas almost it's like super science every time i say like i got science running through me right now it's like legit i just got science running through me i don't think i'd be able to pass any tests but i haven't really looked into that but it has certainly helped me in my body am i gonna die at like the age of 40 now I, I don't think so that's not what i nah, talked to a doctor the whole thing pitch. it's it's been cool yeah. it's been a wild ride to be honest with you it's been a very wild ride yeah no i'm fascinated i'm gonna i'm gonna do some research and learn more about it because like i said i've heard a few people talk about it now and i'm always trying to you know learn about everything that's out there i've, I've always wondered like we've talked about before you know cold tub sauna things like that you know they've been around for hundreds thousands of years so got a pretty good idea that those are at least somewhat effective now learned I was using cold tub wrong for most of my career and then recently supposedly but I always wonder what in like 15 years we're going to look back on like cold wow, we now. were idiots why are we doing that you know or well so I think like this is also why you're retired you know like we're retired now so right. now you who knows yeah, but we don't know mm -hmm. we don't know but like <laughs> whenever I decide to do that it was only this year I was like you know I'm not going back to I've been offered numerous times to go back I've never followed through with it. I've never done it. I think I'm 100% done with that whole aspect. And I'm like, all right, now I am officially, let's go ahead and say it. And I'm like, Bobby Carpenter, what are you doing? And then he connected me with the people. And I don't know what his entire thing is, but these affinity people have been great for me. I mean, great for me. I get, I get blood tested. I get, I get my blood like every three months, two months. And they just like check, regulate. Hey, let's do this. Let's do that. Talk to a doctor. It's been really cool. It's, it's expensive. Are you way stronger? Uh, I think I could be if I really wanted to. I'm just trying not to be fat, you know? I'm just yeah, trying yeah. not to be fat. Yeah, That's but JJ doesn't need like HRT or TRT or BPC, whatever. He has DNA. Like, a lot of us don't have DNA. <laughs> he clearly just has DNA, and you're good. But so the HRT, awesome I, I saw, TRT is I not saw the that like No, no, no. I saw that like Olympics thing where they're letting them that's do awesome. anything they want. You know, <laughs> oh, I am oh, yeah. fascinated by that. Enhanced I always enhanced. wondered, like during the absolute height of my career, not that I would want to do it because of the injury risk that comes along with it, but if truly at my athletic peak, if you allowed me to take something, what what that possibly could have been like? We saw like, McGuire and Bonds, like, right? Bingo. Isn't that, isn't that what McGuire and Bonds were doing? Good were baseball, great so baseball. Like, I'm Bad absolutely baseball. watching that Olympics thing. Like, Why don't I you do it? What the hell that looks like? Why don't you do it? You're still I mean, power lifting, I mean, it sounds like. Let's go ahead and get you under a bar. Let's put some needles in you. I mean, you're gonna, you're talking, you're putting so much stress and risk on your body for like the things that are going to happen. If like it's all artificial, like you're literally putting yourself at risk. I don't know how the people fuck with the needles. The needles scare me. Like the peptides are little pills. I think you can get them also as injectables. As shots. Uh -huh. I think you've done research as well. I'm not hundred percent sure you're taking <laughs> them all, but you have done the research, I believe. Yeah, I know a little bit about it. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's not it's not a full size. It's only an insulin. Needle, it's insulin though. needle, so it's yeah. really oh, you know, you feel baby it. Ones. Yeah. So I can't even. I, I I'm not I'm not to the point of needles. I so like that's a whole nother conversation for people to have. But it's like I've been very appreciative of what the affinity people. Just are. stop. Give you the red light bed. Me. 
JJ, did you do the red light, the full bed, the hundred and fifty thousand bed? I, <laughs> I did it at Dana's, um, but I, I've never done it before. Was it? Then I've had people tell me about the red lights and everything. Um, I mean, it was it was fine. Like I, I don't, I think that's one that you have to do over time to fully yeah. to fully get the effect get of headache? everything. But no, I did not. And he told me that like your eyes, it's actually good for your eyes. So your eyes open in it, which was a so, little trippy for me, like I've heard wild. But it's supposed to be good for so your eyes bright. also. Um, so bright. But I, I've I've heard tons and tons of people talk about the red light therapy. I personally, from a sauna standpoint, yeah. I know I'm not an infrared sauna guy. I'm a regular sauna guy. I like me I like too. the old school regular sweat. Why? Sauna. Not hot enough or what? Yeah, I think the the heat. I mean, I understand the infrared heats you up from the inside out and all those different things. But like, I exactly. personally just really like the sweat. It's the same reason I like a cold tub over cryo. Like, I like I just mm. feel like I'm actually getting the benefit, and when I leave it, I actually feel better. As a pull. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, no. Good Boy. season. That was a good season. No. Boy. It's back. been fun. You back? Yep. I'm right here. <laughs> Sorry. Boy. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's D-Bots, going on. D-Bots, what were you going to say there? No, nah, well, what scares me is stopping. Like, taking it sounds great, but, like, what's the – What's the process of stop? I said, you know what? I don't want to do this after a year, two years. Like, what's the process of getting off the of the affinity? Up, or I obviously know with Royce and shit, you got a cycle. Won't do that. But like, what's All the right. process of stopping? I have no idea. That's a good oh. call. Yeah, like, that's that's, that's the thing for me. Like, like, I don't know. That's I have not even yeah. thought of it. <laughs> I have no exit plan. <laughs> no, you, I need to survive. The whole point of them is you can stay on them forever. You stay that's young what they forever. Say. Allegedly, boom. Allegedly. No, that's, never that's, die. That's fact. Someone's done them forever. <laughs> Yeah. For me, yeah, like absolutely. I always I'll say, like, 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 I'm trying ago. to save any solution as long as humanly possible. Like I don't want to use that, that whatever that thing is until I absolutely have to. Because, uh. like you said, maybe there's diminishing returns. Maybe there's something so like whether it's testosterone or whatever it may be. Like if I, if ever my testosterone starts to drop, I'm going to hold out as long as humanly possible to to start changing that because I don't want to, like, I don't want to use anything. Literally, I'm still taking NSF certified products to this day because I'm, I don't know any different. I don't want to take anything like, so. So peptides are this TRT is a different thing. Like that's a whole another thing. I think testosterone. What's TRT? Oh, Tes testosterone. That's testosterone T, replacement. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. therapy. That's correct. I believe is what it, it, that's all. Cause these are all things that were like presented. This is, I literally just learned about all this and it was very fascinating. You sit down with like a doctor and it's like, do you want to dive into this? Do you want to dive into that? TRT, I, that, that involves needles, I do believe. So that was like the big red flag for me. But it's like, you get your testosterone tested and they're like, you know, we could give you, we could, with the way you're, we could right. if you, and I'm like, mm. and then the peptide treatment is its own thing. And then there's like, I think there's some places that even have growth. I think growth is. Yeah, is even, anyone doing HGH, HGH anymore? HGH. That was the that Florida, was the big thing. Like, Cali, long time ago. I don't know if everywhere is allowed to do it. I think that's a big part of it. Like each state has its own regulation. That's what makes your people's head grow a little bit. I feel like the HGH, isn't that what they claim? Mm. Yeah, yeah. That, that was everything that. grow. Mm. Yeah, yeah. there's 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 wild stuff, man. Somebody yeah. when I got hurt one time, like I mean, people come out of the too. woodwork and they give you all sorts of solutions. This this one guy came out and he was like, here here's what we're gonna do. We're going to put you in an airplane. We're going to have a doctor with you. We're going to fly out over the Gulf of Mexico. As soon as we cross international waters, we're going to draw your blood. We're going to do all this stuff to it, and we're going to put it right back in you. And we, boom, land back in Houston. I was like, buddy, buddy, I, I don't know what kind of cartel operation this is, but I do not want to be part of this. <laughs> That's blood doping. He was going to draw your blood, put oxygen in it, put it back in you, and it's on inter international war, uh, rules, so it's not, it's not illegal. It's not illegal. That's it's genius, wild. actually. That is pretty Scared smart. the shit out of me, man. I don't, I don't want to be pulling, like, I don't want to do Hey, I don't want to do any medical things in the plane 40,000 feet near over the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> What if it was just one of those Wright Brothers planes, too? Like, yeah. listen, we got to fly kind of under the radar, so we got yeah. to one of these planes, <laughs> guy strap died. you in there. Something goes wrong up there, you're good. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get the needle in you when we take off, so you don't have to do it in the sky. We've tried that before. That's a little bit difficult. Kill the guy. That's oh. awesome. Anyways, JJ, I don't know if I have all the answers, but somebody does out there. And uh, those Royd Olympics, I think we're all They're pumped to see. Fun. Yeah, the enhanced Fun to games. watch. The amount of, like, like, let's just talk about the discus. Like, as soon as that thing goes, we're going to see people just tear. Torn pack, just, <laughs> just in mid-throw. Yeah. And it says, like, tear, tear, Pop. tear. Yeah. But the guy tore his oblique. How far did he throw it? 200 yards. <laughs> Holy shit. I didn't I didn't watch the commercial, but did the guy in the – I saw, like, a clip of it. Did the guy in the commercial say he was faster than Usain Bolt? Yes, he did. Yeah. So, like, we're going to see people doing stuff that has never even been uh, Wow. Are you Usain Bolt? I'll believe just take that. stuff. We'll what do we even – That'd be awesome. Yeah. i got to see that to believe it. Me I don't too. care what you're taking now. What are you, nine, five, eight? What if? 
But like somebody's going to throw a shot farther than they've been thrown. Huh? Yeah. What if what if nobody finishes the hundred meter? What if it? What if, <laughs> what if every, hey, strings boom, boom, off. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> all of you hear the gun right? Poo, and then all of a sudden you see bang, bang, bang. Just all of them. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Rip the hamstrings <laughs> off the bone. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I can't wait. I, I mean, they got us. They hooked us, man. We're, We're in. in. I'm yeah. watching. I'm in. I am in. I'm not watching that. Who movie. can survive the Royd <laughs> Olympics? There will be three. <laughs> the decathlon is just a pure endurance no thing. Like, yeah, who is going to that not tear not everything? Oh, yeah. dude. It's kind of like NASCAR. Like, you're watching high for jump. the wreck. The amount of muscle, the high jump. <laughs> got boom, oh. bang, just <laughs> immediately. Doing the Fallsbury bang sniper down. We've only had one but, completed jump. We've only had one. You are the Royal Olympic champion. But you also get to have the best possible recovery in the world, regardless yeah. of what happens. Like somebody's out. We'll there be back with tomorrow. Like technology. Yeah. Yeah. Hamstring right back on. Like hamstrings reattached. Look, Johnny's back in the race. All right. The representative from uh, Colombia will not be able to compete today because uh, he tore both of his hamstrings. Good news. Will be 100% tomorrow. Both of those hamstrings will be at 100%. We will see if he can complete the sprint tomorrow. Oh, the hurdles? Oh, that's no chance. No mm -hmm. chance. I mean, getting. all the like the Just run right through power lifting. Right through. Like, uh, people are going to get seriously hurt during the power lifting. Speaking of which, Debo. <laughs> yeah. Debo, I thought, pulled his Bingo. hamstring off the bone, popped yeah, right wow. back in the game. That was unbelievable. So oh, wow. I, I appreciate Tordal as much as the next one. Okay. I appreciate Toradol and all the painkillers that you could possibly give. When he got overthrown there, when Chris Jones was in Brock Purdy's face, he had to pick it up a little bit. That's when the hammy, right? That's when the hammy would show up. He finished that. I, I don't know. That ain't that ain't Tordy. What happened? That ain't that ain't Tordal. Tordal doesn't do shit for that man. Yeah. I can tell you that right yeah, but, now. I don't know also, what. I don't, I don't think your body could. Like he was full. Yeah. Could have been it some kind be of nasty cramp. cramp? Yeah, had yeah, to be. Because did he leave? Had to be. That was the second playoff game he left with the hamstring and came back this year, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was the shoulder. No, the shoulder, the shoulder was, was a different. Yeah. Okay, so different injury. A lot of people, I think, especially because of the conversation we just had, they think like there's a lot of enhancement drugs in the NFL and stuff. Not a lot of people, but people that aren't like, they test pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. Like I got asked in Vegas a lot by the people that aren't in the NFL. They're like, so you're on stuff now? I'm like, I'm taking peptides now. I have no idea. They're like, could you pass the test? I'm like, I've no, I've not even looked at it because I'm not taking any. I'm my own boss, so I'm not taking any tests or whatever. They're like, so guys, guys are on stuff all the time in the NFL. I'm like, I no, I don't think so. I, 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 I don't, don't think so. I don't think so. No. I think guys, I think that is a misconception of the NFL because how big, strong, fast everybody is. I don't think there is, but there will always be, I guess, some people trying to get around. I don't know. I, I, is that? I mean, that? like we've. I don't know how you like they like you said it's literally random testing like the the street drug test yeah like I mean guys know know how to handle that one but like the the yeah. actual performance enhancing drug test you have no idea you don't know when those are coming if somebody game that system like you you got to be on some pretty impressive stuff now we like you know what locker room conversations are like we're like all right if you're like an undrafted free agent at the beginning of your career and you're either going to make zero dollars or you could get a contract for a million dollars like is that the gamble that you're willing to take like yeah i think there's a lot of guys that might take that gamble you know like those are probably the guys that you're that you'd be looking at doing it as opposed to like some of the bigger guys because of what the risk versus reward factor but i mean somebody's got to be what's up Darius? what do you should i don't think I don't know. I think it's probably the guys at the opposite end of that spectrum that can be kind of a little ahead of the game, knowing what they're tested for, knowing what they're not. We saw one guy. Be expensive, but, you know, yeah. I, I know of one guy, who was in, and he had a long, prosperous career, made a lot of money, but then got popped at the end. And so, when he walked in the locker yeah. room, everybody said, holy fuck, what is that guy that ain't, on? That ain't Gatorade. Yeah, that, 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 that what is that guy on? He was the most jacked human I've ever seen still mm -hmm. to this day. Have you seen him recently? I assume he, he's still jacked. He just up. basically said, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm, I'm just going to try. He was Different doing human. 30 sets. His arms were so big. Of arms. <laughs> hey, how do you Thir know not 30 talking? reps. Yeah. Not 30 reps. I think I have a good idea. Oh, yeah. 30 sets. I said, <laughs> I said, all right, well, how do I get those arms? <laughs> you know? And he goes, uh, can you give me the arm workout? And he goes, we were doing 30 uh, sets. I was like, all right, so I need to do 30. He was like, yeah, you need to do 30, and then you need to do that 30 times. So yeah. I'm like, what was that, 9,000? <laughs> when do you do that? He never put heavy weight on the bar. It was always, like, I never saw him bench more than probably 275, but he would just oh. rep it, rep it. Every day. Next day, day, right back in there. 
Two seventy five, not a lot of weight. Not heavy at all. I mean, not not in a you know not in a. I'm with you, but at a skill position, it's a warm up. He well, then he showed it two fifty five and like three percent body fat (laughs) in the uh, off season workout. The the one the week he showed up, but mandatory mini camp. It's like yeah, all right, yeah. That's our safety. That's our safety right there. Hybrid (laughs) safety D D end. (laughs) That's what he said. That plays. As greatest guy, human of all, one of the greatest humans of all time. Unbelievable. We're not going to say his name. If everybody, everybody knows who we're talking about right now, I think. But like, great team. I don't know how much media he does. He would be phenomenal. Oh yeah. Beloved, jacked. Oh yeah. Absolutely jacked. Played on special teams with us, but that's literally the only human I think. Like, I looked around the locker room and been like, okay, so. There are people I guess, getting around this entire thing, but it was—it's not like a norm. No. I think people think it's like norm. It is not. No, but then but. you hear like Euclid talk about, or maybe it was the mayor. But either way, back in the day with baseball, where guys they'd come back for you know catchers and pitchers or spring training or whatever, and that there'd guy. be so many guys where it's like, oh, okay, know what you did, know what you did, know what you did, know what you did. <laughs> what you did. Latimer, yeah. how'd you pick up thirty pounds of muscle yeah. in two months? Only what, in your arm. What is? How does that happen? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you took that flight over the Gulf. Of Mexico. Yeah, yeah, and then you, uh, a couple of those. That's awesome. Hey, JJ, great year this year. Hey, phenomenal. Hey, cover. I really cool. appreciate you guys, man. Thank you guys for the camaraderie, the friendship. It truly has been fun. Tons mm-hmm. of laughs, great entertainment. Your fans are, your fans are really awesome, man. It's been a lot of fun. They've been extremely supportive. So I appreciate the platform to be able to speak and to be able to just. And talk through things. It's it's a whole lot of fun, man. I truly enjoyed the year, and I appreciate you all. We are very lucky that you chose to do mm-hmm. this this year. We're very thankful. I'm happy to hear that our team has been supporting you, our people. That's good news because it got hot in the streets for you on Sunday. Hopefully you know, some of our people at least want to bat for you. Can't wait to see what you do this offseason, pal. Hopefully we'll see you in the Thunderdome one yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, funny enough. That would be great. Weren't you? Yeah. Uh, JJ, when this first started, uh, allegedly you were supposed to come out to the Thunderdome twice. Is that is that true? Is that, was that was that twice? A, I think three times. Twice? Three times. I mean, I, think, I, I know it was at least I, once, I brother. I was. I do think I was supposed to come once. I do think that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do wow. think, so I was in England. I was in New York. Yeah, I can travel I everywhere. But see, you few, see you in a few weeks, pal. Yeah. Right How, do you guys do you guys do the show all year? Is it yeah. is it nonstop? Yep. When's your when's your break? Well, we got a break coming up here in the next two weeks. Uh, poorly back. timed, right in the middle of during the combine in Indianapolis. We said, you know what? Fuck it. Our sport, our league, our city. Let's not be here. <laughs> so that's a bad idea. But yeah, we're all year, Bub, except for the next two weeks. All right. I will be up there sometime in the calendar year of 2024. Bullshit. 2024. How about before next football season? Um, You're a fucking okay. prick, dude. You can okay. film both of The gourd on you. Yeah. I'm going, like, I'm literally going to be in a different country for part. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Exactly. You got to fucking England. Want to come to any? I mean, what do we even. You know what these two do every week? D Butch. Huh? D Butch. What do you do? D Butch in six cities every week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Three. Incredible. Oh. That's during the football incredible. season. Yeah. You can just year. hop on AQ's plane. Yeah. Or, yep. yeah. Or it'd be nice. Up on yours. <laughs> on <top. laughs> hey, he was like, let me know whenever we're you got a bigger one. You got a, you got a bigger you. one than I do. Yeah, he does. He's a big one. He brings a lot of friends, like a couple yeah. hundred friends. Yeah. Is that AQ putting on that plane? <laughs> yeah. yeah, could yeah. have been. Let them sit wherever they want. It's unbelievable. Yeah, Southwest yeah. is comfy these days. Oh, that's Pictures. what you call AQ. Pictures. Shout out. Get that exit row seat. AQ Southwest. All right, JJ. We appreciate you, buddy. We'll see hey, you soon. Hey, seriously, let me know when you guys are down here. We got to get together. We'll golf, we'll drink, we'll do whatever. Bud. I'm not. Uh, I'm not drinking that. I'm not shit. taking 250 milligrams. I tell you that right now. Come on, dude. Live a little. Why okay. you got to be so negative? I've I've been told what my life would be like if I took 250 milligrams. By who? Somebody with a negative that. mindset. Okay. You don't really know until you're there. Well, yeah. You <laughs> don't know until you get there. Stop well, reading the CDC's website. I might be doing. <laughs> if I know well. myself, I'll probably be doing 30 sets of 30 reps on the bicep. <laughs> 250. I need to get this out of me. <laughs> yeah. I need to sweat. Do a cold shower, a coffee. What do they say? This is. Well, we don't need to overdo it. They don't need to overdo it. Just a nice little 20, 25-er. Mm-hmm. Put J.J. Watt right at that mm. spot. Hair starts going a little bit better. Laughs start coming. Bud. Golf shots a little bit smoother. Hopefully. Jokes are coming in a little bit quicker, quip. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that could happen to you, J.J. We'll, we could all do that next week. It's all available. Great. Looking forward to it. <laughs> my daughter's going to be out there, too. Yes. We'll get, we'll get your daughter and my son together. We'll have a little play date. I like that. I like that. You're going to be very, very successful forever. 
I have no idea. I sure hope so. That'd be great. If Burnley, I just want to wake up tomorrow man. and have a great day. Well, I was trying to do an arranged marriage. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, I mean, how old's your? Let's see. My my son's. I don't know. The month thing, man. It really screws me up. October. It's like military. 15, 15 and a half. Almost yeah, a year and a half. Crazy. Too old. Like, just say year. like a year and a half. Almost a year and a half. Yeah. Fifteen months would yeah, be a daughter. year and a quarter. I think I'm not a mathematist, but twelve in a year. Yeah. No. I mean. Yeah. Right. Scott, it sounds like a big no. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe yeah, maybe, maybe I don't want my daughter married into that. Family. I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I got to figure out. He seems cool now. But I got to figure it all out. <laughs> 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 You're the ladies and gentlemen, JJ Watt. Yeah. Right, no shirt. He let the internet get to him. I know. That was yeah, ridiculous. Did. As soon as you he think? came on, I was like, uh, motherfucker. Yeah, he, did. yeah he, he, did he owned it. it. Did he? Well, I mean, by the, I think the tweet acknowledging it, yeah, and I think he's having fun with it. Yeah, but then he didn't wear the hat because he didn't want to get bullied into wearing the hat, even though he's worn the hat on this particular program a lot. Every week, basically. So he said, I'm not getting bullied. I'm going to show the hair, but I don't need to overdo it with hair and cool shirt like I've done all year, right? Is that what we think happened there with JJ? Yes, that's exactly what happened. It was a wrong decision. I, no, I don't know about wrong decision. I'm just letting JJ. We love JJ. I, I agree. JJ, don't listen to what they're saying. It's the off season. He turned to switch. Doesn't matter. He did, didn't that he? Long year. He was on the most watched broadcast ever. You know, you know what? Long yeah. year. Well, he only did half the. Yeah. What are we talking the, about? He did a few of the games. Yeah. Boomer size to remind him of that. You know, that's oh, JJ showing up for Super Bowl, huh? That's, that's real nice. That's boom. Yeah, I'll come to the big games. Boom. That's what I do. Where were you week eleven, JJ? Huh? When we were in the middle of it all, and JJ said, "Well, I was actually in London. I got a team I own. Mm -hmm. They're going to get relegated." Hey, are they going to make it or not? Go. Uh, they're in a bad spot, no. to be fair. Not and the, the issue is, like, they've been kind of getting points here and there, but every team around them is playing really well right now. They're done. I mean. Uh, so how like, big of a deal is it, though, to get relegated? That Huge. is a lot of cash. It's like, friend. okay, can you, can you, could you contrast it with something over here that I would understand? Like so football. Tyrese Halliburton, if he doesn't play 65 games and makes the all-NBA team, He's losing out on potentially like forty million dollars. Yeah, the super max contracts. All the escalators are based on awards that you can win. So it goes from legitimately like five years or four years, one hundred fifty million, to four or five years, like two hundred seventy-five million. Okay, so maybe a hundred million dollars being lost out on. Is that a similar thing that happens whenever you go from one league to the next? Is it like fifty million, a hundred million, ten they just, million? Or is it Pacers the, the, going to the G League? Yeah, basically, like they have to bounce G back up. Like smaller. if you stay down. If you stay down for a couple years, then it's an issue. If they go down and bounce right back up, it's fine. But if you stay down, that's. We're talking like 30, 50 million? What are we talking about? That, that, that's, I'd I think, say our more, question is. I'd say more than that. The players still have contracts and get paid the same, oh, yeah. right? It's yeah, just exactly. The team. That, that makes it even worse. Yeah, because a yeah. lot of the good players. Like you're, you're, of millions? you're paying guys yeah. Premier League money when you're in the championship. Ooh. Yeah, the like the TV doing? deals yeah. for the Premier League are absurd. You didn't see this in Ted Lasso, but they actually uh, kind of uh, – maybe you did. It might have been the second season. But they talk about how when they got relegated, they had to decide, like, hey, are we going to you know, get rid of these people because of the fact that we can't pay them so, this money anymore? Or do we hold on to them and then just lose a shit ton of money? So this says uh, if you go up to the Premier League from the championship, which they did, um, about 245 to 265 minimum uh, – is what you get million? Yes, yes, million pounds. minimum. That's pounds, pounds which well. is like three hundred million. It doesn't say what it is if you go back down. You just don't get that. Yeah, you miss out. So on you want to buy money. a team that's down, and then they yes. get bumped up. Yeah, that's, the, that's what you need. Three? What Ryan Reynolds has done. See, is, they bought way leagues yeah. down. Then now they're are they up in the championship yet? No, they're but close. what Brady Brady bought into that team at a good spot too. If they can get going, three hundred million dollar <laughs> difference. Yeah. I mean, the, the, I couldn't imagine how much money Rex and we're just joking about this with JJ. It's like I didn't know it was that yeah. serious. So three hundred million dollars. Still got payroll too, and you get three hundred mil less coming in. Yep. I saw one of those documentaries that said like three hundred guys that make like four hundred thousand a week or whatever then go to like making like forty thousand a week. So it's like a ten x difference. And you lose those guys. And then like your better players are going to want to stay in the Premier League yeah. too. Like yeah. that's it's a tough sell to get players to stay yeah. on a championship team when they know they could do it in the Premier League. So all the good players Burnley has, if they get relegated, are going to be like, get me the fuck out of Burnley now. Do they have any good yeah, players? They're, they're, luckily for them, they're mostly younger <laughs> players, so they might keep them all. And company, their coach, he is a good manager. Really? He just, 
he doesn't know how to manage in the Premier League. He was good in the championship because they could play how they're playing. So he's good at managing against poopy teams, is what you're saying. I think. <laughs> Sounds I mean, like we've, the Dolphins. We've talked. With yeah, similar we've skill. talked about oh, this. Boy. We've talked about this a lot. There's nothing wrong with parking the bus, and that's something he has refused to do all year. And when you're in a relegation battle, there's nothing wrong with hoofing the ball up the field for 90 minutes when you're up one nothing, because you just got to stay up. And he refuses to do it. Isn't he a defense guy too? Isn't this a defensive head coach? Well, he's a legendary Park? center back for Manchester City. So what are we? Yeah, about that was he's too aggressive. Fucking with JJ all year, and this is pretty this serious. Is, <laughs> yeah, just learned to this. Should have known this maybe a little bit earlier in the year. That's on me. I'll do better journalism. Like three hundred million dollars. Pick it up, boys. That's a that's a bad investment. They better start. Trading. I guess when you this better be a hard. That's a depreciating asset. For this. When you get in, there's probably no thought of being relegated, right? I'm sure what he jumped in. I think in. he got in whenever they were down. We did. We started doing the math. We haven't asked him exactly, but when the announcement made of him joining Burnley, mm-hmm. they were down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? it was last January he bought in. Yeah, we go. Then they go up. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know because of when he bought in, how much of a cut he got of that. I don't know how it all works. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many part owners there are and everything, but the way he's been, he is But then you deep. get in the Champions League, you make even more money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, to. that yeah. Burnley the top that, four. No, but I'm saying like that's the goal. You get top four oh, each just, league. Gets yeah, into the Champions, Champions League. League. Like Man City was a as well. Championship League team that came up, and now they are just at the top of the Premier. Like that's the dream. And they're in the Champions League, yeah, yeah, best team are. in the world, yeah. which is another what couple hundred Easy. million, I'd assume each year. Yeah, I bet at least because the Champions League that that's shit. I mean, if we're, we're talking about ratings yesterday, I would want I, I want to know what the Champions League final ratings are because that's another one because I think that's Memorial Day weekend yep. every single year. On did that start yesterday? Them, the f- uh, yeah, yesterday, 16, round yeah. 16 did you? Yeah, Harry Kane's going today. For 400 Bayern million Munich. for Champions League final. Yeah. yeah. Got Eric, it's fucking Let's nuts. get to a break on the other side. We'll finish up the season within the trenches. Everything DB, good D, bad D and then uh, we're off to Thursday. Love, love. I mean, Valentine's Day tonight. I'm sure you guys got some, some stuff planned. What are you doing? Big night. What am boys. I doing? What are you doing? Oh, I got yeah, what are you a doing? lot of stuff planned. Oh, yeah? Yep. A little self love? Gonna play some darts. <laughs> um, self love is the best. Gonna make the same dinner I make every night. <laughs> Gotta love you. Play some video games. Look over Indianapolis. Check out Indianapolis. I've heard. I'm pumped. People are on the record as saying yep. you have the best view of Indianapolis in the entire city. It's been said once um, in, a, in a very friendly way. I, I don't know if it is the best. I heard you reap the benefits. Of yeah. the view. Well, I do every night. You know, I mean, shit. You should have seen the sunset <laughs> on Monday. My God, one of the one of the greatest things I've seen in this city. I mean, this city skyline. Oh, yeah, right up there I'm with staring at right it. Right there, with like Norman, Oklahoma. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I was in Lexington the other night. I was two minutes away from the arena. Mm-hmm. My GPS said two minutes. I saw no buildings. See, but then I got around a hill, and I saw a beautiful. Time. That is mm-hmm. gorgeous. Oh, this place is gorgeous. Yeah. Indianapolis, pretty similar. You could be five minutes out <laughs> from downtown Indianapolis and not see a thing. You actually say, like, am I going in the right direction? Yeah, where is this thing? <laughs> but then once it appears, it's like, yeah. oh, that's a beautiful, like, six blocks. Yes. <laughs> it gorgeous. is a, and because it's so small is why it's so good at hosting yeah. yep. mm-hmm. everything. Because everything right is just right there. I'm really pumped to hear all these people kind of take the affinity that they have for Indianapolis wherever they come. Yeah, me too. It, it is a hidden gem. More events. Yeah, more events. It's also gotten better downtown as far as roads and... Well, COVID was certainly something. What else? Yeah, it was. I was there and last bombs. night. Hit comment up. <laughs> nah, I mean, that's hey, not true. Hey, come on. Hey, oh, come on. Hey, hey, see? Hey, hey D- oh, what? Last no. time you went, invite me. I'm right downtown. That's a lie. Hit him. Ah, nah, sorry. Come on, you didn't. Dude. You didn't text me. You didn't call me on the right way out. You well, had the boom box. Exactly. So don't say you were hitting I mean, me. You were the vibing. bump box. The bump box. My bad. He was vibing. Bump box was yeah. fun. So the bump box. So DJ Con Man on the bump box is a great new addition. Oh yeah. I, I've been thinking about turning it on after the show. This in, for at least half the time. JJ has a microphone Bluetooth to his bump box that is very loud. That thing's louder than the entire Thunderdome speakers itself. So loud. And then can auto-tune himself on the side of it. Echo, voice change. Oh, yeah. The bump box is a real deal. Thank you for just crashing the set and giving us a bunch of these bump boxes to the bump box team. They've been a great addition to the Thunderdome. (laughs) Yeah, we we were talking about it. If you are a beach goer and you have a bump box, you own the beach that you go to. Yeah, 
I mean, a lot of people that go to the beach try not to like just fuck over everybody around. Them. <laughs> oh yeah, if you go you to that beach, how bad everyone hates you. I'm glad you said that. Like if you're a college spring breaker for sure, but if you're an adult going to the beach. I don't know if that particular. <laughs> well, that's not me. There's yeah. smaller bump bucks that yeah, maybe, yeah, that'll be. That is good. That you yeah. just keep, you know. So I don't think about. So you it don't ruin their life. Yeah. You know, because they might guess what have different tastes than you, and they paid a lot of money to get there as well. Oh yeah, well you got to ask around. You can't you can't <laughs> just show up with just, the loudest box. Just walk around. Well, that, with that's no, no, you got to ask. Like, hey, you guys go with country. You but they're gonna feel ask. obligated to say yes. Okay, well then that's asshole move too. Well then that's on them. That's not on that for me. It is. Someone's gonna smash that thing. For sure. All you need is one drunk. The uh, When I was down in, um, what was that town? St. Pete? Yep. Mm -hmm. This this old man, he built a tent on the beach, like did the full fucking. Playing his flag, yeah. Whole thing. Windy. Super windy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, an, I don't live on a beach, but I know wind. Yep. Tent. Not great. Had this big speaker. I mean, this guy was acting like an asshole. <laughs> okay. Full on. I'm watching this. 25, 30 minutes in, the wind beat that tent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Running down. So obviously, I laugh mm -hmm. at the situation. The tent went a different direction, didn't go directly towards me. So I wasn't like eager to get up and help. Yeah. You know, I wasn't like, I'm going to go grab this guy's tent that we all knew was going to fucking blow. No obligation away. for you either. Would not do that. Guy sitting in the tent next to me, though, in the cabana next to me, basically looks at me, calls me a bad guy. Why don't you go help the guy? I'm oh, do you go help a guy? What about him? Wow. Well, then he went to try to help. Guy was too embarrassed, didn't want the help. So then he came walking fucking back with his head down to the cabana. Like, how'd that go, go for you? Yeah. How's, how's that? Everybody says that's such a fucking hero, huh? <laughs> such a hero, huh? Maybe Sit that guy's fuck. just an asshole. And maybe we all need to enjoy that and just never be that person. Sit down. Good guy, though. I ended up getting boozed up. Had a little conversation with him later in the day. Sweet. Just wanted to help. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have to. Yeah, sometimes. Not everybody needs to be saved. Nope. That old man had been to the beach a thousand times. There you go. Mm -hmm. And he was letting everybody know he'd been there before. Yeah. How, how's he going to learn? His beach. It was. We were tourists on mm -hmm. his beach. Boy, that tent flying through the air was awesome. Just a fucking... Yeah. There was a guy feel. flying a kite that was like maybe 40 feet long. Oh, yeah. With a streamer on the back Those of it. Those beach ones. <sighs> Sick. Flying awesome. at it. Full speed. Yeah. Diving it down. It was like an air show. Well, the people that do like the skimboarding. Or whatever. Oh, yeah. With, throw it with the kites. It? Yeah. yeah, but there's some that do it oh. with the kites that ride like that. are connected. Yeah. You shouldn't do yeah that. Those like people that. are weapons. Yeah, you, you shouldn't should. do that. That would be so. not? That was kind of tough. That's just, I mean, you've seen those people. I've seen a couple of people end up in the hotel. Yeah, they, it's, really? yeah, that's possible. I mean, you're at the mercy of the wind. Yeah, you're Amish. Bingo. Men play. You do a lot of beaching down there in South Florida? Uh, no. Usually, if I do early morning, it's like sunrise, not too hot. Do you Dude. see beach in yeah. your life? Yeah. Yeah. But like growing up, I probably grew up like 20 minutes away from the beach. I mean, once you go east, you basically run into the beach 20, 25 minutes anywhere, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, uh, but didn't go much. That's what, I feel like that happens. Yeah. Like the yeah, beach sure. town people, unless you live on the beach, you don't really see the beach that much. For me, I'm not visiting a beach town unless I'm on the fucking beach. Yep. But then there's people that like stay inland and I'm like, you could go do this in like Arizona. Why are you, you know? I, I agree. Those Arizona. people go to the beach. Some of those people, like a lot of the beach towns in Cape Cod and even Gloucester, like some of them are packed in inland, but they'll have like. They only got a month though. Yeah, exactly. True. To, yeah. It's not as if it's a full year round. Yeah, they only have three, four months. Yeah, I'm going to the ruins. beach. I'm going to the beach. Yeah. A lot of people go May to August, like Memor Memorial to Labor Day. They'll go to Cape That's Cod summer, for that baby. entire time. What are you saying? What ruins the fucking beach for me is fucking birds. Once well, you bring some food out, oh, or the same. kids have some food, I fry French fries, something they're just <laughs> yeah. they bully you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and they're not going anywhere. That's why you, you kill one, you snap one's neck. Yeah, get an airsoft yeah. gun. You put you put Hang one on, pellet I'm into take, an eye. Everyone knows out. in the beach now. Bingo. You guys can't just murder birds. Take this I know. Yeah, partially blind. They attack you first. You can. Let's get to a break. <laughs> Let's get smarter on the other side. Let's enjoy the season that was in the trenches and on defense side of the ball. We're all pretty pumped about the break. I think. We're going to miss everybody, though. Uh, and we're going to be four days in, and I'm going to be very antsy. Miss everybody in here. Yeah, that's people that watch true. along that's at home. True. Nah. Yeah. We can't just let the watch. negative ones on internet oh, no, be a, a full-on representation of the people that spend their afternoons or evenings with us. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But, you know. 
that's not what you were talking about. A lot of good I'm, people out there, Connor, yeah, okay? I, I like travel them, a lot. Yeah. Sure. Commercial. I, I like them. I see them. I like them. No, you don't see them. Next Wednesday, like e but I'm not going to be like, man, I miss those people. It is cool yeah. to miss you guys. It okay? is cool to be in the public every once in a while. Like, we don't really yeah. get to go into the public much. We like work, come to the Thunderdome. Adam Silver, K Fame kind of gave it up. We're in the middle of a neighborhood. Yeah, don't we all live. Don't love that. <laughs> so we don't really, we don't get out into the public much. We don't really do that. Don't get the, don't eat much in public. Nope. Don't really see groups of people, only really see ourselves. So whenever we go to Vegas and get to see, the, it was cool. Yep. It was nice to see people say, yeah. like, what's, a lot of up? Good people yeah. out there. what's up? And they watch the show. I mean, even in the game day travels, when we do those Friday live shows, hanging around, talking to everybody, love that stuff. Loved it. Yeah. It was super fun. A lot of, like, really cool stories where it's like, fuck, that is, like, hearing that makes stuff like this even more. Really cool. Awesome. Yeah. But we're in our own little thunder room. Yeah. Hey, when, no I was, when I was walking to Waste Management, more fans of the program than you could ever even well, see. Well, see, a lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying, well, that's your demo over there ruining the waste management. That's a good demo. Boy, was it a time. They go. Were you there? I went Saturday. That was the day. Toll was it a they, they, gridlock. They shut it down. Shut it down. They're saying that thing might Couldn't change. move. Are they going to change people, that going forward? I don't know. Sounds like you had like a good time, though. It was a great time. <laughs> they need to sell less. Uh, I mean, I don't know if they want. They don't want to, rather. But less they need people? to just sell less tickets. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, less people in the place. But they shut down booze for two hours, too. Oh, yeah. Which Ooh. people were not real happy about. Really? Well, it's because you guys were being assholes. Nah, don't. Not me. You were there. I saw so you rolling I'm one mud. of the 300,000 people. All assholes. Are you? Every one of them assholes. That's what I read Are on you? the internet. Billy Hoyle. Horse, Billy. Billy Ho. Ho. Billy Ho. He was mad. Oh yeah! Did you see what Jack Johnson said. Well, <laughs> well, I've been coming I, here for 21 years. I mean, those two can have a just asshole. Perfectly behaved crowd. What's that? Those two can have a perfectly behaved crowd and have a problem with it. And Zach Johnson shouldn't have lost the Ryder Cup, so that's on fucking him. Mm, yeah, a lot of people pissed off at him too. So I saw a lot of people saying, "Yeah, the golfer's acting a little soft in this entire thing." But so maybe we meet in the middle. Ricky Fowler. Yeah, Ricky. I mean, if you if you're, yeah, if you have exactly. a personality, yeah. Scotty Scheffler almost <laughs> yeah. hit a hole in one, I think, on Saturday. Yeah, there. Scotty, yeah. right? He's a player. We haven't got your take on this. Golf in trouble right now? PGA's in trouble. Yep. They better figure it out. I didn't know any of this fucking They better figure it out real quick. I mean, obviously, we know Billy Ho and Zach Johnson and everything, but they weren't at the... No. And when were... you turn on live almost every single week, it's Kepka, Cam Smith. All the, all the names are at the top. And They're you see right top. now, the narrative that's coming out is... Uh, the ratings are terrible for Liv, and PGA is still killing. I understand that. I understand that it's still that's just because it's a routine. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. early. Routine is just to turn on PGA, but like when every when I know everybody on one of the tours, yeah, and I don't know anybody on the other one seemingly yeah. that's being spotlighted at the top. It's like that's going to sway some casuals, which is what we are. Yeah. I think. Agree they, easily they, too. They got to figure that out. Like yeah. it's not. It's not like a ah oh, man. Should I watch this? Should I watch this? Like who should I? It's, it's easy. Hey, I'm gonna go watch all the guys that are winning majors. This, right now. this weekend's a big one because for the PGA because everyone's playing in it. And Tiger's back. And Tiger's back. Oh, so I'll watch. And it's the week after the no, Super Bowl, wearing, so this is when yeah. golf actually people start watching. He's wearing sun day red. red. You're buying all of them too. I wore the red socks in honor of them. Sun's <laughs> day. What was red. the name? What's the name of the company that made those socks? Uh those are Jordan. Just one name. Jordan. One name. Weird. Woods his wouldn't name, even been cool. His Rolls name was already three. taken. Woods. Yeah, Asics. Woods. yeah Woods would have been cool. Asics? Asics got a line of something. Uh, uh, I don't know the first name. You do, Tiger since 1949. So, obviously, you know, Tiger's been the guy since, what, 1999? Three, four years old. You knew he was going to be a phenom. So, that's where he tried to get in there. But, nope, Tiger's gone. Tiger gone. Tiger, Tiger also ice cream up there in Canada. Yeah. Mm. I don't think trademarks... I don't think that's a thing in Canada. I mean, Tiger was on the Johnny Cochran show at three years. Johnny, yeah. <laughs> they should have. Yep. They should have locked Co- it up there. Johnny Cochran, the, law- the lawyer, yeah. whatever it is. Great lawyer. Johnny uh, Johnny- Carson. There it is. I nailed it. <laughs> rest Cochran rest in peace. Too. How about Johnny Carson? Definitely, right? Very <laughs> dead. Rest in peace, though. I did a little. Uh, I did a paper on the Johnny Carson uh, show in college. Mm-hmm. They were drawing like a 14, 15 pay show, like. Everybody was the guy. Well, he was the guy. 60 every night. Yeah. Like, there's four options of entertainment, and uh, he was friends with everybody. You wanted to make it, you got to go through there. His vibes were immaculate. His interview skills were s- superb. Mm-hmm. What a guy. What a legend. 
that was back whenever there was literally 10 famous people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah, I assume we weren't around for them, but no. we heard those were the days. Yeah, they'll come for him too. Give it time. They always do. Johnny Carson? I'm sure. At some, some point? Yeah, they will. No matter what. Time's probably already passed. Uh, uh, sure. Might okay. Be All right. Let's take a break. On we'll the other see. side, we wrap up this glorious Wednesday. <laughs> I wanted to be a late night show host at one point. Absolutely. Now, why would you? Well, it's changed. Yeah. It's so different now. You don't need to. No. Like, because they're just trying to create YouTube clips. Yeah. Like the Tonight Show growing up was, was like, fuck, that is something. That's awesome. Yeah. Craig Ferguson used to have the late, late one. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. He used to like, well, tear up his questions. I'm not using these. We're having a conversation with Zach said. I be became a fan of Fallon because of the Late Late Show mm -hmm. before he became the Tonight Show. There, there was the entire Letterman Leno situation that popped yeah. off. Uh -huh. Letterman thought he was going to get the Tonight Show. Instead, Leno got it. Letterman moved to the other one, CBS, I believe. Yep. With Big Pants Company or whatever his company was. Well, and then Conan. A lot of drama in there. Yeah, yeah, Conan, Leno, Arsenio Hall. Yeah. yeah, Leno has to come back. Arsenio. Arsenio Hall had a hell Weapon. of a run. Mm -hmm. Yay. A long time. That late night thing Magic, was... Magic Johnson had a hell of a, a late night show for a little bit. I didn't know that. He was, he had a prime like a prime time or a late night show. The Magic Johnson hour, the Magic Johnson show for I think it went for like a year or so. That used to be like the desired time slot. Oh yeah, is to go there. You'll be the star. You'll be a star, kid. You'll be a star. <laughs> you go on the late night show. Now it's like every segment they're doing, they're trying to get on the internet. Yeah, and like, it's they're each like four minutes long and nothing happens. Like it's tough. Well, that's all they're trying to do is just get on the just internet. Promote. And the same yeah. people that are making decisions for those late night shows are still making decisions now. It's like world's changing. World's changing. Right in front of your face. Right in front of your face. And we're lucky to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. We're also lucky to get smarter on the other side of this break. You boys going to bring it or what? Let's go. Got to. Last one. Let's go, boys. It's fucking Kansas City Chiefs Parade Day. We're going to bring it. It's day. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Right. We love love around here. Yes, love, we love. do. Don't we? We love love. We love love. When people are in actual love, we love it. Yes, absolutely. That's why we love Taylor and Trav. Yeah. People are saying that they told Taylor not to come. She's in Australia. She's got four stadiums. She's got a job. Got to work. Yeah. She's not able to just get drunk in the streets. No. no. She has stuff to do. She has a job. Yeah. Being the biggest star on earth. Exactly. After the rock. Bingo. A lot of people pissed <laughs> about how the rock's being labeled right now. What do you mean? I saw, I saw an entire thing that had uh, it was getting a lot of good action. Like, dumb calling The Rock the biggest star on the planet with Taylor Swift and what she's doing right now is ridiculous. There's a couple people up there in that spot. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, fucking relax. If The Rock was to walk through any continent, people would go, Yeah. That's The Rock. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift was to walk through any continent. Oh, yeah. That's Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Even how, Russia. How many people are like that? How many people are in that group? Mm, I think everyone right would know who Shaq is. Yeah. Yeah. Michael Jordan, Ron. maybe 20 people. Ronaldo, Messi, Brady. I wouldn't say 20. Messi could walk through Ohio, I think. Tiger Woods. I think, mm -hmm. I think parts of Ohio. Think, well, Messi could walk yeah. right down the middle of the street. Oh, parts, yeah, for sure. And parts. nobody would have a clue. Yeah. Pittsburgh, yep. I think he could walk maybe right down really? the south side. Pittsburgh? You put... You put Pittsburgh. You put a think Pittsburgh fliction. cares about soccer. It's 500 Miss, million Messi. followers on Instagram alone. Yeah, the world. I think that's the world. Yeah, not you, Pittsburgh. Yeah, you put Messi. <laughs> I, and this was my whole conversation yesterday <laughs> on first take about biggest box office. I said Patrick Mahomes just because, you know, 202 million people watching. I got a bunch of soccer people killing me about being such an American, you know, with my. And that's real. True. But there is places in America where Messi could walk through and nobody would have a clue who he is. Agreed. If he was just dressed in regular clothes. Now you put him in. His uniform. His kit, yeah. With cleats on. With the leg tat. Like, there is there's a chance people are going, going to know who he is. But he used to put him in some jeans and, like, a hoodie and then walk down the street. I don't think anybody mm. there's, in some cities would have a clue who he is. Yeah. I, it must just because we're so, like, engulfed in the entire thing. And with the Apple TV stuff. What's that? So he's, just, he's just he's on the TV. So like, every time I log into Apple TV still, it feels like I'm seeing Messi. So I let everybody know. Okay. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has a hundred million more Instagram followers than Taylor Swift. So anyone who had a problem with that, they can shut the fuck up. Boom. Let's get to a break. In the trenches, The Rock is The Rock. Okay. I agree. Hey, I'm with you. I'm just telling. Oh. You. oh. Important when I'm seeing them. Nice. Thank you. Nailed it. How's it going?
That's the universe saying that there's going to be a great in the trenches and everything. Be, be on your boys. Be your friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change your life. Take five. Bye. 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 What's that coming down the track? What's that coming down the track? It's me, machine in the red and black. It's me, machine in the red and black. Nothing finer in the land. Ain't nothing finer in the land. And a drunk, obnoxious Georgia fan. Obnoxious Georgia fan. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go Then you go to pick up a box and uh, a bong falls out of there. What, do you have anything to say about that situation, or what do we got going on? <laughs> I hope it's not a bong, first of all. Hey, <laughs> the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Spark. Yeah. In the SEC, you got to do that every week, man. It's how easy this year. <laughs> like I said, there's an open invitation. Call Greg Sankey, come down here and get you some of this SEC if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to make a small contribution to the uh, Marine Corps Scholarship Fund. Give at least 15000 and see if, if Richard will match. I'll match. fifteen k from match. us. Awesome. 15k from you. We need Dick Smith, FedEx well, CEO, yep. 15000 That's 45000 to the Marine Scholarship Fund. And I believe today is the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. So, ooh! Oh! University of Georgia legend, ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Stafford. Yeah! yeah! What's up, Kelly? Shout out to this man winning $1,000 on this Feel Good Friday when A.J. Hawk... There's a few older white ladies that told me <laughs> I did not deserve to wear the G they on my chest. They and they me. said I needed to get out of Chuck's Seafood Restaurant. This told is David me. Pollock's town. I so told her right back to her face, I want to let you know, you can say and think whatever you want about me. I love this Georgia Bulldogs team. That's what I want to hear. You should take this in. It's pretty cool. I don't hear that. You need to. Because you've done a lot here that has been fantastic. Have you ever thought anything bad about a kicker before? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Trust what I've taught you while we were off air and just let it rip. Yeah, Hot Rod was getting a little bit too many tips. We're going Georgia! 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 Oh, you're hyping it up. Georgia! Let's go! For $85,000 in drenched jeans. Do it! fans and any place that barks at everybody when they see them that's a town for me i got the bulldogs winning big today yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir everybody's got bryce young will levis and will anderson uh -huh. above cj stroud allegedly Lock them in. we will one million percent continue to drive that narrative uh -huh. because with what my eyes seen aj and what yeah. you have seen if C.J. Stroud ends up at the Colts at number four, uh -huh. I'm happy about the future of the Colts all of a sudden. Yep. So this will be the last time we say this. C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this draft class. That's right. For sure. We are massive fans of them. And whenever we say whatever we say over the next few months before the draft, 
we would like it to not be held against us because we know we are a part of the entire system here. Uh -huh. And we need CJ Stroud and Indy. You have to have him. Plus, it's really fun to say Stroud. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and we need him to go down to the fourth pick. <laughs> yeah, right. you think they have to trade up? Because Texans are right there at two, and, you know, those are the two quarterbacks of the future. Well, I'll tell you what, there's an opportunity and a chance for us to move, too. We got a lot of pieces to the sure. puzzle that That's aren't right. necessarily going to be there in the future, probably. You bundle that with the four overall pick, I think you could maybe move up to one. Yeah. And then you get C.J. Stroud. What's the most beer you did in one night you think of one of those shows? Well, I never forget when we went to Japan one time. Uh, Dudley, Stacy Keebler. I mean, there were so many people out there. We, I think we went through 103 or 108. Now, between just for myself, you know, I'd always make sure to have about a 12 or 18 pack there. And, you know, here's the thing when some people say, oh, shit, man, you got too much of that beer on, you don't even know how to drink beer. It's like, dude, fuck you. You don't know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to entertain 20,000 people in an arena. If I just go out there and sip it real properly, how fucking exciting is that? Uh, so when you're out there on an empty belly and you're shotgunning beers and all that shit's going in, the, the half that was going in was for me, the half that was going on was for them. Nice. But I'm telling you, Pat, when you, when you shotgun a bunch of beers like that and you're drinking about half of each beer, you got a pretty damn good buzz when you come out. <laughs> And that's a sacrifice I was willing to make every single night. Uh, I would assume you were pretty fucked up, yeah. When did you start uh, you self cheersing? Know, when did you start self cheersing? Was that something you did in college? You're like, hey, hey, Steve, good for me, man. <laughs> when did that start? No, you know what? Uh, you know, I got to give credit to Sandman for starting that, but he was bashing him off his head, and, and I don't remember. And it wasn't because Sandman was doing it, so I don't want to say I copied him, but he was the first. So, and then my style was, because people always get us confused. I say, yeah, man, you used to bang them on your head. No, oh, motherfucker, I was the guy that clapped them together. <laughs> it was just something we came up with. I don't know how the, the beers got introduced to the ring, but it became a thing, and we ran with it. 
Jalen Milrow often wears his own branded apparel reading LANK across the front. It's an acronym that stands for Let a Naysayer Know. Being told by his former offensive coordinator, that Bill O'Brien. That is not what I thought. Is that not what you thought? Boy, let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. <laughs> of course. The professional's right in the middle of his <laughs> lead. That's all right. I just keep I thought going. you almost lost me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real tight up here, as you were. I just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you were too smooth with that. I thought it was going down. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was going down out here. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Let a naysayer know. Let a naysayer know. Nay no. That's what we thought the whole time. That's what we all thought. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Dan in Connecticut. Lovely place here on the Five Energy phone line. What's, what's going on, that? Dan? Oh! Oh, what's up, Pat McAfee? Dan, you are too it's young to listen to this show. I can tell through. I think. Well, how I'm old not are you? Dan. I am Owen. Ned. Owen, how old are you? He's so different. I am at eight and a half. Oh, that's cute. Eight and a half. If you're okay. telling us you're half age, you're too young to be listening. That's a record. <laughs> what you... What's on your mind, Nick. pal? What do you want to talk about, Owen? Um, I want to talk about how inspiring this show is. Oh, and how Owen. you're inspiring this whole entire world with how you're talking about sports. And how you're talking about your life experience. Thank you, Owen. Owen, thank you. Owen. Love you, Owen. Thank you, Owen. 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 I'm taking oh, And also, fuck Boston. Oh! 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 You're the best. Oh! Oh! Owen, you're the best. I want to let Owen know. If you're still listening, Owen, Kiss you're you. inspiring. Best kid ever. Owen, the way you talk about sports is inspiring. Yes. yes. I, I didn't know eight and a half oh. could do that. Is wow. That Shout out Owen. Me. That time. Go on. Yeah. Hey, Owen. New generation in Connecticut, I guess. He's making me feel good, too, by the way. He's yeah. making me feel yeah. good, making the show feel good. He was talking us up. He was hyping us up, and then boom. Yeah. A little, was this Aristotle's brother? A little misdirection from Aristotle's <laughs> yeah. brother, Owen, oh, eight yeah. and a half there. That was I'd, awesome. I'd say he put his balls on your forehead, but I don't think they dropped yet. So. <laughs> What are you going to do to change and make Tua better? Have you got so, into that? This is very early in the whole process, yeah, and you're shaking no. hands, kissing babies right yeah. now, and you're a zero-win head yeah. coach that everybody loves. Zero wins. Zero win. <laughs> but what what are you thinking about that for Tua? How do you make him better? Um, we're going to start with scoring more points than the opponent. Wow! Holy shit. Oh, no. Uh, you are changing the game. Changing the game. <laughs> yeah. Through math. Yeah, uh, right. No, I think... Um, there's, I, I, I was just so fortunate in, in my career to be around the, the process of how I look at things with, with the empowerment of the right teachers that I, I look backwards forwards, okay? Um, what things do I see that are really awesome about his game on tape, even though we're at... Hey, he's an anchor. Hey, Boom! He, he, That's what I was just about to say. Oh, I didn't know. I, I was just... I, I, you were leading me. That's how, you should do this, maybe. Dude, think about it in the yeah. future. But you, he's or we so should, accurate. Or we should just spend the time finishing each other's... Sentences. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, did, did, have we known each other for... Our whole lives? Oh, my God. You tell... Me? Wow. This is weird. Yeah. Whoa, it seems like you guys just became. Dude. Wow, this is fucking weird, AJ. Bro. Hey, this is... Did we swap skins? <laughs> no. Wow, we learned a lot about yours, by the way. I mean, yeah. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show sticks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pink! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sport! 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 Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this We Love Love Wednesday, February 14th, 2024. Hour four of the program starts now. Sports! Sports.
Out of baby, that's AJ Hawk. Obviously, he was great at football. I assume other sports as well because we watch him golf, and boy, does the ball bounce his way every single mm. time. We've seen him sh- bury basketball shots for kids to win tuition. Whoa! This past fall, Big I deal. mean, this guy's freak show athlete Thank with you. a great haircut. Hey, hey, hair looks good. Nice new hair Wednesday. Got a little trim. Got hair a little looks trim. Yep. Really, really good. The talk step was here at Boston Connor and Darius J. Butler in yes, place sir. of Ty Schmidt. One half of the hammer. Don. Cowboys Town Diggs is here, and the man who hosts in the trenches, 12-year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion A.Q. Shipley's here. Hey, we have some news around the NFL. Uh, defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, Steve Wilkes, has been fired. As uh, I'm sorry, what? From the San Francisco Ooh. 49ers. A change to San Francisco. Steve Wilkes is out as the 49ers defensive coordinator. Now, this is a surprise. This literally just broke within a matter of moments here. Uh, we don't even have a take. Did not expect this to take place. Now, I guess the only thing would be is we didn't win the Super Bowl. We didn't get over the hump. Something's got to change. Kyle Shanahan's head coach. We're not going to fire the head coach. He's the offense coordinator. Patrick Mahomes, game tying drive whenever mm-hmm. they need it. Game winning drive whenever they need it. Just march right down the field. Patrick Mahomes has done this to other teams in the past. We thought Steve Wilkes' defense was phenomenal all year long. Mm-hmm. I think that's a conversation piece. So, a bit of a shocker here, especially this time in the coaching cycle, but that's not the Niners fault, I guess, because they make it to the Super Bowl, but this is, uh, this is a shocker here, AJ. This is, this is certainly a shocker yeah. if Steve Wilkes is out. Do you think there, there's going to be a chance we hear that this is somewhat of a mutual situation? Because if they won that Super Bowl, if they made one more play and they win the Super Bowl, I'm guessing Steve Wilkes is still around. Yeah, third and four, they pick up that first down at the end of the game. And Jake, and I think what we're going to learn from in the trenches is they send offensive line left. George Kittle picks up right. Then they have McDuffie picked up. They pick up that third and four first down. They drain the clock. They kick the field goal. They win the Super Bowl. Is Steve Wilkes fired? Probably not. That's why football is wild. That's why the NFL is insane. But then also, if you hold them to a field goal instead of a touchdown in overtime, yeah. we're still playing for the third possession. We go kick a field goal. We win this game. What the offense is able to do. But they're in the Super Bowl. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck was kind of talking about a couple of weeks ago how uh, Wilkes had to call the defense out, you know, as far as like some effort, effort. things. And, you know, he did not, come from the booth. Though. Yeah, and then we talked a few weeks ago, me and AQ, about, you know, how different the defense has been since they lost Hufanga. And obviously, you know what the defense was last year under D'Amico Ryan's. And even prior to that, was with uh, Salah. So, um, didn't expect this 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 firing to happen. I'm with AJ. Though. I hope it comes out that there was some mutual parting of ways because we were on a run. We thought last year he should have been hired as the, the Carolina Panthers head coach after the job he did as an interim, and then had a great year. You know, a pretty good year this year. And being in the Super Bowl, 19 points in regulation against Patrick Mahomes, obviously going going and lose it. But uh, this is definitely surprising. There's a comment coming from Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan says it was a tough decision, and he didn't mention it yesterday because he wasn't sure at that point which direction he'd go. Says Wilk's system didn't align with what the 49ers had run previously. Adds it just ended up not being the right fit. So without the right fit at D coordinator they make the Super Bowl. <laughs> That's a wild thing. Uh, I don't know if it's, is it, he said scheme there, right? So he didn't say personality. It wasn't a personality fit or whatever the case is. And he said he could have went a multiple of different directions as of yesterday. So either last night or this morning he just woke up and had to make that incredibly difficult decision there. You're, I guess he could potentially also be a part of a victim of same thing that I guess Purdy was going through. They have so much talent on the defense side of the ball. So does Kyle Shanahan think like, you know, we can, Salah had success. Um, D'Amico. D'Amico. D'Amico had success. Wilkes had success. We could bring in anybody, yeah. really, and run. The, is that a mind? Not saying that that's how the case or diminishing anything that Steve Wilkes' brain is or does, but is that what Kyle Shanahan thinks? Like, hey, we have so much talent invested on that defensive side of the ball. All of our defense coordinators have done well. Like that is that is how we need to find the group that can win us the Super Bowl because they get a stop after we kick that field goal, we win this thing. Is is that the ultimate reason why? I, I do. I genuinely wonder that. I mean, well, and like with those have, two guys. Oh my bad, AJ. Go ahead. No, I just I think that obviously there's been issues behind the scenes all year. If they're firing him now, this isn't the first they're they're thinking like, hey, we need to change up or this system isn't working the way, like the system doesn't fit our players the way we want to. What would the system be? I, I don't think I fully understand. Because they're running the San Francisco 49ers defense. Is that just what happens? Uh, I mean, every every coordinator is going to come and have their own wrinkles. You know, I've, it's, they've been a 4-3, you know, down linemen, down DNs, but they're going to be more quarters. They want to be man, more man-based, more fire zones, different things. So how you call the game is definitely some things uh, in the game is going to be on everything DB. Uh, I think matchup-wise, they could have 
and should have done differently, I think, when it comes to handling uh, Travis Kelsey. And then the teams throughout this playoff running, if you look at the NFC side, you know, the Lions, uh, the Packers, what they'll be. Um, but the teams, like, they had some success, especially in the run game. And you know playoff time is it, going to start with, hey, stopping the run game. If you look at the personnel in San Fran, Hargrave, Bosa, right. Young, Ken Law, and then the second-level linebackers of Greenlaw, obviously he got hurt, Fred Warner, like, you would expect they, they should be, you know, one of the top teams in the league in the run game. So didn't have a ton of success in the postseason. And uh, they're, they're in championship mode. So it's just like the same when you're changing players. Like, if we need to change a wrinkle here, uh, even though we were this close, maybe that's what we need to change. What did Bill Cowher say? He'll say, I'll fire a coach. Just fire a coach. Yeah. Just to let people know that they need a little bit of different energy. I'm not saying that's what Kyle Shanahan did, but, like, that is right. They yeah. are in championship mode. Yeah. We need to we need to figure this out how we go. Steve Wilkes will get another job, we assume, but this is late here now. Yeah, and there's no DCs open now, but he'd definitely get another job. Who knows, too, if after the season, like, if any of the players came up and nothing against Steve Wilkes, but if they were like, hey, look, the things that we did, obviously we had our base that the San Francisco defense has that we've had the past couple of years, but the little things that got changed, they didn't help us, like what we were changing last year and those little things that D'Amico was doing, that was a much more more better suited for our defense. But luckily enough for the San Francisco 49ers, there is a highly motivated analyst on ESPN that would love to be a defensive coordinator again in the NFL. That would be pretty electric in San Francisco. A guy who was potentially up for the Dallas Cowboys job. Yeah, I think so. Who really, really, really wanted the Cowboys job because he wants to be on that stage. And the Jesus commercial, people say he loved. That's right. The one where they were washing feet. Mm -hmm. Now, are they a 4-3 and Rex is a 3-4 guy? Is that, yeah, does that, that be, I have no idea. Well, all those intricacies, I got no fucking clue, but I do know Rex Ryan needs to be back in the NFL, damn it. There was definitely an interesting point in that game, right, where where you saw Shanahan call a timeout. Remember that? Oh, yeah, and then he. He kind of overwrote. You saw they were, he was about to bring cover zero. They already ran zero, mm -hmm. like a zero type thing. They got burnt earlier because Mahomes did, I think, Rice on a crossing Cross, pattern that yep. went for like 40. Yep. And then he calls the timeout, and he's like, do not run cover zero again. Like, so. Against Patrick Mahomes. Bingo. What was that stat that Big Cat posted from Reddit? Uh, that uh, Patrick Mahomes is the uh, best quarterback in the clutch moment. Perfect. He's seven, seven for seven. The next best, I think, was Brady. At in the five. playoffs. In, in the postseason playoff. football. Yeah. yeah, this came from uh, Neil's Substack, Neil Payne, uh, or whatever. I saw it via Big Cat's Twitter account from Barstool. And congrats on the 41 straight free throws, boys. <laughs> We're all watching along with bated breath. Since 2001, there have been 125 drives in the NFL postseason where it was at least the fourth quarter. There was under a minute left to play, and the team on offense trailed by seven points or less at the start of it. These are your standard clutch moments for a football team, the do-or-die type drives that win and lose critical games. Out of those 125 drives, only 40% of them saw the team pull off a magic trick and get it, make it happen. Some quarterbacks pretty good. Tom Brady went 5 of 11, 46% of super clutch. Good job, Tommy. Huh? Drew Brees, 3 for 6, 50%, super clutch. Ooh. Patrick Seven for seven. <laughs> okay. Seven for seven. That's, uh, that's what we're dealing with. That is, and we asked somebody yesterday, like, hey, why is he? He's like, I'm just so comfortable in those situations, I guess, because I'm there. It's like a lot of people can say they're comfortable. It's like whenever you lock in and all of a sudden, like, every play, every snap, every step, every throw, every second matters more than everybody else. And you execute at that high level. It's like, I don't know if Steve Wilkes, the way it ended, was potentially a part of it, right? Gave he gets a stop mm -hmm. there. Is he fired? Probably not, yeah. but it's like Patrick Mahomes has done this to a lot of people. So I'm assuming, just like to your point, this wasn't just a one-game situation with Steve Wilkes and Kyle Shanahan. No, it's it's never like, hey, all of a sudden make a rash decision at the end of the season. I'm sure this was kind of boiling under the surface in Kyle Shanahan's his mind throughout the year. He may have been worried, like, hey, if we end up winning this Super Bowl God. and I want to move on from yeah. Wilkes, what do I got to wait till after the parade and let him go? Like, this is going to be weird. How, how, just – that is what – go back to that stat. This fucking guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, What's his he's problem? Not that's what I was going to say human. about the stat. Just for Brady's sake, obviously, it's when you're you know trailing by seven or less. I mean, he won two Super Bowls and the game was tied. I mean, he, he drove down the field and they kicked the field goal against the Rams and against the Panthers. And then, obviously, 28-3. to three, None of those factor in except for the last one. But but still, yeah, seven for seven is the most ridiculous thing like that out there. Well, it's under a minute left. What, down by seven. Right? Yeah, but I'm just saying under a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's not a lot of these situations that pop up. Mm -hmm. and We're not saying like comebacks as a total, but with a minute left in the game, like this is it. Like we're either losing or we're winning the game. Yeah. I mean, Mahomes has a situation where they were down with under 20 seconds left, right? Against the Bills? 13. 13. Yeah. 13. Yeah. 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 Last cup. Yeah. 
Every time. Yeah. He's making it. And if he is, I mean, every single fucking time. I, I, and he, now he has that, but he has that that Jordan like aura about him now too. With the yeah. teams that he's facing too, feel that the coaches that are coaching against him feel that like, hey, this guy, oh, no. we have to find a way. To, we have to be the first team to ever stop this guy in one of these situations. Mike Up actually comes out that the Niners talking. I think the refs, Bill Vinovich, even yeah, says, yeah. Bill Vinovich says like, Niners got to get this because if not. That yeah. other guy is on the other side. This came out of Inside the NFL last night on the CW from NFL Films. We get a first down, we knock a lot of time off this clock. The biggest play in the game right here. Your best play that you have in your book right now. Because you don't want to give Mahomes the ball back. Wow. All right. Hey, man, we got can't, no sacks, obviously. Hey, alert the pressure. We cannot take a sack. Great shot. NFL Films so far. <laughs> yeah. The best. Purdy looking left. Ball got tipped right out of his hand. McDuffie pressure. And that was him. when we all knew yep. Patrick Mahomes is going to do what Patrick yep. Mahomes is going to Even as soon as Patrick saw it, yep, all right, mm -hmm. thank you, here we go. Bill Vinovich, the ref. I like how calm he is Yeah. in the fourth yeah. quarter there. Because we talk about rising to the occasion, the refs did. In the fourth quarter, they didn't get tight. They didn't start calling more. They didn't panic. Bill Vinovich is like, Shannon <laughs> needs the fucking best one he's got here. Don't, and the other ref, like, yup, yup. Yeah. And then it's, you, we all know what's happening on the other field. I like seeing, like, yeah, them, like the football, like, like yeah, them football talking. fan. They watch yeah. a lot. Yeah, they watch they a lot of ball. They know these quarterbacks. They know these coaches. Probably can tell you uh, better than most of us can. All right, I can expect this type of play. Okay, we can expect some pick route, rub routes, probably pressure from Spags. But with that, that uh, Pat Mahomes, like, not only is it him, we talked about Michael Jordan, but he's got his Phil Jackson, too. He's got Andy Reid, who always has Andy's that one him. last, those two last plays in his back pocket, whether it's a Wasp, uh, a Tom and Jerry, or whatever. You got your Scotty with Travis Kelsey. So, they, I mean, they just got everything. It, it's, well, Travis Kelsey was on the mic front at the parade today. Yes, we will not was. show that because uh, I don't know if his remix to Friends in Low Places went <laughs> as smooth as he planned it. I assume he will re-record that. I hope. And we will definitely hear that. Travis had a good time. <laughs> yep. Has had a good time. Patrick Mahomes spoke at the parade today talking about you know hey we're not done and now you you hear he started talking to it uh talking about it to us you hear what he has put in his head now to be the motivation here as he's incredibly intoxicated speaking to Kansas City no for real though we appreciate everything y'all do showing up to Arrowhead every single week we know we had to go on the road last year but I promise you next year we'll be at home and we're going for that three piece so don't get it forget it don't get it twisted we're doing it Three times, first time in NFL history, we doing it. Love y'all. First time in NFL history. So, like, that's the thing now. Yeah. So, like, he, you already see that he has it locked in. Like, oh, this has never been done before. So now he's even more motivated than maybe mm -hmm. the first time that he won. And that's what they'll say, by the way. They'll say, we want this next one more than we've ever wanted before because historically, this has never taken place. And then you wonder yourself, well, they had the best defense they've ever had last year. Will that be able to remain? Will they be able to have defense player of the year, Kenny Christian? Well, Chris Jones actually spoke during the parade, incredibly intoxicated, and this is what he had to say. I need three of those things, baby. Okay. We ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. Kansas City. We will be back here next year. And for those who want Chris Jones go, I ain't going nowhere, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. I will be here this year, next year, and the year after. Right. <laughs> 3P, 3P, 3P. Okay, and that immediately prompted a tweet from his agent, which is obviously a hysterical situation as he enters free agency where he say, hey, bartenders, cut them off. <laughs> cut these people off. We got too many boos with laughy faces. So what we're hearing there is Chris Jones signed a three-year deal mm -hmm. with the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. They're going to get that done. Now, people have obviously gone on the record whenever they were drunk and said things were going to happen, and then obviously different things took place. Yeah, here's Michael Katz, uh, NFL agent Katz. The Katz brothers are phenomenal. Cut them off, bartenders. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got too much beer right now yeah. as Chris Jones is giving away leverage as he gives his speech business-wise. But if they're able to keep this team together, you can hear them all. They are all they all found the motivation. This is what we're going for. Something has never taken place before. Of course, AJ. Of course they're able to find it. It's the first thing they said. They're, they're, you see Trav and, and uh, Mahomes on, on the field five minutes after they win the game, and that's what they instantly talk about. Now, we're coming back. Like we're, this, we're not done yet. Like This is... This is not the goal. Like we have many more in our in our brain that we feel like we're gonna win. You see all those corny movies 
and like motivational things where they like write something on a mirror. So like when you yeah. see it, it motivates you in the gym or the mm -hmm. motto. They they got it. Never been done. Three in a row. Never <laughs> like the the Patriots, Tom Brady, greatest of all time. Bill Belichick, greatest of all time. Patriots, greatest dynasty of all time. They you know what they were never everybody's fucking around their mouth about this. They were never able to win three straight. Can't do yeah, that. sustained greatness for twenty plus years. Way to go. Multiple different teams. We've already done never been able to win three in a row. And they're set up and primed to do it. Congrats to Chiefs fans, but also fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Crazy. But also be a little tougher. You know, Brandon Staley and Josh McDaniels are gone now, but yeah, there's no there's no like, hey, Whoa. this is a I mean, come on. Let's let's just call a spade a spade. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. The Raiders didn't want to play for McDaniels, and obviously the Staley thing happened. But again, true. It, they're, they're, even with those two guys in there, there's no like, yeah, that's really gonna change it. Maybe the Chiefs don't want they're gonna win the division. So that that's a done deal. And then Damn, Harbaugh? How else, how else is everything else going to fall into line after that? Well, Patrick Mahomes, while he was drunk speaking at the parade with a WWE title alongside Travis Kelsey, said, we're going to have home games. Okay, We mm -hmm. apologize for having to go on the road this year. We enjoyed being the villains, but also we missed out on the kingdom getting to experience with us. So it sounds like today was quite a success. Now, we are being told at the end of that thing, a couple shots, gunshots. Oh, Police no. have arrested two people, I do believe. I think a couple of people have been shot. We... Um, started the show was saying like the parade's a perfect thing because it's a entire city coming together to celebrate something that they were all a part of you know every single sunday or monday or thursday or friday right. or saturday every day that the nfl plays whenever that city and that fan base would turn on the game their energy their power made them feel as if they were a part of something much bigger than themselves they were able to set aside life for a little bit to focus on this kansas city chiefs team that's in the middle of a dynasty and for one day they were able to celebrate everything that they had accomplished together they could put aside their differences you feel this way about this thing you feel this way about this thing normally we're not even able to talk because it's 2024 that's how people act but today fuck that we're getting hammered and we're celebrating the fact that the chiefs are on top of the world and we're nowhere near done so we put over the fact that we love that parades happen we put over the fact that today's a great day in kansas city a couple gunshots at the end of it could potentially change the entire vibe which fucking sucks hope, hope everybody's okay mm -hmm. hope everything's all right but that is a that is quite a damper to a day where an entire city was supposed to come together and enjoy the hell out of life you obviously hope everybody's safe hope, hopefully this is a situation like a celebratory gunshots maybe just a couple which nope. isn't safe no, is I, I, that's not what they said nope. yeah. oh, a couple no. people yeah. were struck it said right yeah they think oh, someone was shot that. Huh. yeah oh. that sucks dude yeah, yeah. it's terrible T's and P's everybody mm -hmm. but let's not forget all the how close are, like there's a shot from the Kansas City Police chopper over top that uh, in the group text uh, it's a tweet that they uh, sent and they fly over the parade route mm. And it's like, that's such a beautiful thing. Two minutes of, that, of the, the video is two minutes long. That too. is just like such a beautiful thing to just showcase. And people are like, well, it's not that deep. It, it goes through the entire yeah, fucking come city. Come on, yeah. there's so many people. It's a two, two minutes. It's two, it's two minutes of this. It, it continues on. Wow. Think about how awesome that is for the entire community. And I know, obviously, gunshots are terrible to happen. And two people have been arrested. But it's like, let's not forget where the city was just a few hours ago. And that's completely together around the boys that were getting incredibly intoxicated walking through the streets of a city that has a dynasty cooking right in front of us. What a time, dude. What a fucking time. You man. saw those parking garages that I was talking about earlier. That Those are the, those are the spots. Yeah, rooftops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so everybody right there. all the way up. Look at this. It's still going. This is yeah, not a repeat. For all these people to go, like, think how, like, it's such a mess getting in and out of there. Like, that's not an easy thing to go no. to. So, like, that's a lot of people. Yes, that's a lot of people. Still well, going. This is not a repeat. you have to go through. Yeah. Jeez. There's a sweet pool uh, pool uh, on, uh, like, one of the roofs of one of those big buildings earlier. Yeah. It looks sweet. Yeah, I am judging roofs right now as we continue to fly through the city <laughs> of Kansas City. There's a couple other ones coming up that people are on. Sweet. Still going. Mm -hmm. Where do you go? What's the, what's the best location to go and watch? End of it. Because you want to hear because that's the speeches. speeches. 
I, I wonder if they all kind of do they just walk down yeah. the parade route? Yeah, you just walk with them. Like there's a couple parking lots up here, I think, unless we already passed them. That's where the uh, car thing was two years ago. There's a couple uh, parking lots that are kind of empty behind. That's where people will like, fill in. Yeah, see, oh, look at this. Pittsburgh was similar where, awesome. where you do like the, you line the streets and then where they're speaking, it's a big area. So everyone walks kind of with them. So I think down at the end there yeah. is probably yeah, that, where they're at. Yeah. That's where it was. So yeah. once they get like a block past you, they probably they say, start all right, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. So the entire city had a parade today. Mm -hmm. It's the best. But you can't, I, I don't think, unless they do the, it in Kansas City, you got to stay on the outside either way. They don't like oh, they don't let close it as they go. That'd no. be sweet if it was like that commercial. It would be sweet. The That's, boys are walking and then the entire city's like a block behind them, walking down yeah. behind them. That'd be sweet. That's what they should do. Yeah. Uh, the first yeah. parade had car stolen. Yes, it did. Down parade before route. The, before before the parade. You can see it because those trees. It was awesome. It's right there. I mean, not awesome. <laughs> Obviously, it's not what you're looking for. But as we were live waiting for the parade, uh, we're getting a, a car has been stolen. Is driving down the parade route. What's that? We pull the clip up. Literally, car right down the middle. Sick. Blocked off roads. Just drive right down the middle. And it crashes. And then it's like, all right, that's quite a start to this entire thing. They're calling a three-peat. They also said Chris Jones is coming back. Travis Kelsey remix, Friends in Low Places. And it seemed like Kansas City had a great time, even though it ended with a little bit of a damper, that we hope everybody's okay. Now, it is time for us to get smarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's time for us to get better. It is time for us to learn about the big boys that make it all happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go in the trenches with A.Q. Shipley. Thank you. Here we, go. Here we go, boys. Hey, what a year this has been. This has been awesome. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. Because it's, it's literally the best day of my week. I love coming here, getting a little break from reality, and oh, just yeah. talking a little ball with you all. No, I've oh, seen right. photos. You're a good dad, a good husband. Those it's are good. nice to get a little break. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. I, I nice understand. Nice to get a little break. It's been nice to learn some ball from your brain this year, yeah. AQ. What right. do we got here? Uh, so we're going to watch this guy right here because he's unbelievable. Let's just watch this Let's just let this go a little bit. We're going we're gonna to talk through this one, right? <laughs> Creed Humphreys. Yep. Oh, now check this out. Did you see what he just did right there? A little shuffle. Okay. Now they sell zone this way. Mm -hmm. Now here's what's huge right here. They're selling zone. This is complete play action. This is one of the biggest plays in the game. This is the first deep ball that he hits, right? This guy can come underneath the tight end right here and affect this and make this play. But this is some of the stuff we saw from the Falcons all year, right? We saw where you get the center selling one way and then coming back. Now this is where it gets huge. Right here. Ooh. See him making it. He's got, he can make an impression on this play. But now Creed comes, seals it up, gets him outside, and then we go with the deep ball. Jeez, 31. And yeah, he got lost. Just lost got a, he got he just got lost. Got to track the ball. But that was the first big play in this game. That's a Huge. sweet design. Sweet design, right? And I think based on it, now if he had a guy front side here, it would be this guy doing it, right? Like no matter what, it's always whoever the uncovered guy is just happens to be your all pro. Shuts him down inside, gets him around the corner, gives him all the Before time. the snap, are they uh, saying anything, saying, like, it's me, or is it just understood? So, typically the way it's installed is they're faking the zone to the right. So, whenever you step right, whoever is uncovered to their right is the guy who would be doing this. You saw New England do this for years, oh, yeah. where the guy, they call it a whirly bird, right? So, you come here, fake here, and then you come back and seal the backside. They're just doing it. A different way. So there's not a conversation time. before snap where Creed's like, me, me, me. Nope. And he might say it just to echo it, right? But it's installed this way. It, Uncovered guy, go seal the edge. Now is Noah Gray inviting him inside? Probably. Probably. I think the biggest he thing they can... motioned down there. He motioned out there to get some leverage on it. You see. Watch yep. him move to there. First down, too, around the alumni section. See? Yep. Oh, let, me there. A, let me get a better leverage on this thing and invite That's him right. right in there. Yep. Comes back outside leverage right here. Right, let's just slow it down. Let him get there and then Creed help out. So it's outside shoulder. That's so it. So the pack can get outside. Bingo. And huck it. Because wow. he wanted to break and change. all so planned. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everything's so planned. It would awesome. suck to play defense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, now let's ready. watch this. By the way, Ken Law, first time all year where I thought he had an awesome. I mean, he's been kind of talked about. He was a first-round pick. They were expecting big things out of him. Has not played all year. He had a great game, but on this particular play, we're running a single with an insert here. Look at this. Uh, his hold. He picked up his leg. He, uh, we uh, just, actually, yeah. that was a what? spine buster. Literally, lift him off the ground and then bury. Like, he should have said, it feels. Oh, yeah, he looks like he's doing a rock doing hey, a spine that's buster. That's a flag. No holding. Wow. They, don't get, they don't get holdings in the Super Bowls.
That's the double team committed. Not That's calling, the double huh? team committed. And then look at him. He's off the ground. He's got two feet off the ground. Yeah, he's picking yeah, he got up. lifted up. Yeah. That's leverage. I mean, that's a spine bust. That's an actual spine yeah. buster. That, that, that is Barn a spine Barn Anderson. Buster. Boom. Triple H. I mean, that's The a, Rock. What? Pretty awesome. Al Gray. Yeah. Is that who that was? Yeah. Al Gray. He had a torn UCL, they said. Mm-hmm. Most of that game. Yeah. And AQ had something to say about that, too. What'd you say? What do you mean? I'm just saying a lot of guys get torn UCLs. That's why the elbow braces are everywhere. Oh, you're saying pretty standard operating procedure. But tough nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Tough nonetheless. Yeah, it, you're not taking away from Alan Gray. You're just no, saying no. this is much more common than people much think. Much more common. Ryan Jensen had it. Uh, well, I think Brendel for the 49ers, I think, played most of the year with it. A lot of guys have it. Got it, but big, still big, tough guy. Still oh, yeah. tough guy. This play, I think we've all seen. Tough, tough ending from my man, Coach Wilkes, here at the end. But Creed Humphrey, look at this. Look how fast this is. AJ, look how fast this is when you watch this. A center reaching... Fred Warner, who's one of the fastest linebackers in football, getting to the front side here. Ooh. Now watch this. Boom. Now watch this. Watch him stay connected for another 35 yards. <laughs> Throw him into the defensive coordinator. Oh, geez, that's Steve Wilkes right there. Damn. Steve Wilkes. Oh, that's tough. That's Steve awesome. Wilkes. Oh, no. Maybe that's yeah. when they were like, all right. Not doing this anymore. That's it. Steve, you didn't even help him up. Look how fast Creed is. is it, I mean, this is unbelievable. He makes contact with him in between the hash and the hey, numbers. So Creed's phenomenal. He's unbelievable. Yeah. What happened with the snaps? Sometimes you get a little bit of the yips, and you don't even realize it. Like I said, we've had this conversation so many times. Like, you don't even realize. It's the same thing. Like, you think in the, in the golfer's world, it only happens in the golfer's world. Some mental block happens when you're chipping in golf or in the snap game. And punting, then, kicking, throwing. Punting, kicking. Something, some mental block happens, and Same then cover. everything's low. And you think it's good, but then now it's in your head. So now every time afterwards, you're walking back to that, oh, hey, Pat, where was the snap? He can get over that, though. He'll get over Maybe it. That was, that was a good one. It's, mm-hmm. Would that be that was why good Pat wouldn't say something? Because it's like, hey, if I tell this guy these are a little low, he might just sell one over my head, and that'd be way worse. Yeah, you might. Yeah, because then you overcompensate, yeah. right? You overcompensate the low with the super high one. Now it's twenty yards. Yeah, going the other AJ, way. AJ, get off the block, dude. He like look how fast he is out though, and he's eyeballing Fred from the, you. Like Fred feels it. Like Fred's on his horse. He takes off. Yeah, he's but, like you can't than do the a whole lot here with that. Like with his leverage and look how his body control. That's incredible. Man. That's incredible. And staying on it. Creed's a guy. Yeah, yeah. he's a guy. I mean, that's incredible. Only cost them $1.3 million this okay. year. Okay, Jeez. here we go. He's we young. got <laughs> rookie contract. Rookie yeah. contract still. Jeez. Same with Trey Smith. So huge. This is this is two plays in a row here. We got two of the biggest plays. Pause this real quick, and you're going to see it a little bit more from D Butts when he talks about it more from the wide view. But So just hear me out here, right? We got Kittle and two receivers out here to the right, two receivers out there to the left. So as you're what seeing What play is this? So this is the last play of the game in overtime, right? And this is the one where we're going to leave Chris Jones completely unblocked. He's already said it was his fault. There's been a ton of conversation on the internet about it. Oh, it is God. what it is, right? So he reacts, sees him, right? They both go down. But here's the deal. That's the Will linebacker. They're obviously running a play action down to the Will, down here, center there. He should be man. He should be man out here. You're hot off here. If there's anything, it's got to be a sift. But we cannot leave this guy unblocked. He goes out. He goes down. You got the best defense, one of the best defensive tackles in football oh. coming scot-free. Biggest play of the game. Needed to get it. He was wide open on the whip route. Ayuk on the other side, wide open, coming across right around in there. Two options if you get this blocked up. Hey, if they get this blocked up, you think Steve Wilkes fired today? A lot of consequences from... There's this play and the next play. Well, Pat, tomorrow. Pat probably still goes down and gets a touchdown and scores two. Probably. probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but do we know if the Niners are going for two? Yeah, it sounds like they didn't even they, know. They, <laughs> they, they <laughs> thought it was over. They scored a touchdown. They were Kyle Shanahan's the headset's off. Yeah, yeah, they're putting. What's that? The you can't. You still There's gotta, no way they go for two. Could you imagine Kyle Shanahan has his head set, throws his headset whenever they score a touchdown? Oh, Big so- Gatorade, Gatorade bath. bath. Yeah. Yep. The whole thing happened. Think it's over? You know what's next? This is over. They the game. Now you backed up. Can you yep. kick the extra point? Now you what are you it. talking about? Uh, Delay game, buddy. They yeah. get the ball. <laughs> Who does? What? The Chiefs. Since no. when? Two years ago. What? Was anybody going to tell us? Well, you're the one that's supposed to. Yeah. That would have been bananas. Oh, yeah. That would have been so awesome. Oh, man. If they score a touchdown on this play and Kyle Shanahan throws the headset, throws the play call. Sprints to person. We were robbed. Finally, Finally. did it. Gatorade, like probably three Gatorade baths happened. John Lynch sprinting down the steps from the suite. Oh my God! Like yeah. Tony Romo, that. Tony Romo going crazy. Hey, did it, Jim? You know the whole. 
He's, oh, he's definitely questioning himself. <laughs> yeah, because he's just like, yeah, I love it. Obviously, Josh Hannon's not going to celebrate if he doesn't know. And then they got to get off the field. I love it. Do you think they're going for two there? No, I guess they're no, just no, kicking they're extra points. Because point. that's no, that 38 they're, yarder. They're off to the tunnel. That's why I like they don't the, need the, the conversation. Over. Like, well, they might have, you know, San Fran might have done it differently because the Chiefs are going for two. San Fran didn't fucking know that. No. It's no. Not, like, they're, they're off the, they're in the tunnel. Yeah. They, they oh. no Where's idea. the confetti? Kyle Shanahan's asking. <laughs> I, I was told that if we win this thing, that's insane to think about. But all of it. Obviously, comes down to shit like this yep. that you don't even really talk about. That's an insane play, right there. Yeah, the big thing is like, like we talked about, it, and we're gonna talk about it on this one too, right? Like, it's you got your two best plays called for the two biggest moments in the thing, and you get you get lapses, whether it's whether it's a protection call or whether it's a guard going down in the last one. On this one, again, I don't know if you noticed this when you were paying attention to this, right? They only got two D linemen in the game. Mm-hmm. Two D linemen, two linebackers, seven DBs. They're in dime coverage. Right, so you know Spags is going to come with cover zero. When he comes with cover zero or some form of it, in this case, it's really not. They're just bringing six. But here's the deal: as an offensive line, we treat this as down, 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 down. So you got your four down. Now you got to find who we're sliding to. If when you see the wide view, you'll see it. And when we talk about cap, you'll see there's a receiver right here with a DB over him, and then a safety behind him. We call that cap. That tells the center and the quarterback. He can come on a blitz. Well, check this out. We got Kittle in protection over here. With Kittle in protection over here, leave him for the for the pressure guy who's coming from over here. That allows us to then slide left. Send him to there, him to there. Now 65 can block Trent McDuffie, and Trent stays wide. If that were the case, we pick this whole thing up. Purdy has all the time in the world. Instead, we send him this way, two for one over here with Kittle. And we get a free and we get a free runner up the thing up up the Bolton B gap. Cross his face too. Think about AQ. Look at Bolton crosses his face too. Like sets him up outside across the face to open that. Open whole gap the window and then up. this guy stays wide to get the to get the window. Question AQ. Yes. Now is there in any world is Kittle supposed to look backside there and a, would a running back who's used to that more yes. been better in that situation? Mm, good question. Uh, like so you so check, so AQ. typically. Good question. Typically, you're, they're going to treat this guy, if this was the protection I think it is, where we're sliding Mike to Sam or whatever, then you would leave him will to anything weak, then back across, if anything. That's a lot of shit going on, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if we just if we just leave him for him and slide left, mm-hmm. we don't even have to talk about this. But like a lot of shit going on, a lot of the times, don't running backs not know? And like... Wouldn't a running back in that situation step up and like realize immediately? I don't and it, know. Granted, it's split second. Yeah, timed it's, it up perfect though. McDuffie it's timed up perfect yeah. on the run. But like in this little quick, li- like even when you just started. The, well, in his the eyes, split like second of it, like he's thinking he's got the will. Yeah. Yes. No. So no. That's no, the I, will, right? Yeah. No, I get that. But like in the split second where he sees, hey, seventy four's got him. Like, is there any thought it's that... It's all reaction. It's yeah. all feel. And it, yeah, I mean... It's it, just, it'd be hard for Kittle to be back. How often do we see Kittle in the backfield not running a route on must have really it down? Because all they were trying to do is get CMC right here on this yeah. little shake route. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was it. Which in, uh, Shanahan was Christian, 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 yep. and the mic'd up. Yep, but just didn't have the time. Like, because boom. by the time he gets open like right here... real quick split second. I'm, I'm not saying it's easy, He's obviously. There I'm just sure, saying. Sure, I just think in the two biggest moments of the game, you know Spags is bringing pressure, which he did. Mm-hmm. You gotta have an answer for it. You gotta have an answer. It was timed perfectly too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just perfect timing. Like we also, knew in the McDuffie, Super Bowl. Go ahead. AJ. Think about McDuffie not getting a hands to the face call. That was an unbelievable job by him. Not like, oh, it was yeah. a very easy one where you could you could just ooh, accidentally brush the face mask. Boom, penalty. He did a good job of not doing that. Hey, that was the Super Bowls. Yeah, that was, oh, yeah. That was the Super Bowls. Couple good plays, couple bad plays. Mm-hmm. Couple, what are we doing? What are we not doing? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do we got? Be- best big bumps of the whole yeah, season. Yeah, I picked, I picked four oh. that I that I liked. I picked four from the season that I thought were some of the best. The first one was Week One. We remember this we- guy? Yeah, remember oh, him. He's quarterback really. for the Browns. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. How about this guy? Just gonna say yeah, who, I was going to say, how about this guy? Yeah. He's really good. I think they're entire. O, I think they're entire O line too. I was gonna say who's that right tackle? We got a, we got a full group O lineman up there. Isn't it crazy how from week one to week seventeen it's a whole different team? A little we know this guy was gonna burn his face yep. and then still play. Oh, yeah, Pro Bowl. He's <laughs> make the Pro Bowl. Jeez, hey, good for you and Joku. You have no idea the ride you're about to go on. This Shout out week one. That's Shout out week one. Shout out week one. I miss we get, you week we one. We get Wyatt Teller, who we talked about all year long, right? We remember this play. 
Boom, we get the little fit. I don't remember this play. Okay, nope. well, you're going to remember when he buries the guy down here <laughs> off the screen, 25 oh, yeah. yards downfield. Keep running. Oh, Keep yeah. running. Oh, I Keep do running. remember this play. Keep Holding. running. Oh, Keep oh, running. Yeah. I do remember this play. Yeah. That was not a That was just good blocking, yeah. good leverage. Yeah, blocking good block. hands yeah, inside. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> I think his wife retweeted this, right? I think. She did. Yes. Okay, yep. because Wyatt Teller does not get enough love. And yep. you've tried. This dude's dog. Dog. I mean, he was he was in the wow. trade with uh, with just, yeah. or Jordan Poyer. 15. To oh, Buffalo. Man. So that was like almost an even trade. It was Wyatt Teller basically for Jordan Poyer. 25 yards. Both teams win. That is a long <laughs> no. way to move another man. It's incredible. And these are the plays I love. Like, I love the effort plays. Like, it was the Linderbaum versus Devin White a couple years ago. It's, I mean, it's just the effort plays, and then that is awesome. <laughs> the finish. Yep. Let's go to Tampa Bay. Ooh. Tristan Wirfs coming down on Denzel Perriman. I just heard Ty Schmidt go. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Yeah. Go Kirk's Hawks. dogs. Kirk's dogs. Go Hawks. We get a nice little flat route. He's actually short on the aiming point. It gets behind him. But because he's 6'6", 350 pounds, and strong as a fucking oh, hawk. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I remember that one. Oh, no. oh, get boy. Club. Oh, no. yep. I recall. Oh, boy. Oh, he's too big. He's too big and fast. Too strong, I mean, too big, too fast. And again, we talked about this whenever I showed this earlier in the year. He's a banger. Yeah. That linebacker. Got Perriman's sus- a banger. Got suspended for a few games. If I, yeah. Yeah. That, if oh, boy. Yeah. yeah. So we get him out the club. Got to love this Jason Kelsey. Got to love luchador. this one. Is it overtime? Absolutely. This is the overtime play. Absolutely. Yeah. Stud, right? This was a play they needed to have, right? Everybody thought Buffalo. Nope. We got this. We get we get the check versus cover oh, zero. Perfect. There it is. Perfect play call. Perfect ear hole shot on the blitz. Oh, I got him. Nope. See oh, you later. Oh, killed that guy. Yep. Yeah, go nine night. Tud, game over. I think that was the last game the Bills lost. Until the playoffs, obviously. Yeah, that might have been the last game the Eagles won. I think, yeah. Se- the second, yeah. They only had one more after this. I that team fell apart. Lost six straight. We got a new OC in Philly. We're going to see if... Uh, Kellen Moore? Yep. Yeah, Kellen, Kellen Moore. Moore. New DC, too. How do we feel about that? I mean, they I like got... Kellen. Legit. They have everything. I mean, like, they have... Jaylen but aren't Hurts. they a run? Aren't they set up to be a good running team? But, is Kellen? Yeah, and all he cares about is putting points up on board. Kellen was down in Dallas when they had that little two-headed monster with Zeke and Tony. They, they ran yeah, very well. They can. They I mean, it. Tony has no idea we're talking about him right now. He'll find us out a no few clue. weeks from now. But <laughs> t- Tony's a dog. And then things didn't go so well this year with Eckler in that running game. But I mean, that was just a disaster mess. Yeah. And, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, AJ Brown. I think Kellen Moore is going to have a good time. How to use? Yeah, him. I do too. I think he's got all the weapons, and he'll be able to be creative if with them. You love this guy. He's got dreads. He's a white dude. That's exactly right. Quinn Miners. I love him. I love him. I love him. And I think play like defensive play, defensive play callers and defensive coaches. Period. Hate going against this guy because this is what he's trying to do on every play. Again, we get a light box because they had some linebacker issues. We get him up here. Oh, oh yeah. boy. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a oh, prick. Boy. Bernard. AJ, what happened? Oh, boy. Well, he didn't jump on him when he was down, so I, I would appreciate that if they did this to me. He could have he could have pile drove him right in the ground. After He's this. got plenty of clips doing that, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, he, he, took I this, he took this one off. He was happy oh, with his result. Loaf? Gets a pancake, <laughs> gets a loaf. <laughs> I mean, that Look, is super impressive. Broncos beat the Bills here, too. Remember that they game? Did. They did. Yeah. Russell Wilson quarterback. So those were my favorites. Those are my favorites That's from cool. the year. Hey, yeah, thank you. That's it. Here we go. Thank you, Baby Shipley. AQ. Now let's bring it home, ladies and gentlemen, with everything DB presents. Good D. Bad D. All right. Let's go. This right here. All right. We'll start with uh, Bad D. All right. We don't do like it. that. We don't like starting with Bad D, but gotta we got to do, do what it. we got to do. This gotta is from the Super Bowl. Let's go to whenever somebody almost won the damn game. Got to get it out the way. This is uh, so. This is one of those situations I'm talking about. Pause it real quick. Obviously, fourth quarter, 16 seconds left. Huge third and seven right here. Now, as a play caller, you know who's in the who's in the huddle. That's 12 personnel, one running back, two tight ends. Tight end, tight end. We all know who this is. Travis Kelsey. In my opinion, third and seven, we got to at least double him. Or if we're not going to double him, have our best man-to-man guy on him. This is our best man-to-man guy right here. All pro Mooney. Jadavious Ward, he's up here guarding Noah Gray. Mm-hmm. We got Fred Warner, who is a great linebacker, but that's not who we're going to want on Travis Kelsey in this situation. They run a mesh route, a pick Is this route. why they fired Wilkes? It's just, I think this is a part of it. I don't know. Noah Gray is a threat. He is. Yeah, he gets the ball he, a lot. He, he's not uh, on a Mount Rushmore <laughs> of tight ends. Running the mesh route, he's going and looking for Fred Warner to pick him. Uh, get, does a little ole. Fred Warner obviously has to change his route. 
just a great, great execution offensively, but matchup wise, you got to get your best cover guys. Could you imagine your best he receiver. scores touchdown right there? With Thought he was. Seconds left. Biggest third nuts. quarter, obviously. In, I mean, third down in regulation for these guys. I mean, I know Patrick saw it. He knew exactly what he had pre-snap. Just looking, waiting for 87 to run into that window. Easy money. I believe Easy it was money. the fastest he's moved since oh, yeah, was, he was, rolling. was it 2019? Broken. It was the Travis? fastest. Fastest of the season for sure. Yeah, it was like. How many miles per hour do they know? I think it was 19.8. 19 yeah. Yeah. yeah he didn't you. crack 20 there? No, yeah. did not. He crack looked like 20. he was moving. Yeah. Big fella. Especially with Fred two, yeah. trailing behind him. He's moving. Something about running across field just makes guys faster. Last play, True. Game, True. game True. winner. Once again, 12 personnel. Uh, Kansas City ran a lot of multiple tight end sets throughout the playoffs. Now, coverage, you got Logan Ryan as a nickel. I think Dem, uh, Lenore had a lot of moving parts for San Fran uh, on that secondary. Lenore, when he played the slot, I believe he was their best option, but he was outside this game. Had Logan Ryan in here, and they got Miko Hartman with this little short motion, just like we saw last year with Sky Moore and Kadarius Toney on the uh, corn dog. This was Tommy Jerry, I believe. You get the fake sprint right, he's going to be now, right here, you have to get low and you have to keep that leverage because you know when Nicole Hartman makes that motion, you're going to end up having that low guy if you're this nickelback. So you got to get outside leverage. His eyes are inside. Oh, Patrick no. Mahomes was looking inside as well, so maybe he was looking at 15, but immediately he's out leverage. Travis Kelsey doesn't even look back. He's just looking at the jumbotron. He knows they got exactly what they want, 15, Andy Reid. They, they all know win. it's a touchdown. No, they know yep. right now. Yep. Oh, like, not even right They know when, right now, once that motion comes in, and and because he's so low, Ward can't just because if Ward goes out there and just out leverage it because Travis. he's only he's the only player with leverage. If he leaves eighty seven, which he wouldn't, and goes and gets that, and obviously eighty seven just runs a seven and catches that ball in the end zone. But once he doesn't and he stays on him, Kelsey knows nobody out there with leverage <laughs> against Miko Hartman. Didn't even turn around, just nope. looked up at the jumbotron, fifteen running in. Hey, we world champs, baby. Golly. That's how it happens. I mean, illegal man downfield, but. right here. <laughs> What's he allowed? Two yards? A healthy what? Healthy two. Yeah, no, I was just joking. No, there's people on the internet saying that. Oh, though. really? Yeah, there's people on the internet saying, what about the illegal man downfield? I think it's two yards. I assume if the ball is on a three, the refs say we're not going to watch for that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably. Yeah. Yeah. And also, if it is, they, they didn't end up going further than two yards on this play. But defensively, we talk about situations all the time, and I'm sure the Chiefs talked about this situation potentially being down here. This is probably a two-point play for them if they were going for two. So as a defense, we always went over got to have it plays. You know, what, what's in their arsenal? What they, have they done over the last few years in similar situation? Playoff games, big third downs, two-point versions, and this is definitely on. We all saw it last corn year. Dog. Yeah, we know corn dog. That's got to be on their got to have it. It actually became, like, Not popular because everybody yeah. talked about yeah. how funny mm -hmm. it was to be called corn dog yeah. because Andy Reid just likes corn dogs. So everybody prepared. talks about his cheeseburger love. It's like. He's okay. He likes doesn't it. mind meat on a stick. Too, corn dog he will corn dog the shit out of this thing. Prejudice. It was wide open last year. Yeah, wide, wide open, open again, again this year. Three what, times now. Did they run it all year? Uh, I did they ever run it during the year? year? I doubt it. Right? I see, only saw a couple teams copy it. It's I mean, it's just won a Super Bowl a couple times. Keep me a back pocket. Once again, in this situation, I'm sure I, I would bet that Steve Wilkes had to go over this, but it's a completely different ball game. Well, Pat said it was the last play that uh, they put in during practice week. No, Think so about Andy Reid as he's looking down at the play call sheet or whatever, or Matt Nagy, whoever's calling it. Travis Kelsey got mad at Andy Reid, so I think that tells us who's probably calling plays. Mm -hmm. Potentially. I, I'm not I'm not giving away anything. But him looking down and just being like <laughs> corn dog. Mm -hmm. We're doing it again. And calling it in. Just like last year, baby. Just like yep. last year. We're doing corn dog once again. And then Patrick Mahomes goes, Let's do this thing. Yeah. I'm so pumped yeah. for them. It's they have to be so happy. Yeah. They have to be so happy. Gotta be. They have a coach who can draw plays to make everybody get open. Mm -hmm. They have a quarterback that can execute everything. They have a defense that's going to be together again for another year that's sophisticated. Yep. Like very sophisticated very. defense. They have to be so pumped. They have yep. all the advantages. Yep. And they've proven that they can do it. Fuck this you team. Got the dude. right guys in there, man. Andy Reid, everybody talk, says a lot of things about him. One thing I know, uh, I think uh, Tyron Matthew told me, like, they do – two minute more than anybody like those situations you know on teams that's usually like a day a thursday and third down they are we're gonna do two minute good versus good you know our starters against their starters but 
for a team, if I'm running the team, if I'm a head coach, if I'm a DCOC, if I had the, you know, the voice in that room, hey, we got to do two minute in these type of situations as much as possible. Well, it because, makes everything else better too, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and once you get into that mode, because you can go in two minute mode, and all right, we're struggling, our first couple of drives, not moving the ball, hey, let's get, get some tempo. Minute, let's get in, and everybody's used to communicating, everybody used to being on the same page, and defensive side as well, because it's one thing to practice against it, but now when you get out there against these guys who's breaking the huddle, you know, you got Mahomes doing his thing, and it's, it's moving, you got 12 personnel, hey, that's always an issue, yeah, that's always always an issue for a nickel package is when you have two tight ends on the field, how are we going to match up with these guys? Where are they going to be? Bunch. What's the run fits? So just a bunch of different Oh, and there's 202 wrinkles. million people watching. Boom. Mm -hmm. Every single step. Yep. So didn't know the overtime rules weren't ready for the play Corn that dog. scored two touchdowns yeah. in last year's Super Bowl. Okay. Correct. Corn dog, dude. Correct. Okay. And Corn dog that good D. Yeah, I'm just saying. I, I'd assume... <laughs> You know, the the play that won them last year's Super Bowl would be probably top of the list. I don't that, know. That That's was ran, so that was long, ran twice. Just from the outside that is looking so in. So long ago though. You know, you gotta remember that. So long Those ago. Are, yeah, the amount got, of plays that Andy Reid has put in, uh -huh. like the amount of shit that people gotta prepare yeah, for. Like, absolutely. If that, if that was from the rounds, They definitely looked at it. Five, they definitely, definitely. They because I know damn well when I was a coach and I and we were getting ready to play Dennis Allen Saints, it was like, hey, cute uh Remember when he was the D coordinator of the Raiders when we were in Arizona? Go back and watch that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that's what they're doing. But so, that was forever ago. They're like, doing it. Was, it, it was fucking last year. Like, I get that. I really do. And I acknowledge that. And the Patriots would always pull from their old Super Bowls to play. I mean, yeah. every single play they scored against Atlanta was plays from older Super Bowls. But the fucking year before. Like, I sure. I agree. Absolutely. I agree. They, they go back I to agree. 2002. I agree. With but what fuck saying. off. Like, think are you about kidding it, me? They had two weeks, right, to prepare. But if you think about, like, what Andy Reid does, this is just, like, another added wrinkle. When you do all that bullshit, like, it also adds time into the other team's preparation. Yep. Yeah. Like, when on special teams you run fakes, like, that's an extra mm -hmm. 20 minutes, 40 minutes of that person's yeah. Yeah. life on the other side mm -hmm. that they have to eat away at. And it's like, I couldn't even fathom <laughs> trying to prepare for this fucking Chiefs team. They're, they're low red zones. Like, I, I mean... You just got to you gotta have leverage. That's the number one as a defense. You, we always talk about no edge, no chance in the run game, but in the pass game is what you have to have leverage, especially down here in the red area. Shit looks good on paper, but once it's a pick route and it's a legal pick route, you can get picked on one yards. As a nickel, I played nickel for a long time. Like I was always communicate with the guy outside of me because I know if I'm getting picked, I'm almost like the last line of defense. So you have to have an edge. And to Connor's point, these, you go over those gotta have it plays, that may be in 15 plays we watch this defense. Those would be the corn dog would be the top two. Oh, and to go back to what Spag said, Spag said that all eleven guys on my defense have a high football IQ. That's rare. It's like that is not normal. Yeah. Normally, you have you know whatever he said, one or two guys that mm -hmm. don't get it. It's like with that defense in that moment, mm -hmm. you would hope that somebody maybe goes corn dog, corn dog. Chief, Chief's not fucking that up. No. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But I mean, you would hope someone. I mean, they ran the fucking motion against their all pro corner. So I, I, I just. Just say it. You're not happy about it. I, it's just it's just ridiculous. Yeah. I the, think so. the defense coordinator got fired, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, now you're all in. Now, now it makes Get sense. Get that guy out. Don't bring him to New England. Oh, no, hell no. no. We don't please. We got all of our former players. If, if you don't play football, you're not coaching on this staff. Does he play? Uh Steve Steve's I mean, in Washington, sure. but I feel like he's been Steve Wilkes. Wilkes. Oh, oh. Steve yeah. feel like he's been coaching a long time, right? Yes. And maybe I'm just saying that because he has gray hair. I he's I'm, been coaching. I know he's old. He interviewed me at the combine, I remember. For uh, Carolina? Uh, he, no, he wasn't at Carolina. I think he was at the St. Louis Rams at that time. He played at App State in uh, one year course. for the Charlotte Rage in 1993. That was a good squad. Oh, yeah, the Rage used to yeah. fucking really. Was yeah. that Arena League? Charlotte Rage? Um, U USFL? Yeah. Yep. That was Arena League? Arena Football, yeah. All right. Come on. Come on. Strong Rage just dude. sounded like an arena league. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, like it, yeah. it just sounded like an arena. Remember when they were trying the Philadelphia Soul were like the they were Ron really Kobe. they carried the yeah. carried the torch. Arena League had like a two year run. It's pretty good. Where it's it's like bad. it's gonna be fun to watch. Arena League's fun to watch, honestly. I think they uh they fucked up the money, I think. Yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, yeah. that happens so A B had it going for a while. Yeah, the Albany Empire. He still got his thing? That yeah. wasn't the Arena League. That was the uh what, that was, wasn't A B either. That was he was uh, indoor football. I think that was the indoor football league. It was a different name. Oh. A B was using a different name for that or something. Oh yeah. What was the it? The profit of A B or something like that? Oh. It was something. Oh, like that. speaking of A B, because he's uh directly tied, I believe, to Kanye. Uh Kanye did not get kicked out of the Super Bowl. No. But I was told that story was not 
Yeah. Wait, so Kanye, Not real? Kanye Not real. didn't mm. somehow find out where Taylor Sweet was and then that same day of the Somehow Super Bowl find a ticket available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seemed right. plausible when I heard it. Well, for Kanye, who's worth a lot of money, I guess you would think anything's possible. But to figure out where Taylor Sweet was and find a ticket available right in front of it would have been a very impressive feat. Mm -hmm. We would all have been like, You're you must be using SeatGeek. Yeah. You must be using SeatGeek to do that. Thinking. And then whenever Taylor found out, she got him kicked out. I guess that was not but real. But he knows better, too. You can't just bring your wife in the Super Bowl wearing a <laughs> see-through poncho with nothing underneath. It wasn't see-through. So she had overalls on that covered the private parts. That oh, was okay. it. Sorry. My bad. That's fashion. Fashion, yeah. Kanye had a commercial, too. If he got booted, though, that was awesome. He would make he would make some noise. I would imagine if Kanye got booted yeah. from the Super Bowl. We yeah. Well, that was another thing. As I was listening to Brandon Marshall say this, like yeah. the logistics of everything he was saying seemed to be tough. Just as you know, trying to figure it out. But it's Kanye, so maybe yeah, you'd be able to figure it out. But then it's like, how is Brandon Marshall telling me this mm -hmm. and not Kanye? That was like this feels like a yay stream for sure. Yeah. As he's getting, I mean, we saw Portnoy get dragged out of the Super Bowl. Bingo! And that was being streamed <laughs> yeah, as was it was great. as it was happening, pretty much. <laughs> it's like that. There was a lot of things in yay. A spokesperson for yay. Who's that? Who's the spokesperson for yay? Of course. Uh, came out and said that it was not. Uh, that was just a rumor. Yeah, I mean, it, it's crazy because you would think too that if Kanye West got thrown out of a Super Bowl, other people might film. That yeah. he was getting thrown out of a Super Bowl. Yeah, but maybe he would have a mask on. Exactly, which even logo. more. Yeah. Hey, who's this man? Anyways, guy? I didn't like that it, they tried to. That that story definitely made Taylor look bad. Yes. You know, and it turns out it's not true. Okay. Shocker. Stop lying, people. What was Ice Spice doing there with her hands? What was that? What was going on there? No. What's happening? I mean, we know what's happening. What was it? We could talk about it. I don't even know. AQ, you know. AQ, what was Ice Spice doing with her hands? I don't, I, I don't know. know. As Taylor Swift. Dying to wine and then doing? slammed it down. There's some hand signals with the devil. Just, boop, boop, They're boop, saying boop. it's double. Devil, double, double, double. Hook them the doors down. It's okay. hard. I didn't even see it the first hundred times I watched because I see Jason Kelsey's overalls right behind her. And then I see is Taylor uh, actually. This thing? Yeah, I guess she's I just saw that. Yeah. I just, literally just saw it for the first time yesterday and I was like, oh, what, what is going on? She's got on? long fingers. He didn't fingernails, too. The oh, shape. that's probably what See, it the is. real problem with this is, at least for the conspiracy. Well, look at Taylor just. Hammering that drink. I am. She's a football girl. Oh, yeah. yeah, but now we have to ask. Since she's with Ice Spice, does she, does she do the same? Well, they say that you are a company you keep, but look at what I hang out with. Yeah, that's. Yeah, you know, I so. question your decision on that a lot. Yeah, but yeah, you guys hang out with us too, so it's you know that's tough to do. But like, um, that's one way. She's chugging these drinks while in Vegas, uh -huh. in between Tokyo Dome and I'll Melbourne. The Perth Dome. Melbourne? Melbourne, where she does like three hours straight, right? Doesn't she do like a three hour straight? Three and, oh, and yeah. a half, yeah. Three and a half, With four. what, 14 hour flights? Yep. Yep. She's a fucking dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Legend. Yeah, that needs to be, that doesn't get, she also went all, all night, right, with the Chiefs afterwards? Yep. Yeah. She was keeping up with that luchador, Jason Kelsey. And then she's flew to Australia and has a, sh she's a dog. She's a dog. That needs to be talked about. You know, I don't know what Ice Spice doing with her hands. Me neither. We know. And it's, it's. The, the real problem is she looks to make sure she's on TV before she does it. Well, obviously she knew she was on the fucking Jumbotron. Oh, Jumbotron, no, but that was on TV. Was it? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's how I saw it. What about Jeff Goldblum when well, he was on TV? Oh, well, Jeff Goldblum's just classic. He is. He's the man. So Leonardo DiCaprio didn't even know he yeah, was on. Come on, no. you. Oh, shit. You see that? He didn't even know. Oh, he had I his bet. head down on his phone and he looked out he was over. Yeah. Didn't even know. They got a ponytail? Could Ooh, that'd be sweet. I think Leo had a ponytail mm. in the back. Maybe he's growing a mullet. Probably for a movie. Movie role? Yeah. Maybe. Jack with the Bitcoin name? Mm -hmm. Yep. Satoshi. What's that all about? Have you looked into that more? I have not. You're the one that will give us the answers for that. I'll, I'll get to the bottom. Yeah, you line. pound the pavement for that I'll shit. I'll get to the bottom. Uh, I do not. Man. I do not. Uh, I do not. I've been consistent D with my stance. You're hanging out with Jay Leno. Yeah. <laughs> Talking cars that was and crypto. That was F1. F1 still happening? Yeah, okay. for sure. Really? Yeah, big I looked, news. Big I actually news looked up that schedule. Are they racing now or are they just driving? No, 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 no. It uh, opens when it's testing. I think Bahrain. Shit, at some point. So they're starting to reveal their cars for the upcoming year now. Can't I wait. The first Sam. race is I'm on the edge of my seat. In March. I need more March, play, Bahrain, more plays, I believe. Or? Are they going to race this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are? Yeah. 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 Might catch yep. up. They'll catch up to Max this year. <laughs> Let's do some good deeds, shall we? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. We already saw actually both of these plays. <clears throat> this is a wide angle, big third down, huge third okay. down, the two-minute mark. 
once again, we talked about it. Uh, AQ talked about it. When this DB, when this nickelback is topped, right, you got somebody right behind you. You got them stacked yeah. from the offense perspective. I used to hate this as a nickel if I'm pressuring. I'm look back, and I know my guys just sometimes just locked in. They want to do their job. They want to be in their coverage, but they're giving it away to the smart offensive lineman like AQ. But in this situation, I always say, don't let your disguise kind of be your, to your detriment when you have a job to do. Third and four, third and five. So as this safety, when that pressure is coming, you got to be on this slot receiver. You got to be on the Ayuk right at those sticks. So he's giving away the disguise, but he trusts McDuffie with his disguise. He's going to get home, get that left up, and he's going to be in position with seven DBs on the field to make this play on the ball if 13 does get it out of his hands. So Trent, it all works together. AQ, Trent knows he's coming. He knows they're fucked. Yeah, I mean, you every every offensive lineman should know that. Because, look, if you go back, like what DB said right there, too, look, he's topped on this side, and they're topped on the other side. Yep. It's too high, clears out, and they're spread wide. So you know one of the two over there are coming and one of the two down here are coming. Because you know in this third, you, you heard him coming out of the huddle. Hey, watch the pressure. Can't take a sec. Can't take a sec. Yep. Everybody knows Spags is not going to sit back and let Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy have their way, get C-Mac on a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Now, the Chiefs play a ton of man-to-man -man coverage, and they're going to bring pressure off of it. Justin Reed did an unbelievable job on Kittle, on C-Mac all night, whoever he was covering. Trent McDuffie, I think he was targeted the most in this game, had the lowest passer rating in this game. First team all pro to slot corner. Does a great job blitzing, tackling, and covering. So Brock's so going there because it's hot. That's yeah, why Brock's looking there instead of Christian. Yeah. That's exactly right. Based, knows. based on the way they sent the protection, he's hot on that play. Yeah. Christian okay. took a while, and that's too. And that's your number one guy, too. That's your number one wideout who's going to be on a safety because you're – best cover guy in the slot is blitzing so that's the matchup you want to go to bang bang should be right between the ones but obviously that pressure gets in the way and most importantly getting that left up blocking the ball and then not getting the penalty as aj mentioned Man, earlier. they targeted Ayuk in the most important play of the season yep. he was the one getting the ball mm -hmm. so wow. right they didn't forget Second what got most. him there they yeah. didn't forget what got him there what's that just because later on, AQ. Yeah, but at the time, oh, this no, is no, the yeah. most yeah. important play yeah. of the season. Yeah. Who are you targeting? Yeah. They're going, to, well, it was supposed to be to Christian, but then they end up throwing it to Ayuk on the hot route. Yeah, I think Kyle wanted Christian. I think Brock he, was going to. The mic'd yeah. up. Yeah, the mic'd up. He's saying Christian, Christian, Christian. But in that play, mm -hmm. when you watch the replay, he's not even. Out See, of and also route. in the mic'd up, they're saying no sack, no sack, no sack. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Purdy's just like, I, I got to get rid of this thing. Yeah. Because yeah, they they're fringe coming. field goal right now, right? Like, yeah. This ended up being like a 55 yarder. Yeah. Right. And what? Two minute, we're right at two yep. minute mark. How about Jake Moody? Yeah, stud. Yeah, what a weapon. showed up. Wearing that number four. Well, he two. got the extra point block. It's like, okay, that ball's probably ending up through the uprights, just like Harrison Bucker's fifty-seven yarder. Now, guy, but is who is it? Leo, who's the Wisconsin? Chanel. Chanel. Chanel, that's a great yeah. block. Like you got to get very lucky and unlucky on the other side of that. But Jake Moody, rookie year, so he went through his entire senior year. Okay, went through then. Uh, Pro Day, Senior Bowl, all that, right after mm -hmm. his senior year. Mm -hmm. And they had a college football playoff, extra game. Then he goes into uh, combine prep. Then he goes into draft prep. Then he goes into rookie training camp. Then he goes into actual training camp. Then he goes into preseason, which he's never had to do before. Then he goes into a 21-game season. Yeah. Kicking, kicking. Kick. This dude hasn't had a break in like two years. So for him to bury a fucking 54-yarder in the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter with less than two minutes left, Dog. Mm -hmm. He's a guy. Yeah. Shout out to San Fran, like sticking by him. Yep. You know, like legit. <laughs> that rookie year is tough because your leg gets dead, like drained, like absolutely dead. And when you're talking about timing something up, like a golf swing, when you're trying to time that thing up so you hit it square, it's like, well, if you're swinging faster some days, you're going to be a little bit ahead. If you're swinging slower, you're going to be a little bit behind. Same thing with kicking. Like your leg speed slows down when your leg's tired. So you have to like adjust how you're swinging and everything like that. It's tough. Rookie year is your, by far your hardest yeah. year. For him to bury one with two minutes left at the end of that entire thing, big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And sticking by him, he had a terrible preseason. Yeah, couldn't make yeah, a fucking could, hit. Couldn't hit yeah. one. Yeah. That mental grind. Too. He missed the, the one in Cleveland. Oh, Cleveland game winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, missed missed one in the NFC yeah, championship yeah, against the Lions. First one. Yeah. yeah, like I think his leg was oh, dead. Yeah. Personally, I think his leg was potentially dead uh, by the end of the season. Not a lot of rookie kickers make it to the Super Bowl. No. You know, that's not a, that's a long haul. Mm -hmm. And nobody thinks about it because, like, do your job and you're just a kicker. It's, like, it's a lot of fucking. Lot of wear and for tear. Like two years straight, you're just like bang, bang, bang. There's a reason why they ice pitchers' arms mm -hmm. and they like take people off. It's like, 
I'm happy you made it through it. Hey, Moody, you're going to come back bigger, better, better Hell than ever. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like Tommy Townsend, rookie mm-hmm. year in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Hit that yeah. shank. shank. His yeah. leg had to be dead. Yeah. Then he comes back and wins the game almost with the mm-hmm. Chiefs. Had a baby. We got some young studs out mm-hmm. there. Absolutely. I didn't like Jay Feely yelling after him. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is Jake Moody's fault. I was like, why don't you explain this guy's fucking leg is. Better than that, Jay. Well, I like Jay now. I do too. I didn't like Jay for a while. I didn't appreciate the way he spoke about kickers. You know, kind of like how American bloggers talk about soccer, about how, like, we're, you know. But I like Jay Feely. I like him a lot. Thanks. I think I think he adds a lot to the game. Mm-hmm. I appreciate Jay Feely in that broadcast. Mm-hmm. Didn't like that he just threw Jake under there. I was like, yeah, this guy's a rookie. He's been through it enough, isn't he? Yeah. People are already telling him he sucks. But you got to deal with that in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Got to deal with that in the NFL, AQ. That's right. And yeah. also do your fucking job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Bingo. 54-yarder. Steve Wilkes. Steve Wilkes. That's tough, oh, dude. Great play. That great is great play. tough. Sneed's also glued to it. Oh, yeah, sticky. And we already saw this one interior once again, wide open. Once Another big third down, third and Jennings. What is it going to take? Whip route, wide open. Might might score here if Purdy's able to get this ball. Look at Ayuk. Put him right on his outside Look shoulder. Look at Ayuk. up top, man-to-man coverage. Boom. Oh. Unbelievable slant route. Oh. But, yeah, when you have 95 barreling down, unblocked. It's one guy down the you middle. can't let go. Yeah, can't yeah. Can't let don't matter who, what, what route you run. That's the best hmm. best pass coverage in the world right here. Oh, Whew. damn. That might be a walk-in touchdown. There's a lot going on, huh, AQ, up there. You got to communicate. Like it's there, There's a lot of moving parts. Everyone's got to be on the same page. And people don't realize how fast it happens. Mm-hmm. Like this motion comes, somebody switches spots. It's like you just got to see it. Sometimes words can't even get out, and that's why, you know, Feliciano going down was kind of a huge deal. I feel bad for this kid. I mean, look at Justin Reed, too. They had two free runners through yeah. that gap, and Justin Reed yeah. just stopped. Pump faked. Yeah. Great edge up there. They were to hand that ball off the c mat. <laughs> Great edge. Yeah. Great eye. Ayuk, man, right here. How many times did you score a touchdown over the middle of the end zone? <laughs> same same oh, route. So yeah. many times, man. This is why he's pissed. Oh. Yeah, just you don't even have to – doesn't even have to know Shit. if he's open. I mean, <laughs> you, that was like this, like when Rasheed Rice got mad at Pat. Yeah, and the ball yep. was on the ground. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. It was like Rasheed Rice had no idea that the ball was on the ground. No. And then I assume at some point somebody said like, "Hey, buddy, like this." He did. He had no idea no. you were there. He threw the ball at Travis Kelsey. It's like sometimes there's other factors in it. Oh my God, Ayuk. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like that, the that, Kelsey that touchdown, the Kelsey Rice <laughs> situation too. It's like, hey, Kelsey's the number one here. Like Rasheed Rice, rookie, obviously the mm-hmm. number two, but. Like, Brandon Ayuk's the all-pro wide receiver who had 1,300, 1,400 yards and 12 touchdowns. Yeah, well, let's go to... Couldn't get to him. Who's that? No, I'm just saying, you just couldn't get to him. Yeah, oh, Rashid, yeah. Hey, Rasheed's going to be a guy, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's going to be nasty. How about how fast he is? Wait until they draft the next guy. And he they'll got they'll draft another speedster. As the year went on, every week he got yeah. better. I think he set a rookie record for receptions in yeah, the playoffs. To clo- 26, yep. I believe. And to close the season. Like, they, if you line up his, like, last five games, and when people were like, Kelsey's having the worst year of his career, Rasheed Rice was having, like, 130 a game. And um, he's a Super Bowl champion. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know who's a two-time Super Bowl champion? Who's that? Kadarius Tony. Hell yeah. <laughs> back to back. Same with MVS. Blaine Gabbert, how many Super Bowls he's got? Two? Congrats, Blaine Gabbert. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Suck at Drew Brees. Him, Hell Jimmy yeah. G, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Patrick Mahomes are the only quarterbacks. In Blaine wasn't the backup for Tom, too? Or no, sorry, this is his first year in KC. Yeah, first year, yeah. First year in KC. Is he back there again next year? He's on a one year, so hopefully. If he wants three. How's he? He performs well at the parade, I guess. He's the best. I sent a couple videos in. He was sending me some stuff. Blaine was having a good time. Oh yeah, Blaine. Blaine doesn't doesn't mind a drink or two. No, no. Drain will Blaine, have, Blaine, Blaine enjoys. Hey, life. He'll Blaine, also, Blaine will. Blaine's a big time locker room camaraderie. And yeah. he'll fuck around and save people from a helicopter crash on jet skis. Just can't forget yeah. that. Go save a life. Fucking right. weapon. Now yeah. there's a chance that uh, I don't know the story as well as probably other people do, and he certainly saved. Fuck yeah, Blaine. Blaine was probably having a good time that day, too. He did not expect to go no. save a life. No. That's, that's why probably, Blaine's that's a beauty. the best moment, right? That's why Blaine's yeah. a beauty. Yeah. After it, he was probably like, did that really happen? Let's do a year uh, recap here. Let's do uh, it. Is this good D, all these? All good D. Let's all go. All good D. Thank God. Oh, we've actually seen all of these, I believe. Come on, man. Jalen Ramsey. This was his first right game back. Mac Jones giving him a gift. The Great fuck? vision. <laughs> You'll see this wheel route coming up, usually in a blind spot when you're running the zone defense, but great vision, great anticipation from five, ah. gets the pick, almost takes it back to the crib. I wish. If not for this unbelievable athlete, well, Cole Strange got a little, you know, knocked him out a little bit yeah. and he ran out of bounds. But watch this, watch this. 
Look at that guy. Look at that effort. Look at that effort. That the Finns were buzzing. Cole Strange. You can't, you can't teach that. Uh, do you remember you how good it. the Dolphins were? Finns were buzzing. 70 points. Rolling. Jalen Ramsey's back. Oh, gets two points. picks in his first. Oh. Good times. Good times. Top time. five defense. Top five offense. Wake up, Gumsh. Hell yeah. Big Fangio Wake out of up. here. Talk about secondaries. Let's have a record-breaking year, shall we? Let's go, Deron Bland. Nice. One of his nine interceptions, one of his record-breaking, what, five? Six. six. Pick sixes. Great anticipation once again. Eyes. Now, if you're late to that flat as a quarterback, big, big trouble. There we go. Is pick this the one, Jim? Right this is the record-breaker. Yeah, yeah no, this no, is no. the one. This is, yeah, yeah, because he jukes the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the record-breaker. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Nance, there great call. Great call. Yeah. History. And then right here is where, that was unbelievable, Jim. Mm -hmm. Damn near Great ruined call. the whole fucking call. Damn One near. of the best calls ever. Whoa, 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 whoa! That's not your. We're, that's not you. No, I know that's not me. <laughs> I usually Ty does the Romo. I'm just saying that's what happened. That my, my thoughts around this play forever will be Thanksgiving was awesome. I loved that. I got to see it live. Romo fucked it up a little bit. Come on, that, those are going to be my. That's what your thoughts are going to be for Thanksgiving. Thoughts. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. great Thanksgiving. Great Love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was one of my favorite. Jack things. Harlow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Play uh, the hits. Dolly Parton. Dolly, Dolly Parton had that yeah. massive star on that field. Yeah, yep. she couldn't stop moving around the stage. Huh. And Deron Bland oh, be broke a historic NFL record. Yep. That's good shit. Way to be an athlete. All pro year. Hell yeah. Let's go to another Let's dog. Go two six. All pro Mooney. Speaking of all pros, we all remember this one. I believe this was a third down, third and four. This was clean. Watch his foot Out plant of the drive right to that top shoulder. Boom. And then he shot out of the cannon oh. once he catches this to the crib. Mm. Mm. One hand, mm. I step in. Yeah. Come on, it don't get no better than that. One hand through traffic. That's yeah. Awesome. It don't get no better than that, man. He had a phenomenal year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he had some comments going into the Super Bowl week. It's better been on this side. That was awesome. I think Kelsey talked a little shit. Yeah, that and was the mic awesome. Up. Oh, you like, you like it over there, huh? But uh, big time play. Big time player on a big time defense. Everywhere he goes, he's he's been balling. Had a great year. It's probably his best year this year. Hey, that, that one with Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be sweet. <laughs> Who's that? Carter? Arizona. You think that's where he's headed? It, it, that's just he, cause, since they're four. If Chicago keeps... Justin Fields, Fields, which Kevin Warren, mm -hmm. the new president of the Chicago Bears, he goes from running the Big Ten, stopping football, mm -hmm. bringing football back to running the Chicago Bears. He complimented Justin Fields in a big way. Did he not, Zeke? Oh, yeah, and said they were going to build around him. So ah, are they, are, is, that to, is that to drum up uh, trade interest, or does that mean, hey, we're taking Marvin Harrison Jr., number one overall? We'll see. Ooh. Boy, if they, if, that, if they take Marvin one overall and not the trades – they're talking about teams mortgaging their future like the Niners did with Trey Lance. Every team does that. Yeah. They can't get up to one. People do very dumb things yes. to move up to number San one. Fran. They're talking about the command. San well, Fran, Washington. Washington, yeah. I mean, there's a lot that is happening. Yeah. If you get it right, Carolina, it's worth it. Winner. It's worth it if you get it right. If you don't. Have any of the teams that have done that got it right, I wonder? Ooh. Trade-ups. I mean, the Chiefs. <laughs> What's they, up? They, they traded up to take Mahomes. At yeah, no, we're right. talking mortgage one. and everything, oh, yeah. getting the one. Yeah, trade everything for what? Ricky Williams, like the whole draft. Yeah, class, they traded everything. Yep. And for RG three, obviously, uh, yeah, Washington. the the Rams reaped the benefit of Washington trading what three ones? I think it was yeah. three or four yeah, ones. I think it was three. Yeah. And then Trey Lance, obviously, up at three. Trey Lance, and they drafted RG three, and then Kurt, and what the third round that same draft? Yeah, it feels like there was a little bit of a disagreement mm -hmm. on decisions there. And it sounds like behind closed doors, it was all smooth. For <laughs> 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 all we've been learning. Uh, but has it ever hit? Those has, has it, right, with quarterbacks, yeah. I'm, I'm like, it's hard to even think if any of who traded up to get them. I mean, we just listed off the ones I can remember. Because like RG3, obviously, offensive rookie of the year. Uh -huh. But then injuries yeah. happened, and it didn't end up working Last out. So I think game. they would say it would have worked out if it didn't. But like, aside from that... Draft. Bruce, Bruce is saying Eli, but that's a much different situation. Obviously. He like got drafted one overall, and then got traded after because he didn't want to go. He's having a lot of fuck. San Diego. I forgot that was after. Atlanta traded up for Vic, but it wasn't that big of a haul no. compared to what. What it, number Vic? Go? He won one. 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 So Vic. I mean, I guess it did out. work. I guess it did work. There. Michael Vic. Someone did some. Someone did the most outrageous for Ricky. Who was it? The Saints for Ricky Williams? Yeah, that's what yeah. Entire draft. They're they're saying they're. One of these teams might trade out. I mean, obviously, New England's been talked about. Uh, all three of them have been talked about. What did Carolina trade up to get Bryce? They this will be the closest. They, they, they traded their first from this year and last year. They traded DJ Moore. 
Tennessee Titans. Titans received 2016 first round pick, Corey Coleman, 2016 second round pick, 2016 second round pick, 2016 third round pick, 2017 first round pick, 2017 third round pick. Boy. So that's two first, two seconds, and a third. For Jared Goff. And those players. He went to a Super Bowl. Derek they did Henry. make it to a Super Bowl. No longer there. Nope. But they did make it to a Super Bowl. Yeah, but look at that. 2016, 2001. Those are the top two. Char- Chargers got a nice little haul in return. What, for the Michael La- Vick? LaDainian Tomlinson, Tim Dwight, Rache Caldwell. Like, I mean, look at the look at the Titans, too. Derrick Henry. So somebody's going to move up to get to number one. And history would tell us that yeah. not necessarily yeah. a home run. Not necessarily going to work out. So 1997. Nice. I mean, we're going back, back. Yeah. 1995. Yeah. But when you're sitting in those chairs, GM, head coach. Got to have hey, it. Got to have my guy. All right. Let's go back to some good D from let's the season, shall we? We got, speaking of one of those guys, top five pick last year, Devin Witherspoon. Should have been the NFL defensive rookie of the year, in my opinion. I love what Will Anderson did. He's a pass rusher, but he was, a, he was he's just an absolute dog from the moment he got into the lineup. Played outside, played inside. Mm-hmm. Everything he did in college transferred right into the NFL. It's a big time. Uh, I believe this was maybe a Sunday night or a Monday night game. Uh, prime Monday. Time. Yeah. This was you remember when the Giants and Jets were prime time for five straight weeks every oh, single yeah. game? Oh, yeah. You remember that, Bruce? You remember that? Do you remember when we had to suffer through that? I do. And I, I think about the back copy of this basically every day. <laughs> well, if you think about Daniel disturbing. Jones and you've seen this back copy, it's hard not to think about this one every day. I mean, I mean he tried. He gave good angle. Effort, yeah. you know, made him cut back. But just phenomenal player, not only physically but mentally. You can tell he thinks the game. You could tell just by watching the film he was coached well in college and he transferred right into the NFL. Just patience being around that uh, goal line. This is the back view eight. You got to see it. You got to see it down 40 here. million a year? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Last year with the actual guaranteed money, though. Mm-hmm. But he's back next year. Yeah. With Dayball. Mm-hmm. Yep. Blood on the line. 92 million first two years. Good dealing. Good throw. Great deal. <laughs> Great deal. Spin it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wheel and deal. Hey, don't worry. If this doesn't work out, it doesn't matter. Because you're the you're first good two years, you're still making yeah, 90, you're, 90, 90, you're good forever. <laughs> don't worry. You're good forever. Nice crib call. We Here we go. This one, Jack Jones. Best one of the year. Had a great finish to his season. Antonio Pierce oh. yes. stood awesome. on the table to get him over here in L.A. Man. Forgot they beat the absolute dog shit out of the Chargers mm-hmm. this game, but just great anticipation, great break. But this catch, I mean, one-handed Watch him. behind them. The back copy on this is absolutely sick. He's there too early, too. Yeah, literally too early. Yeah. Threw it, the quarterback threw it behind the defensive player. And this, this shot, I mean, this is, I hope he's got this on the wall somewhere. In the man cave. This is sick. Jack Jones had a great finish to his year out mm-hmm. there in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. What's that? I mean, Fokker should be in New England, but yeah. <laughs> well, you guys cut him because he probably got to him. an airport. He, he or asked. No, he didn't cut him because of that. He asked to be released. What happened with him? What was his story? He brought the gun to the airport and then... Was that the only thing that happened with him? Uh, well, he had stuff in the past, but in New England, that was the only thing. And then there was... Like and then the, that lady lawyer. Yeah, Belichick's sister, yeah. No, she appeared to what? be... She had the short hair. She had the J.J. Watt. Yeah, she did. Spot. <laughs> spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember her. And now. she had that little, like, a full suit on, uh-huh. walking. Yeah. Treat him like a dog. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> it's awesome. We don't, we don't want anybody to bring guns to the airport. No, no, don't do that. No, he didn't mean to. He didn't, didn't mean to. He didn't know. Yeah, he didn't. Come back to New York. It was an accident. Yeah. That's what he said. Come home, please. Sure. I think anybody that's ever brought a gun to an airport saying that. Mm-hmm. Or a knife. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have to. Ever happened to you? Me? No. Ever happened to you? Be honest, D, but what do you what do? You do? Throw it in the ball. trash? We're talking ball. We're talking, talking ball. Right? Talking talking ball. You asked the question. Some people, no, you said, some people have a backpack, you know, every once in a while, and there's multiple pockets in the backpack, and you maybe grab it to pack and keep it moving. And then as you're putting that thing on the thing, oh, no. Uh, it happens a lot. Uh, wait. wait. It happens, it happens. Especially in, in certain Florida, Arizona, Texas, you know. You just, Boston. Maybe you throw it in the bag. Get it, but you, I From three like, weeks ago. Uh, no. No, okay. Maybe, maybe like right before, just forget. Yeah, that's going to happen. You know, I, it's a scene. It's a scene in the airport. Though. It's a bad. Shouldn't take edibles through. Nope. Uh, either in your back. I mean, there's a lot of things that maybe. That. Huh? They still check for I that. actually have unknowingly brought edibles through the airport. No, they won't before. find it. I, don't, I find think it'll be sure. okay. They'll just steal they're it from fine. me, say, like, can't have this. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take this in custody. And then I mean, 
What are I going to test? Got his fucking edibles, dude. Put in her back pocket. 20 milligrams. Yeah, too much liquid to is frowned upon as well, guys. Yes. Be careful about that. What's that? Thanks, Nick. Too much liquid. Yeah, over... 3.3 ounces. Yeah. Do they check for any of that anymore? They do. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. That the liquid's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. Last one. Jesse Bates. One of my favorite free safeties oh, in the NFL. Run. Remember this route, Derek Carr. You talk about that back copy with Daniel Jones. This is a bad one, too. This is a route we see every week. Crosser, Zampezi, angle route, Texas route, whatever you want to call it behind it. Jesse Bates absolutely all over it from the free safety position. Not only picking it off, but taking it to the crib. He had a great year down there mm-hmm. in Atlanta. That was week one, too, right? Yeah. What's going on with this guy? They got no, no, no. This was, kind of, this was uh, I think, week 12. Yeah, oh, this is week okay. 12. Yeah. Who's OC Dunner? Uh, they hired, um, what's his name? Kubiak. Not yeah, Clint Kubiak. Not yeah. Kubiak. Yeah. Where at? Clint yeah. Kubiak was in New Orleans. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just happened. Okay. But yeah, so free, free safeties, young free safeties, especially once you get near this red area, once you don't have that deep field to worry about, just key that quarterback and make a play. A lot of times, because things happen so quickly down there for quarterbacks, those eyes are going to lead you right to the ball. Is he going to get even better <laughs> with Raheem Morris coming in? I believe so. Every yeah. you, I mean... Everybody that's been around, he was probably one of. Have you been around Raheem? Like, no. Rams like, like the whole tweet. Coaches, players, yeah. media yeah. personnel. Like I've never His heard everybody awesome. speak, you know, as highly as they have with the Raheem Moore. Mm-hmm. So I would expect him and everybody else to get better back there. Sure. Great year this year, D-Bug. Yes, yes, sir. Boys, Appreciate D-Bug. you, boys. All right. All right, that's it for this glorious. We love love Wednesday, February fourteenth. Have a phenomenal Valentine's Day. AJ, I assume you got something super romantic up your sleeve for the wife and the family, obviously. Yep, that is me, Mr. Romantic. You're right. Me oh, too. Knew it. Roses are dinner. red. We'll have dinner. Violets are blue. Hey, Samantha, I love you. Yes. Happy now. Valentine's Day to my bride. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day to all the couples out there that are going to enjoy themselves. Happy Valentine's Day to Connor who's doing a little self-love tonight. Thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah, good that. Luck. Look in the mirror and say, hey, you know what? I love you. Because if you don't love you, you don't allow anybody else to. Mm. And we all have blemishes and flaws and things we don't like about ourselves. That's the reality of life. But today, it's all about love. Let's find the happiness. Oh, yeah. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. We're in this thing together. Boys, great season, you two. Good work. Great season. Thanks. Love Good you, work, boys. boys. Love you guys. Team on me. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Team. Goodbye. <laughs>